Happy Thursday, everyone. We're here day four, and it's the show before the show. Isn't that right, Corey? Yep, we're almost done. One more day to go. So we're going live here in about 12 o'clock. But before we do that, we got a video we did earlier in the week with me and Daniel talking to our boys, Jeff Crete and Jared Littner, on some new EcoPro, uh, Jackal, and some SKP cases. So make sure to check them out. And then up first, we have Dan Johnson from St. Croix today. So check it out and let us know what you guys think. All right, welcome back, guys. Corey and Daniel here in the Tackle Warehouse studio. Today we have. Two of my favorite studs right here. We got Crete and Jared Littner. Jeff Crete, how are you guys? I know you guys are up in New York right now, right? How's the practice Wisconsin. been? Uh, Wisconsin? Okay, okay, okay. Um, how, I, we watched a little bit of the coverage this morning. They're kind of biting for some people. How did your guys' practice go? And what do you think of this uh, weekend? How's it gonna plan out, play out for I you guys? It's going to take it's going to take big weight you know the uh, the thing is here is that you know the an average fish is about three pounds so yeah. you know a guy goes and catches 15 of them he's probably at 50 pounds so <clears throat> it, they're, they're just they can be hard to get around but if you if you hit the right spot at the right time like obviously a few guys have today you can put up yeah. some big numbers yeah we've been watching we can only look at the score tracker we can't get any you know we can't watch live or read anything about it but uh Obviously, Lucas and Suggs, they, you know, they're around them. I yeah. Mean, you know, and, and it, it can happen to anybody. You know, the wind's been changing every day. So that that creates current in some areas and moves the bait around. So a spot you may have practiced and never got a bite, they might be. Yeah, and the, the, the problem fishing. is now the wind wasn't supposed to blow. And I'm looking out there and it's blowing pretty hard for the guys that got behind mm -hmm. this morning. Now it's really windy. So it's going to be, it's hard to make moves. You know, if you, you may only have to go five miles, it might take you 45 minutes to get there. Jeez. So, Well, it's, you know, I mean, there, there is giants in here though. Like yeah. I, I, I think by the end of the week, we'll see a seven plus pound small mouth. Don't you? Wow. I figure at least a six. I think mid, seven pounds. I'm, yeah, I've never caught one that big. Yeah, Got a six twelve. Have. Oh man. Well, that's close enough for seven. That's close. Well, yeah, I guess. It, this week, Alan. you're catching one. Is it? Yeah, it's, that's Allen. Otherwise known as Court. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you guys can't. See, oh, you maybe you can see, but maybe we'll pick it up on it later. I'm not going to tell you. But uh, so, hey, we got some new EcoPro stuff for you guys to talk about. But Jeff, you've got a couple new big bite baits, right? I do, I do. And this, honestly, I, I would be lying if I said I fished. This thing is brand new, and uh, I mean, Bradley Hallman designed it. He spent a lot of time. I mean, I've been hearing about this bait forever, even being with Big Bite, but it's just now out. And and it, for those of you who do or don't know Bradley Hallman, he's he's a really good fisherman. He fished the elites for a long time, fished the FLW, and he's a really good flipper. Um, he won Okeechobee flipping, and, and he designed this bait called the BFE, and he, he's got some really good colors. And we talked about the bait, and the kind of the unique deal about it is, is um, it's, it's not meant to have crazy action. It's, it's kind of a real subtle bait and that's what he wanted you know i mean there's a million baits out there that have you know big you know move a lot of water and do but you know it, there's tools for everything sometimes you don't want all that flap and stuff and and he designed this bait and he he, he said he kind of did it as a mixture of his of all the the his favorite money making baits like a tube you know your uh, like the yo mama or your beaver style baits and things like that but it's ribbed, which I do like a lot. Could you, could you have Jared hold up the camera for a little closer, or Kerry? Mm -hmm. Get a little close to it, see it. Very cool. So it, it's it, it has a hook slot, which which I like, um, and it had really good colors. I mean, this you know it, it'll depend on the size hook you want to do. This is something that I I would probably flip a, a four rod, you know, a, a straight shank hook. But, you know, you could get away with a three odd or, or, or whatever you want to be. It's going to be a real good punching bait. And it, it, it just, the colors are, th this is tilapia magic. That's one of my favorite. And then we have regular tilapia. I'm just going to go through the colors real quick. Yeah. Um, this is a black neon, which is a, is, is a great color. And this one, this one's kind of cool. It's called Bedlam. It's uh, black neon, but it has a, a kind of an orange flake on the back. Oh, it's like camo. It does. It, it's a, it's a good looking color. It, you have your 
black and blue there, straight. Uh, that's just a green pumpkin with a little bit of red flake. Green pumpkin, black. June bug, which will be the Florida color. And then hematoma, which is great. Then they got one other color that, that, that I don't have that they're, that should be, that may already be ready. It's called, I gotta look at my notes on this, and it's, it's called uh, BTL. And it's, uh, it says it's uh, three color laminate with June bug candy, uh, chartreuse, and black. So pretty funky color. Wow. Huh. But, like the, funky. but the, it, it's a pretty wild one. I don't know, I, I'm, I'm quivering, I'm so excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> but the, but it's you know like I said, the deal on the bait is you know you can look at it and go it looks just like any other creature bait but the deal it's you know when you're getting all this pressured water and you know the tournaments are big now you know i mean you know like we fished that flw deal the other day it's 205 boats and you know when you're going behind somebody uh you know or on the second or third day of a tournament even if you think you won a lot of flap and those fish get shy you know, something with less action is a big deal. And, and Bradley Hallman, I would consider one of the be better flippers of all on all tours. Would you or not? Yeah, for sure. So for sure. I, I'm excited about using it. it. There's a lot of hype on it. And I know I talked to him and he shot a lot of videos when he, he took forever to design this thing. And uh, man, he's caught a lot of really big fish on it. So, you know, I'm hoping I, you know, this will be a bait I'll definitely use. Um, my next tournament after this is on lacrosse on the Mississippi river, you know, and I'll be punching and doing a lot of that. So this is definitely one that I'll, I'll flip, you know, probably there with a, with a big weight, with a full rock flipping hook and some braid. So same as if you're doing this week. Perfect. All right. Do what? <laughs> same as if you're doing this week, aren't you? Hey, I wish I found something like that. I <laughs> would deal with that wind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if this would come into play this week, at all but you, they, there is a new swim bait head too right yeah the swim bait head this is a they called the uh true x this is the first time i've seen this now they had the little swimmer head that was really cool um this one has a little bit of a fin which keeps your bait swimming straighter and it, and it has eyes and it, guys this is a really good head it has a a great hook in it light wire this is kind of for your smaller swim baits and, and can, can you see the Get the hook close. keeper right there can you see it? Yeah, the, the double wire keeper. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, the, the my biggest pet peeve in throwing these little swim baits is, you know, about every time you catch a fish, you pull it down, and you're constantly gluing them. This, this head, I mean, it will not come off. I mean, I still, I have, I have this bait on, you know, for this tournament I practice Don't with. Don't tell me nothing. I'm not telling you anything, but I bet you <laughs> have one or two. And uh, I, I still have this. I, I mean, I practice for. The whole tournament with the same head you know where normally you know you might go through 10 packs of it so it's a it, the the biggest thing on on this to me <laughs> is it is really is the hook i really like the light wire hook and they they make this um they make this in the eighth ounce which i throw an eighth ounce a lot on on those little like 2.8s and things and uh they have a uh three sixteenths, a quarter, and a three eighths. And this will fit all of your smaller swim baits. I mean, this is, you know, you wouldn't put this on a giant, you know, like hollow body swim bait or anything, but um, for those smaller size uh, baits, most of the time, in my opinion, most of the other, the heads you would get have way too heavy of a, of a hook for that small of a swim bait. Cause I'll, I'll throw a bait like this on a lot of times on six or eight pound test. And you, you know, if you've got a real heavy hook, you're you're gonna you're gonna break off with you know when you set the hook. Very nice. Sorry, so, I was talking to our boys back in, in the in the camera there or in the I studio. You, I thought you were saying, <laughs> no. I you were saying slow your roll. No. Yeah. Yeah. So that was. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're yes. talking to our boys back in the studio. This is the True X by Big Bike. Okay. So, so the really good head. Probably the best head I've seen for a little swim bait like that. Well, hopefully it comes to play this week. Uh, and if it does, make sure you let us know because. That, the swim bait head and the BFE is available for pre-order right now, so make sure you guys go check that out. Um, the first new bait from EcoPro that you guys are going to talk about, both of you guys now, is the new Tungsten Heavyweight Football Jig, right? What's, what's the story yeah. on that one? So, you know, we both got, got on with EcoPro, what, several years ago yeah. now. 
And, I mean, they make the best tungsten weights, in my opinion, yeah, by far. Absolutely. And, and so I, they, they kind of wanted to expand. And, you know, you can see we got a spinner bait. Uh, he's got a shaky head that we're going to talk about that he designed. And the football jig. So they had one several years ago. And it was, it, it was okay. Mm -hmm. um, we both liked the head. And just because, first of all, this right here is a half ounce. He's got the three quarter ounce. So they make half or three eighths, half and three quarter. The deal with this head is you can really feel everything, whether you know it's rocks or shells or whatever it is, that tungsten head transmits through your rod up to your, or through your line up to your rod, and you can really feel what's going on, detect bites, but it's also smaller. It is. So you're not gonna get snagged as much and you know, and you don't and, and simply you don't blow the fish's mouth out. Exactly. I mean, think about like even the days when we used to when we would punch grass with a big old lead weight, like a you know, about an ounce was as big as you could get. Yeah, it was so big, you'd lose so many fish. So the smaller, I mean, that's, I'm sold on tungsten. I mean, I don't throw a jig now that isn't tungsten, whether it's this, you know, this new jig or even the carry jig that they right. make, because you can get away with a, a lighter weight, which I think is important. And even with a, a, a lighter weight jig, you can feel everything. Yep. I mean, if, and if you don't believe me about it and you've never thrown a jig, you go tie a, a tungsten weight on like a Carolina rig and drag it around and then put on a lead. It just, you know, when that, when that bite's tough, you know, a lot of times just feeling a little bit of gravel or something, you know, not giant rock is the right. deal. Right. And so I, I'm a big believer in, in the tungsten jigs and all tungsten heads. Yeah. So, basically they had they had the original ones and we're like man we need to we need to step it up so we got some custom colors now um they changed the hook i'm not sure which hook is in there but it's it's not so heavy that you got to throw like 20 or 25 to to get them um you know but it's you're not going to bend it out is what i'm saying yeah um but the the custom hand tied skirt is you know the, there's a ton of jigs that just have you know your standard run of the mill skirts and that's fine but these are a little something extra yeah and I, I think it'll get you more bite if you know? i mean even if you i don't ever throw a slide in skirt on, on hardly anything right, anymore no. like if it, even if if i have a regular skirt on i'll get some braid tie it and then cut that band it just gives flares it out it more. gives the skirt a lot more mm -hmm. action See, like, like this, this here's a prototype one I got, and you can see it's got the rubber, what he's talking about, that band in there. And you can see how it kind of lays, right? It separates itself, but when you hand tie it, it compresses all that, and it's more kind of natural and yeah. flows really good. Mm -hmm. But, but the, and then, at, you know, we did, they, they did the tungsten jig, and then um, the other deal that, I mean, everybody knows I like to throw a shaky head a no. lot. And I've made a lot of money on that sucker. Everybody, but now everybody throws it. And it, mm -hmm. I mean, it, I, I it probably bit. don't throw it enough. Um, I never, I never fish any tournament without a shaky head on. And in my opinion, I'm not knocking anybody's stuff, but there's, I don't feel like I, there's very many places I could find a shaky head that I would feel comfortable throwing. I, I do not like the the you know how a lot of them have that the the little coil the little spring mm -hmm. I don't like that I don't like that design because it, when you when you do that the the worm is in line with the tip of the hook so when you jerk the hook doesn't I mean a lot of times you'll hook them they'll jump and come off and you never really got the hook through the worm so yeah. uh, on this. This is a tungsten head too, which is which is a really big deal. Uh, they make it in one eight, three sixteenths, and quarter ounce, and we make it in both because it, it, you can ask ten guys and they'll all tell you different. I like a three out hook in most of my stuff. You probably like a four. -aught. I like a little bit, yeah. So right. so, so we make it, -aught. yeah, we make it in a three out and a four out. And now I'll throw if I'm throwing a bigger, longer worm. You know, I'll throw that four out, but if I'm throwing just like a little regular, you know, four inch finesse worm, I like to see there's the, you, you can see the difference between the three and the four out. Mm -hmm. It's a really good hook. This is a trocar hook, hook custom that, hook. that we yeah. both had played with for a long time. And then you can see for the, for the hook keeper, you, you just have a little pin right there. 
And, and the other deal on, on the tungsten is, you know, on most of your lead, you like on an eighth ounce head, a lot of your weight is running down the collar. Okay, on these, all your weight is in the head. Uh, I, I like black. I mean, I always throw black. Yeah, that's, it, that's all I throw. And, uh, but it, it does have the little keeper. It holds the worm good. But I still, like I said, I, I don't want that, that worm to be laid straight like with those springs. I want the worm to come at that angle. And when you jerk, you get a better hook set. And it, it's a light wire hook, which... It, well, that's one of the things I was going to say is back in the day when I was learning about the shaky head, because I had no idea come from California, we dart headed, but I had some hooks and you're like, what are you doing, Lidner? And they yeah. were like, I think you asked me, are you going to throw that on your flipping stick or yeah. something? I'm like, what are you even talking about? He's like, dude, you're going to lose everything that bites you. Yeah. And so I kind of trusted him and, and believe it or not, he's, he's right. You, you don't, I don't believe it. You, you don't, you don't, here's the deal. You don't, you don't punch grass with a finesse hook. No. And you don't finesse with a flipping hook. And, and it blows my mind. Most of the companies out there put way too heavy hooks. I mean, I'm going to throw this, I'm going to throw this eighth ounce probably 90% of the time or 80% of the time on 10 pound braid to a six or eight pound leader. And you don't, I mean, really. When you're this, not wrenching on it. No, not. I mean, I'm literally, when I get the bite, yeah. I'm just reeling into him and kind of sweeping. And, mm -hmm. and what happens is with guys will, They'll throw that heavy hook and, and they're having to plow them and you, you'll break off a bunch of fish on the hook set. So, you know, th this is a, a great, a great uh, shaggy head. It's tungsten, so it's a lot more sensitive. You can yep. feel little things that you need to feel. It just has the little pin keeper, which doesn't blow out your worm, doesn't tear your worm up, but it holds it really well. And then you have a really nice light wire hook. So, so remember, one eighth ounce, which is my favorite, a 316, which I know is very popular, and I'll throw that if it gets really windy. Then you have a quarter, and That's uh, for me. yeah, for him, <laughs> and uh, and uh, it, but and it's also available in three odd hook and four odd hook, mm -hmm. which is big. I mean, you don't get that. I mean, if yeah. you go buy them, generally you, you every, they're all a four odd hook, and you you put a big old four odd hook and a little finesse worm, it doesn't look oh, right. Well, you can see what he's saying about like the finesse. Yeah. We're not meaning it's going to bend out, but you know I'm putting a pretty good amount of pressure on it, and it flexes a little bit. But you're not, like we said, you're not throwing it on a big heavy bait cast. No, this, this is like a that. finesse, a this finesse a mag, mag, mag shake head. Yeah, board. yeah. Same, I mean, this it, it's it's just a you know for six eight pound test, mm -hmm. ten pound test. This is this is the head I would throw, and it's also a really good head that you know uh, if you don't have the big bite swim head. I mean. There's, I throw a round ball yeah. a lot um, in, a, in a, a swim bait. And the other thing that's good about the tungsten also is, let's say you wanted to throw a smaller tube and you, you wanted to throw like a quarter ounce head in it. And some of the small tubes, lead will blow out your tube. Yeah. So it's a small, it's still heavy, but you can get that littler head up in a tube and still have the same weight. Same, same weight, more dense, more, you know, transmit. Right. Everything way better than lead. So yeah. that's that's the money maker too. So that's the money maker question for you, Jeff. How do you shake your money maker? I shake it. I'm going to shake it tomorrow in round two. <laughs> oh, <hell yeah. laughs> I'm going to shake my money maker. You don't know what he's talking about. My money maker not be this. My money maker may be in my pocket. <laughs> that's for a different show. <laughs> that's for a different show. <laughs> All right. Well, I think, I think that's it for you, Crete. Right? Oh, no, or no, no, we no. got we got some spinner oh, yeah, baits. Spinner. Yeah, a couple oh, yeah. spinner baits. We got yeah, the big so. dog Colorado Willow, as well as the double Colorado. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so a few years back, Jeff helped Eco Pro with the rapid fire, and it was a little bitty spinner bait. Works great for. I mean. Mm -hmm kind of finessier yeah. spinnerbait applications, real small profile. And both of us were like, man, we need a bigger, you know, kind of spinnerbait. Full grown yeah. spinnerbait. Right. So here they are. It's a big dog spinnerbait. This one right here is Colorado Willow. And this one right here is Tandem Willow. They make it in three eighths and a half. Uh, I believe there's four, four or five colors, Corey. I forget. All the check on that. You, you keep talking, I'll pull uh, it up for you guys. But, uh, can't even get it open. This is the you one know, you had at Clear Lake, right? You had like a prototype? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. 
So the deal with it is, first of all, it's really nice components. They didn't, you know, we kind of kept those four or five colors really standard. I mean, there's, you know, four or five colors that a guy really mm -hmm. needs in a spinnerbait arsenal. Um, you got six or six, six right now, four colors, you're right, four colors. Four colors. Yeah. Okay. So basically what it is, it's got the tungsten head. So that right there is a three eighths ounce, which mm -hmm. is, you know, so it's going to come through the water a lot better. It doesn't have as much drag on the head. Um, and like I said, the components, you know, it's, you can't go any better, I guess, is what I'm saying. The wire is, this isn't made for finesse type of fishing. I mean, it's got a kind of a heavier wire, um, you know, and when I was throwing at Clear Lake, working around reeds and grass and stuff like that, when you twitch it, really makes it, it flare. Really nice, sharp hook. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a lot going on with this spinnerbait that that head makes a big, big difference that I've never really paid attention to. Um, you can see on Tackle Warehouse, they have tons, thousands of spinner baits. And the head, in my opinion, is really what makes it the head and the wire. Mm -hmm. Um, so with that being tungsten, it fishes different than, you know, your standard, standard lead deal. I, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm pro tungsten all the way around. I, I really like it. Mm -hmm. So here's the, the tandem willow. You can see it's got one gold, one silver. Um, but yeah, half and three eighths, four colors. And are they available right now or? Yeah, so are. the spinner baits are available right now for purchase. So is J the money maker. And I believe the jig is pre-ordered. Don't quote me on that, let me pull it up. I have, my notes got uh, messed up here. So the, the jig should be pre-order. Um, and if and for the jigs, the spinner baits, all the stuff, just check out the colors down below in the video. You can see those there. It doesn't look like we have the, the pictures of the jigs up yet, but we have samples uh, here. Um, as long as we don't, they don't somehow make it to the lake accidentally, uh, we'll get images up on the site pretty quick for you guys to pre-order those. So real quick before you take off, Cree, um, between these two spinner baits, when would you use one or the other? And well, do you have a favorite color? Typically, with the with the when you have the little Colorado blade, it makes that bait rise up more. So I, I mean, the the double willow you can get away with burning a little faster. Okay. And and I like you know like here if I were to throw a spinner bait on smallmouth tomorrow, I would probably go I would probably go with a double willow where I can really get it winded and wind it fast. Where this bait, you're able to wind it a little bit slower and still get the rise from the little Colorado. That's more for like slow roll. Yeah. So like you were saying, you're gonna fish that super tournament, Tiger yeah. Warehouse tournament at Lacrosse. You'd probably throw which one? I'd probably throw that one yeah. and, uh, and, and burn it around any. the grass. He you doesn't know? have any, but I'll sell him this one for ten bucks. <laughs> He's got all the cool stuff. I do not. I mean, he, let me tell you, he's going to show you a bait a minute ago called the gurgle oil. Gurgle, gurgle. The gurgler. No. <laughs> the gurgler. I mean, this thing is so new. I thought you had to do somewhere. I read an article on it, and they are talking about it being banned in tournaments. That's that good. <laughs> because it's the gurgler. Uh, well, hey, we got... <laughs> We got Peepaw coming up next, and we're, we're running a little behind schedule, so we got to try to get back on him. I know you're right. out. You, got, you go make sure you go over there and, and, and poke Peepaw, make sure he's ready to go for us. Dude, what did you say? Poke Peepaw? Peepaw. Oh, Peepaw. Yeah, Peepaw. Wait, he's not here. You know what? We got the whole gang. Me, you, and Peepaw are all fishing against each other tomorrow. Side bet. Who are you putting, who are you putting your money on? Not me. Uh, right now, I think you, Jeffrey. Okay. Yeah. What about you? Who are you putting? I'll go Daniel? with Jared to even it out. He, he, no, these guys are both going with Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, Jeff, thank appreciate you. it, man. All right, see you. Thanks, Jeff. See you. All right. So Jared's going to stick around and show us a, a few more things. We got some stuff from Jackal as well as some, some SBK. SKB. SKB cases, excuse me. But first, uh, Jared. Let's start off with uh, this bait that Crete already hyped up, the Jackal Gargle Buzz the band bait. The bait. He called it Gurgle. It's a gargle. I was showing it to him prior to, prior to getting on here on the live deal. 
and uh, it's called the Garble. So I got them the other day, and I went to Lopez. I caught a really nice fish on it, um, but it took me a little bit to kind of figure out what it does because it was so new. Um, so here's what it is. It's got a swinging blade, okay? So it's kind of like a – I didn't know if it's like a spinner bait, buzz bait, but in actuality it could do both just depending on how you fish it. So it's got a really cool head, first of all, really nice sharp hook. And then, you know, with jackal stuff, their skirts are really, really good on all their, all their uh, skirted baits. Um, so I got, I got four of the colors. I think Corey, I gave Corey the other one. It's kind of, uh, what is it, chartreuse and white? Chartreuse white, yeah. yeah. With the little oh, orange on like the throat. Yeah, Dale can show it on the camera there. Yeah, this is like a chartreuse shad kind of. It's got that, it's not that bright white. This here's a shad color, basic white, and then black. So the biggest, the big thing that I learned about this bait was, first of all, I would throw it on braided line. Um, I'm sure you could throw it on, you know, your regular spinner bait, buzz bait type setup, whatever, whatever you're doing with that. But as you can see, I keep saying this, it swings. Okay. So this thing casts like a rocket, like a bullet. I mean, just, and that thing's gone. It's three eighths ounce. Um, and what I learned was if you keep your rod tip up and, and, you bend this down a little bit, bend that wire just a hair, it's gonna act more like a buzz bait. And when it comes across the water, it makes a really unique kind of gurgling sound. There's some other uh, topwater baits um, that make a real similar sound to it, but because there's treble hooks on these baits, you can't fish it you know, through grass or around grass or in the sticks. This bait you can obviously, because it's just got a single hook and it rides true. So that hook's facing up. You're not going to snag brush, get all messed up with the grass and things on your on your bait. Um, so if you bend it out, then you can fish it more like a spinner bait. Like I was doing that at Lopez. That's actually how I caught that fish. Is I was kind of winding it real slow, kind of checking it out, and 180. So here so, you're seeing real quick. These are the two fish. Uh, shout out to Jeff Hodges, your guide for the day. You guys got yeah, some yeah. nice ones, and then if you scan to the next right. one. There's that fish. They're, now they can see the photo of the that gargle in the fish's lip right there. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. So that, you know that that, like I said, I was just kind of experiment with it because from what I learned from Jackal to that point, you know, I mean, this was brand new. Like I got it. I think I was the first guy in the United States to have one. Um, I, they had told me, yeah, you know, it's a top water or subsurface bait, and I'm like, subsurface, you know, there's not too many baits you can do that with. So that's actually how that fish ate it. And so I was like, okay, you know, and it, it's going to make a different, um, a different presentation, a different vibration in the water as opposed to a spinnerbait. Mm. So just something different. Like I said, by just bending in or out that wire, you can simply, and I'm not talking, you know, get a pair of pliers and bend it straight out or bend it all the way in, just a little slight adjustment. And then keep, if you want to fish like a buzz bait, throw it out there and again with that distinct sound that's what really kind of i was like uh oh those places where i couldn't throw these other top water baits because of the structure and you know what whatever it may be i can now throw this but it's got that sound i'm gonna wreck some more somewhere um so probably not here at uh, sturgeon bay this week um <laughs> not in this <laughs> not in this environment maybe if i was in a creek or something but that's so not happening it's got a little hook keeper on the back too. Were you just fishing it bare at Lopez or do you have something on there? No, I put on a little, actually a 3.8 rhythm wave on it. Um, that's, I throw that or a toad style bait on the back of my buzz baits, uh, a lot or even a spinner bait. Yeah, that little keeper right there, that's gonna really hold whatever you're doing. Um, and now what I do kind of, along with some of the, we just got done talking with the Eco Pro and their keepers, I will actually take a pair of needle nose and kind of bend that keeper in just a little bit, just so it has more of a bite. You don't have to, it works fine just the way it is, but it's kind of a little ways I tweak things out. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, honestly, I've, I haven't thrown it for more than, shoot, that one evening, and then I flew back here to Sturgeon Bay and I didn't really feel like it was the deal, uh, but I'll be fishing the world championship next week somewhere. So if we're going around some lakes with some habitat on the bank mm -hmm. i definitely will be throwing this because i know for a fact they haven't seen it but they i know that fish like that kind of sound that gurgling you know different sound 
So, so you gave you gave this one to Corey? No, I did not give that one. That's what you said it on camera. We have it on camera. You guys all heard it. That is mine. Because if that's the case, I'm going to take this because he always steals my stuff. So. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, if, if Corey were to keep it, it'd probably end up on the dock in Lakeport. Or <laughs> <laughs> one time during that vlog, it cast off. And I still think one of you guys, one of you two on the losing team, by the way, cut my line. So I made that first cast. But uh, I, I lost, I might have lost a prototype jackal or the prototype. Uh, what River was it? To see no. It was the crankbait, the tactical crankbait, wasn't it? No, it was the the Z, the Evergreen Jackhammer. It was those new, uh, okay. the new custom tack no, warehouse see, colors. There was too many times to count now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, all right, we, we got to pick up the pace and run a little behind. What do you got there, Corey? So uh, that's available for pre-order. Also up next is a new rearranged bait. Now they've had the Jackal rearranged before. This is a Re new range. MR now. Yeah. So. So basically, um, I did a vlog with Tackle early this spring on this bait right here. So this is the regular Rearange 110. They just came out with the Rearange 110 MR. So it's basically the same body as what it is. You can kind of see right there. Mm -hmm. um, I forget the name of this color, but it's one of my favorites. Uh, so it's the same body, same three hooks, nice sharp treble hooks. The difference is, is the bill. So here's the, the standard one. And then here's the MR. So you can see the bill is, is a lot different. So in playing, playing with this, actually, I've been throwing it here in practice. I've caught a few fish on it. Um, it can get down like I was throwing on 10 pound Sunline uh, Sniper. And I was getting this bait down to eight, nine feet. Um, if I went to eight pound line, I bet you I could get it down to closer to 10 maybe. Um, so the regular, had, you know, it'll get, get down there about I would say any, depending on your line, three to five and a half foot. So again, six to eight, maybe even nine foot. And it has the same action, it really darts around really good when you snap your rod, when you're jerking it, it really darts, moves around. And then the other thing that I talked about in the vlog was the weight transfer system. So you can see right here, I don't know if you can pick that up. When you throw that bait, that lead, you know, or tungsten, I should say, Slides up in there, and it, you could throw it like a rocket against the wind. Um, it really helps you be able to make those long casts into the wind with light line, a light, you know, your, your jerk bait rod. Um, so really, really good. I'm really happy that they came out with this. I got, you know, a few colors here. Um, how many colors is there, Corey? Uh, and the rearrange, let me look it up here. Sorry. I had it on there, and I... Another one. Um, but I mean, super, super pumped on this bait. Oops, um, I can't spell. You know, it's kind of missing in their lineup. Everybody knows about the squad, you know, um, and they make that in a deeper diver. This has a different action. So now we got two different depths. Um, with one bait. We got so, 10 different colors. You and you guys can see all the colors different down depth. below under, under the bait there, or under the video we're watching right now. So you check out the colors. And those are also all available for pre-order. So get your guys' orders in now. Make sure to check them out. Um, another new jack old bait. Oh, sorry. Well, that's cool that's color. Really nice. Yeah, that's that's the deal right there. Go ahead. Sorry. And what do you got next, Daniel? Uh, next we have the TN, which is I know one of your favorite baits. And now we have a new yeah. size, a little snack size. A little snacky. Yeah. So so. For those of you that have seen whatever some vlogs I've done on tackle, a lot of them are throwing the TN70s. One of my go-to baits in the fall, I mean, actually kind of all year round, it just catches fish. Um, so you can see right here, I should have had a TN70, but I didn't bring one in, but it's a smaller bait. Um, it's 5 sixteenths of an ounce, so it's just a little bit heavier than a quarter ounce. Uh, it's got the same tungsten lip here, um, same rattle. It's just, you know, it's a small bait. It's only two inches, um, which, you know, a lot of guys are like, man, you know, if I'm going to throw a, a lipless style bait, I'm going to throw the big, big dog, you know, the big three quarter ounce or half ounce. This right here, I can see like at Clear Lake or basically anywhere you're fishing where the fish get pressured, this is going to get you more bites. I remember doing a vlog with uh, Alex Davis back in the day. And I was catching one on a TN, he put on, or the TN70, he put on the 60, started mm -hmm. catching fish. And uh, it was really good. 
Uh oh. Hold on. Do you have time for a guest appearance? Who we got here? Special guest. We got Todd. You'll never guess who it is. Uh, oh, hey, hey. Not allowed. Hey. Out. No. Nope. <laughs> out. Guest is out. What's, What's up? Happening? Not much. Just trying to do work. What are you doing? Well, just retired. It's hot. Uh, you know, just looked at the score tracker. Our fellow Justin Lucas is killing it. Killing it. Yeah. What do we got new here, man? Ton of, ton of good stuff, huh? TN50. Mm, sweet. So the other the other deal about this bait is like at Clear Lake, right? Where I've, I've said it before, those little silver sides get like that big. Well, that's about the size of those of those bait fish. So, like I said, it's it's I wouldn't throw it on my regular TN70 setup. I'd throw it on maybe 10 maximum 12 pound line, a lighter action crankbait rod, and uh, you're going to get bit on this. I mean, you know, high pressured lakes, uh, lakes that, you know, traditionally you see a lot of lipless crankbaits, whether it's in the spring or in the fall, you're going to get added bites by these right here. I think there's what, 10 colors, Corey? Uh, I believe it's the same as the, that we have two. in the... Yeah, they, got a, they got a couple of new colors here too. This is some kind of... See you, Cody. Do your thing. See you guys. Hey, go... Uh, go 12 colors. Down. He's going to go wipe down the boat with his bling sauce. Nice. Good night. Good call. 12 <laughs> colors. 12 colors. Yeah. All, all the same colors yeah. we have available in the regular TN. So here, here's a couple new colors that they got. This okay. is kind of interesting. So I'm, I'm really curious about throwing this. I have not thrown this color. They don't make it in the TN70 to this point. But I want to throw this color like you know, in that kind of more stained water, or if you get, you know, some mud coming into the lake or something like that. And then you got like a chartreuse gill kind of color. So two brand new colors outside of the TN lineup already. Um, again, TN 50, um, five sixteenths of an ounce, make it easy, just a little bit heavier than a quarter ounce. I heard that's a good catfish bait too, right? Uh, Corey probably would catch catfish. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> Hey, that was a big cat. We should have had that picture queued up, ready to go for everybody. I don't know why we didn't have that one ready. Oh, we yeah. do. <laughs> Daniel Sneaky. Yeah. That's when we were at, at Clear Lake. I was kind of getting practice in and behind, we were filming and these guys were not catching anything. So I got bored. And <laughs> <laughs> so I threw it out in the back of the boat and snagged it. But no, they were on and we were just kind of moving water. But that was a fun shoot. That was a Cody and Jared uh, video. It's almost like you guys planned that somehow without letting me know. But uh, hey, really? Real quick, yes, Corey. Sir. Yeah. Um, just, I'll do just real quick. You bet. So I, I know you guys have had these out for a while. I finally got mine. Everybody knows the Jackal MC60 MR. Yeah. Uh, was one of my favorite all-time crankbaits, and then they it went away, and they reintroduced it with a new with new color patterns. Um, so make sure and check these out on Tackle Warehouse. They got like a, a transparent craw, a nice looking bluegill. There's like a kind of a delta red crowd with some orange on it. Um, anyway, there's all new colors in the MRs available right now. So the days of me stockpiling all my MCs and nobody else had them are pretty much over. So <laughs> hey, I, did, I did the same thing. When those things were going away, uh, I, I might have picked up a few myself. You guys probably know what color I was picking up. Um, but I, I might have a few myself kind of stashed away in the garage. But now I can get them again. So. My stash yep. is worthless almost. Yep. But pre-order all the new Jackal stuff is available pre-order right now on Tackle. Uh, up next, we got a bunch of SKB stuff. Uh, we've we're running pretty tight here. If we go through them pretty quick, because we got again, we got it's not your fault, Jerry, but we we'll get through it. We don't want to make McClellan wait too long. We get mad at us. But uh, right. so, up first on the SKB stuff, we have uh, Tackle Organizer Storage Case. Which one's that one, Jared? The two twenty four Tackle Storage oh. Case. That's right here. Okay. So it, it's basically just a nice box. I mean, you can see right here, that's what I've been doing my videos out of. Uh, it's got nice latches, uh, customized, you know, you just, like anything, you cut out your the little dividers, put them in wherever you like. Um, I've been using these now for, I don't know, six, eight months, really durable. Um, I, like, I like that they're clear. Um, you know, some of the other boxes are kind of a, a faint kind of, I don't know, different colors. And I like to be able to see what's in my boxes. And uh, like I said, they fit in the boat nice, stacks in nice. Again, with the latches, it's 
So that's your uh, lure organizer. All right, and are, are these are all going to be available for... You buy them right now. We have on the site all, all the SKB stuff you can get right now on Tackle Warehouse. Uh, Jared, it sounds like you might need to get some yourself because JC might have uh, walked off with a few of the items, that, including the next one you did have and somehow it made it to school. Uh, are we going back? It's the new backpack, right? Yeah, so, so the de Tackle, or the, yeah, the Tack backpack, um, we got that, I don't know, six, seven months ago. I actually went and, he cut and to the Perry went and walked around a pond. Uh, it's really comfortable, really uh, functional, you know, for the guys that if you're a co-angler or if you're going, you know, bank fishing, uh, it's great. It, it stores everything really well. You can see right there. I don't have one. I gave it to my son to go to Boise State. Fits all of his tackle in there. Uh, him and his buddy share a boat. So they kind of use that as their... Well, he uses that as his secret kind of, that's my lures, and then they have stuff for their boat. But on the top there, it's got a room for either, it's made for an ice chest, so there's a little pack that you can put in there, uh, keep your sandwich cold or what have you. Um, I use it for plastic, you know, storing plastics in there. Um, the front, you, Daniel showed you, had a, a full-size zipper where you could fit storage boxes in there and, uh, the, the cool thing about SKB stuff is it's really, really durable. So the zippers on all their products, their soft bags are, are oversized and, you know, they're not, they're not going to fail on you and, and cause major problems. On the sides there, they have uh, little mesh bags um, that you could fit, you know, pliers or tools, whatever, line. Other sides got storage also. So you can fit a lot of things in there and it makes it, like I said, really comfortable to wear if you're going on a hike, you know, pond hopping, whatever, or if you're a non-boater and you just want something, and it's not that big. I mean, I wish we had something to reference it with, but uh, over the years, I've had some co-anglers that bring way too much, way too big of a bag. <laughs> not so, me. So, yeah, you're the one who I thought of. So <laughs> a guy getting in my boat with that, with all of his stuff is awesome. It fits in a back compartment of a ranger really nice lays in there nice and flat everything's organized or if you want to keep it out in the boat there it is too so and like i mentioned the straps on there heavy duty you're not going to have a problem with tearing the seams or you know the straps failing so uh really really cool product um trying to get jc to send me some pictures of what he's got in there but who knows what he's got in there actually right now <laughs> <laughs> probably a bunch of the new samples we have so also from, from SKB is a couple of new storage or lure cases and storage bags. Tell us about the, you got the case there, Jerry. What, what can you tell us about that guy? Or well, so yeah, the lure cases. Um, we'll see the one you have there. That's, that's made for grass. And I'm trying to get one, uh, I guess, you know, the same deal I could use for my Garmin's. Mm -hmm. um, but that's for Lawrence. It fits like a, I think it was a 12 inch unit or is that 16? This is but the bigger 16. Cut. I think Daniel's got the smaller one there. Yeah. The, the, yeah but, they're, they're kind of made though, where oh, you can put that one, they're still, and you could cut out that foam you just took out. And mm -hmm. if you have like a 10 inch unit, you could fit it in there, you know, customize it to that. So oh, really yeah, yeah. cool. I need to order one of those because when I travel a lot, uh, a lot of times my graph ends up in my floorboard of my truck <laughs> and they get banged around. So something like that is really good. And same thing with what I was saying about the backpack. All the components on these cases are built to last. There's nothing cheap about them. The latches, the way the hinges are, you're not going to break this case at all. Um, so Daniel showing you that deal. So here's what I got. I think we have the same case there. What I did with this is I put my spinner baits in there. Um, I have them all, you know, by size and stuff like that. I, so I customize it. Now, if I wanted to hang swim baits in there uh, or you know, crankbaits, whatever, you can do whatever you see fit. These little deals up here, I put my spinnerbait frames in there, I put some plastics on the, you know, trailers and things like that in that compartment. And like I said, it is waterproof, 100% waterproof um, and extremely durable. I, I can't stress that enough. When you close this sucker, it is, yeah, deep it nothing is. is getting in there. There's no moisture getting in and then, um, it's even got a little 
little area here for a lock. And what I do, I'll show you right here. Here's a smaller one. Um, this I keep in my boat in the engine compartment because of the fact that it's waterproof. I can I keep my tools in here, okay? Um, so all my tools for the boat are simply in there. I strap it in the back engine compartment, and that thing's been in there all year, all year long. Uh, no rust, no water. I mean, it's just and with the amount of tools in there, it's not breaking. You know, a lot of times if you store your tools in a hard case, the hinges are going to fail, the sides are going to pop out, and you have a major problem. Did we talk about the soft bags, Corey? Right, we did the soft bag yet. No, let's, let's quickly go into that one there. You want to do that? Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, so, so quick. So we've got a couple sizes. So again, these just came out. Um, this is a soft bag. Again, with the durable, bigger size zippers. I mean, that's really, really important. This right here is uh, got all my got all my spinner bed trailers in there. Got a nice heavy duty Velcro deal. So I just put my spinner bed trailers in there. Uh, on top, um, you got two extra compartments. These I got trailer hooks in, and I got some other different types of swim or uh, spinner bait, buzz bait trailers. Um, but really, it's not just built for trailers. You can put in whatever kind of plastics, uh, hooks, weights, whatever you want to store in there that you have um, that you need to be, you know, it's kind of kind of weird to store. This bag is, is the right deal. Um, it has, it comes with a little side strap. I took mine off because mine's in the boat all the time. So if you need to throw it over your shoulder, it has a nice strap there. And uh, that's that one. That's a really cool bag. I have lots of those in my boat. And then what I did with this medium size one, um, it's it's a little bit bigger. Obviously, you can see here. You see the size difference. Um, I put it, all my crops in here, and then when I need them for the tournament, I can go through here, pick out what I need. Um, I got jackal. I got all kinds of zooms. I got every craw basically for swim jigs, flipping in this bag. The zipper again. Same thing as the other other bag. And then on the top, it's got same as the smaller bag, two other compartments. So you could store a lot of stuff in here. And again, the durability is is everything. Because over the years, I've dealt with a lot of tackle systems and failing zippers and seams are a thing of the past with, with the STV stuff. Very nice. So up next, before we get Mike on the phone here real quick, uh, again, Durability and, and quality is, is obviously the name of the game with the SKB stuff. And looking at this new rod tube, again, JC has this, so Jared's had it with them. But Jared, I guess just have you, you get to play it this much at all, or what can you tell us a little bit about this? It's just, you know, like, like all, the, all the SKB stuff, like you said, it's all military grade. Um, so the durability, the, you know, every component on there has a function and it's, it's built to last. Mm. Uh, so with that rod tube right there, JC was driving up to Boise and he had his rods and he's like, I'm gonna break these. I'm like, well, use this. It's gonna protect everything, keep it all safe, secure. Um, I believe that has a lock on there, if I'm not mistaken. He has a latch, <clears throat> we kind of latch in and you can see the yeah, side. Yeah, can, yeah, it looks like you can the lock these latches. Lock, so if you're, you know, if you're traveling wherever, you can lock that up, put it, you know, ship it. Um, it it obviously extends, um, so if you have, you know, a six foot rod or eight foot rods or a combination, um, just really, really, it's designed to not fail, to protect your equipment. So, uh, yeah, I need to make sure JC didn't do something crazy with that thing, but uh, <laughs> uh, somehow my stuff is his stuff. I, I don't know. Maybe it's because we have the same name. Yeah, that's not the same. Technically, you put your name on it. It's his name, too. So. Uh... Very so nice. yeah, I mean, that's, that's all the new stuff I got to talk about. Um, Jackal, SKB, Eco Pro, and uh, I'm gonna go get rigged up for tomorrow's Group B fishing. Very cool. Thanks again, Jared. Thanks for taking the time to come talk to us today. Uh, I mean, we could see you all the time. You probably didn't want to see me today, but uh, <laughs> I'm glad. Right. To... <laughs> well, good luck tomorrow. Uh, hope things go well. Um, I'm rooting for you guys. Team Tackles have a good week this this week. I'm feeling it. Um, and thanks again. All this SKB stuff available right now on Talk Warehouse. Right? So make sure to check them out. Up next, we got Mike McClellan and Jared. We'll talk to you later, man.
See you, Jared. Nice. Keep up tomorrow, man. Or what? <laughs> well, it wouldn't be an iCast without Joey making a mistake and screwing up the schedule. No, I messed up like normal. I always have some kind of iCast scheduling snafu, and I did it again this year. So um, it wasn't Joey's fault. But uh, we got we had Dan Johnson queued up next for St. Croix. He still will be coming up next, but we have to we would not a half hour out before we get him on. So in the meantime, we're gonna watch a video from Todd Castle. I don't know if you got a chance to watch that video, but with some pretty cool stuff with Todd. I have not g gotten a chance to check it out yet, yeah. but I, this is really exciting stuff coming yeah. from Todd. Uh, I, I have gotten a chance to actually fish some of the stuff he's gonna talk about and some potential game changers. Yeah. I know that phrase gets <laughs> tossed around a lot, but uh, some really exciting stuff coming from Todd. Yeah, Todd Castling up next with the new Hybrid Hunter and Luz Reel. Check him out, guys. Up next, we've got a few new products from Luz and Strike King with Todd Castledine. Hey, Todd, how you doing? Uh, pretty good, guys. Nice. So Daniel's actually working on a little project boat, getting a little John boat built. And we were talking about going out and uh, doing a little frog fishing this weekend. And we were kind of checking out the new pad perch. I was asking one of the buyers about it because I haven't fished it yet. And he was saying you actually have a lot of experience in the design. Can you tell us just a little bit about the pad perch and the bait itself and where you'd use that over a traditional frog or where you like it over a traditional different style frogs? All right, yeah. So when we designed the pop and perch first, right? And and that was more for like, you know, any to walk it around, spit it. More not necessarily open water stuff, but more open water stuff. The pad perch was was really designed for for what it's called, right? It's for throwing it in the pads, throwing it in um hay grass, pepper grass, anything that's basically the thickest, nastiest stuff you can imagine uh, fishing over. That's what we designed it for. And so <clears throat> we really wanted it to be weedless. Like that was our main goal, right? Is to make it weedless. So we went out there and I basically, I never went fishing with this bait. I threw this bait out in the woods. Like I literally just, I throw it out in the front yard, backyard, out in the woods. Like it never touched water. I wanted it to be able to come through anything. So that was kind of the premise behind it and we still wanted to use the whole pad shape and the form and everything and of course we in designing it we we got it to walk and we got it to walk i mean like really really good i mean like huge side to side stuff so it's still made for open water but we designed it basically for like the nastiest stuff you can throw in and and that's that was pretty much the premise behind staying with the same perch style bait you know because that's Guys, that's really what they're going after, a perch. They're, rarely are they ever after going after frogs. It's This is all a perch thing. Very nice. Now, I know it's not a new iCast product, guys. It was just something that I, I didn't know much about, so I kind of wanted to, well, I had the man on the phone here and wanted to kind of pick his brain a little bit. And just, I mean, it's curious, what's, with, with the tail design, what's what's the what's the, the attributes of the tail design that you like with that, or what's the reasoning for that kind of style of tail? All right, so we knew we wanted something different with the tail. I mean, if you're going to build a perch, you can't, you can't have it look like everything else, right? I mean, we wanted the tail, we wanted the profile because what they're doing obviously is they're seeing it from underneath, right? So we want the profile to look just like a perch as much as possible. And and the tail was a, a big key in that. And I've I've done a uh, I've done a video uh, with uh, Ken Eubanks, the the head guy, of, you know, striking and lose. And I kind of showed him that like when you put it on top of a pad with the sun out. I mean, you see the entire profile better than you would ever see anything. So that was important to us. So we had to figure out a way we could make a tail that still matched the bait. We could mm -hmm. color it and, and make it look right, you know, so it matched. And we wanted it to flare out like it does, you know, so it, it, it mimics that. But the key is, and, and I try to tell people that even with the pop and perch, that tail is very crucial and how that bait works because all baits work really good slow. The faster you usually speed something up, the more you see the deficiencies in that bait. Okay, I mean, y'all have all seen a crankbait, you start reeling it too fast, it starts going up to the side. Mm -hmm. it, that usually means there's a deficiency somewhere in how it's made. So that tail, what happens is when you're either popping the popping perch or moving that pad perch, when you when you pop it or do something with it, that initial deal makes it go a certain ways, but that tail slows it down. And you want it to slow down because when it slows it down, it, it, it stops it. And by the time you're able to pop it again or do whatever you want to with it, it's in the right position. If it's not in the right position and you try to pop it again, 
that's when you see baits roll to the side or try to dive and stuff. So that that tail is very crucial in, in why we built it the way we did. And and that's that's kind of we always kind of talk about like a, a tail to a kite. You know, if you don't put a tail on a kite, it goes all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's pretty much why we designed it the way it the, the way it is. Stabilize it a little bit. So unlike, yeah. I mean, a regular frog, you wouldn't want to trim these tails. Is that true, or is there an instance where you would? No, and that's why it walks so great. I mean, I, I swear, like everyone always comes up to me and is like, man, that's one of the easiest baits to walk, and and that's because of the tail. If you actually start cutting the tail, it won't walk as good it'll get unstable. Mm -hmm. So that tail actually lets it go the way it's supposed to. I mean, it's almost everything it has to do with that bait. Very nice. Well, that's, I think, like I said, we're gonna take them out this weekend and try them out. So now we got a little more insight in that. So really nice. Um, so the first new iCast product we have today is a, a, with a new L Lose Speechful LFS casting reel. It's really a new gear age show, but you have some experience, I guess, kind of with that is there you have history with this wheel right or, or the family wheels correct right it's the speedful i mean it's 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 the speedful edition i mean that's that's what it is and they they sent it to me because lou's kind of knows like they kind of know what guys throw what and and i was introduced to lose years and years ago by a guy and he came up and gave me like a speedful like one of the first ones ever and i was like i was kind of with the uh other reels been using reels for when I was a kid and I was like, man, this is the first lose rail I'd ever done, uh, you know, put in my hands. And that's the one he gave me. And I literally, I use that thing for years. And all of a sudden I'm a guy that, uh, uh, of habit, right? If I like something, I go buy more of it. And I'm not going to go like, look at the lose stuff and go, I'm going to buy all these different reels. I'm like, no, that's the reel I like. I'm going to keep buying those reels. And so I still to this day have those same lose reels from five, six years ago. And they're the same speed spools. They're just now coming out with, with um, newer versions of it. You know, um, a lot of reels back in back in the day, 15 years ago. I mean, nothing was over like a five to one or a six to one, right? I mean, if you ever go back to those reels, you look, you know, 20 years ago, like man, we'd have to crank so hard <laughs> on some of these reels to get. And it, they weren't crankbait reels; they were just regular reels. And so now they're just they're getting better. You know, they're getting uh, higher gear ratios, like this eight three to one. And, and I'm a guy who almost always throws a higher gear ratio. Um, I'm not saying that most people, but I look for higher gear ratios. I almost never go the opposite direction. So like if, if they keep on bringing them out, I'm going to keep on getting ones with higher gear ratios. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm in the same boat. I'd rather have the higher gear ratio. To me, I'd rather have to try to make myself slow down, which is it's tough for me. But I like the ability that I, I can always go fast and... and, and I, I don't play the fish out as much as I probably should. I try to get in the boat as fast as I can and pick up line and get back out there when I'm casting and stuff. I like that higher gear ratio. Is there a specific instance in general where you, you see the eight three to one shining or a, a use case or, or technique or for you, is that kind of going to be your, your all around gear ratio for everyday use? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I tend to, there's always going to be things I'm like you, I, I'm not worried. I can always slow down, but I can never speed up. Right. I mean, there's a limit to how fast you can go. And it's really not so much about reeling a bait in. Like, so I use as high gear ratios when I'm worm fishing. And the reason is, is, I mean, all you're doing out there, the only time you really need that reel is when you're fighting a fish. And if a fish starts to make a run or you need to catch up to it, mm. that's where that gear ratio comes in. So, you know, I never worry about having a, a high, you know, a low gear ratio when worming. So like th there's an application. Um, you could be Carolina rigging, throwing a jig, um, anything where I think I need to reel in a lot of slack, maybe before I set the hook or while fighting a fish, um, anything with braid and the reason I want it with braid a lot of times is because there's no stretch. And so since there's no stretch, you're like, well, it kind of, kind of seems like it'd be the opposite, but what happens is when there's no stretch and they make a run you know, to the side, like if you're in really shallow water, they'll go to the side real fast, almost like a redfish, right? Mm -hmm. And that no stretch, I mean, they're gone and your rod doesn't have a time to load with them. So, I mean, you have to keep that pressure on them really, really quick. And so that's, that's why I like high gear ratios. That's why I like this new LFS. I mean, giving us more options with the same, this is the same reel. You know what I'm saying? Like it looks the same, it feels the same as all those speed spool 
reels that they had forever. It's just a better gear ratio or a higher gear ratio that is, can be used for different applications. Very nice. Uh, and I, I know this is available in the left-hand model now in both the, for both those. And like I'm a left-hand guy, so I'd be really stoked on that. If you guys want to pick up one of the new LFS 8-3-to-1s, they're available for pre-order right now on TACRL, so make sure to go check those guys out and get you one pre-ordered up. What do we got next, Daniel? Uh, next up, let's talk about the hybrid hunter crankbait that you got there. I, and I think we have some... Uh, some video queued up so we'll have the editors ready to play that when we get to it but yeah let's go over a little bit of, of the features of the bait and then uh, when you might use it or situational stuff where you see it coming in, into play all right um yeah we we uh we came you out have one there you bait. can show us by chance or sorry yeah i've got i've got all kinds of them i really i don't have very many of them <laughs> i've been fishing them a lot so that I just got these and they don't even have hooks on them. I nice. mean, like I'm literally having to put hooks on them and stuff. This is like from my, uh, my own little collection. I got one that I was throwing the other day and it's still got like grass and stuff on it. I like, but, that. um, yeah, the, so there's a lot to this bait and, and a lot of people don't know the history about it, but, uh, I, I ended up, I ended up kind of probably being the first person to ever throw this bait in the U S like 10, 12 years ago. Um, and so I don't want to get into all that cause it's a, it's a long story, but it's been around, but you can't get any of them anymore. And so, uh, with strike King and everything, we, 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 uh, we managed to get the mold, you know, and everything's all up to standards and stuff. So we got the mold and now we're making them. And this was like a underground bait. I mean, this was like a true underground trying to get on, you know, somewhere to go find one of these was basically impossible i uh, i'm not gonna lie we have hoarded a lot of them in a couple guys garages over the years so i mean they were hard to find but we designed we ended up coming out with it um and we changed up the colors because there's colors really matter on this bait because of because of what it does and how it moves through the water and if y'all want me to get into that right now yeah, talk about that. Maybe you can show the bait too, and you're kind of talking about it too. But we'll, we'll we'll throw some stuff on video. Maybe just have one in your hand to kind of show the guys. And okay. Yeah. So so this is what it looks like, and the difference is is this is I don't man I really don't ever want to call it a crankbait because it's gonna get it's gonna get pigeonholed into a crankbait, but there's it's not really a crankbait to be honest with you. It just looks like one, but. It's 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 a fairly big boat bait. It's loud as can be. I think y'all can hear that. So it's probably the loudest. If we'll just call it a crankbait for now, it's probably the loudest crankbait you'll ever hear. Right? It's probably the most buoyant crankbait you'll ever see. I, this thing floats like crazy, which helps in uh, what it does. Now it looks kind of looks kind of big and fat or whatever, right? But it's flat sided. Okay, which is huge. So most crankbaits. Um, like the smaller crankbaits, almost none of them are flat sided unless you get an actual flat sided crankbait. Um, and usually most of them are real skinny and thin, but this isn't. So what this does is it allows it to move through the, most crankbaits move through the water like that. So when you pull on them, they tend to go down. This one with that bill tends to, when it goes down, it goes down in a, in a, a horizontal um, line. So it's not digging which is good for coming through cover and grass. Most crankbaits want to dig into that cover. This one wants to bear, just ease down into that cover. And when you stop it, it wants to float up because it's so buoyant. And so, in, which is great. So if you're fishing grass and you got this mat of grass, and I'll say it a mat underneath the water, as this comes down there and you hit the grass, right? If you let it come back up and reel on it again, most of them just want to dive right back into it this one takes forever to go down to the grass again so now you're being able to move this bait five six seven eight more feet before you might hit grass again mm. whereas other crankbaits just constantly dig into it and you're always able to give this bait slack to let it come back up and then work those areas real quick and it doesn't dive more than five foot so i can literally work this in a foot with my rod tip up or get it down to five foot and that's kind of the the neat thing about it the other thing is, is we called it the hybrid hunter for a reason, for two reasons. One, 
like I said, it's it's kind of a crankbait, but it's it works a lot more like a jerk bait when you hit stuff. So you're all it's always kind of going in different directions. <clears throat> and it's kind of like a red eye because of how flat it runs through the water. So I kind of make all three of those is kind of this one deal. And that's why colors make a difference is because of the flat side. The flat side, you get this flash, okay? And you can almost see it right here. It's always doing this. It's not, it's, it doesn't run like this, it, it rolls. And so you're always getting this flash in the water. So it kind of picks up characteristics of more of a jerk bait and like a red eye, you know, for the color reasons is we made more colors like that because those baits tend to get more colors that that represent the side of it and mixing those two colors together does that make sense yeah so it it, it does a lot in in the hunter is this bill and this thing is designed really uniquely it's really really hard to replicate and here's why and there's some baits out there that are like that um the faster you reel this thing the more it hunts and it doesn't stay very true a lot of times it's always moving like that a lot of baits when you design them like that they get out here and they want to mess up yeah. this one gets up out here just enough and then comes back and so the faster you reel it the more it hunts hence the name hybrid hunter so that's that's kind of how um this this bait came to to be i guess if you want if you will yeah when but, i first sorry go ahead oh i was gonna say you talked about application yeah um it works good in the grass and wood and stuff, but man, we honestly, I've been throwing it for smallmouth. I've, I've thrown it at lakes like Table Rock and these places um, that are that are clear, that don't have any grass, that don't. Any, and and the reason is is because I can work this bait so fast that it in those clear waters you always want to work baits really really fast. You know, you don't want them to get a good look. But this thing's so crazy and so unique and how it runs that, like I said, jerk baits usually work pretty good in clear water this thing kind of shines at times in some clear water applications. Nice. Now you've, you've used this obviously for quite a while and you've caught some pretty big bags on this bait and right. I mean, if you know, there's some local tournaments, some opens and stuff too, but I know I've heard you caught a lot of get some big fish and big bags on this guy. Yeah. Right. So like I said, I've, I've kind of kept it. I, there was no reason to kind of let the cat out of the bag for a couple of years. So um, yeah, we've, I've done pretty good on, quite a few tournaments uh led some coasters doing it uh caught a i think my biggest bass is a 12-6 on it uh, on toledo bend um we've uh yeah we like i said it's been kind of underground people know about it they just can't get any so we've kind of been uh, i'm not gonna lie we've kind of been keeping it to ourselves for a <laughs> while and and but yeah we've we've used it i mean i've used it this year a lot on like i used it down there when i was at the uh, open on Kissimmee and and places we've I'll put it to you this way. I, there's pro, maybe not the Arkansas River, but just about every tournament this year, I have thrown one. So uh, we saw a little bit of the uh, footage earlier on, but um, if the editors could throw that up, I'm sure you guys probably want to see that. Um, and then um, this is available for pre order. Pre order. Uh, right I'm now. not sure how many colors we have, um, but. Did you guys select the color since you, you were mentioning how important color was for this bait? Did you, did you uh, go through there and select like certain Strike King colors that you guys already had specifically for this bait? Yeah, yeah so we, we, we probably did 25 colors um, just to see how they came out. And, and we obviously took colors that, that I had already kind of known uh, mm -hmm. that worked really well. Uh, and we took those colors uh, there was a color or two in there that that I had designed um, a long time ago that are in there that we it had worked. And then we kind of, when when we first got them, there weren't a lot of colors that we really truly liked. Mm -hmm. but I kind of stayed with four or five of the ones that, that worked really well. And then others, to be, I'll be honest with you, didn't work that well because um, a lot of true crankbait colors that we're used to seeing, I'll be honest, like a sexy shad, you know, those don't really those don't really shine in these, you know, um, they, they, they just don't because of how this thing is designed. So a lot more jerkbait colors, a, mo okay. a lot more red eye colors, um, are, are more, are, 
are are better fit for this thing. Hence, you know, just I mean, come on, that's that's like the best red eye color of all time, right? <laughs> so we took a lot of jerk bait colors. So we got a lot of of clear ones, like the clear water minnow, which is probably my favorite. And you, but we we got some clear ones, we got some shiny ones, and then we still put in some good some just good crankbait colors you know like colors that that still produce in the crankbait but they have a little bit more color have some crawfish patterns to them things like that so we tried to kind of pick three or four from each genre Mm -hmm. and and i think we have 12 i think we have 14 colors i believe it looks like uh i've got you guys should check out the colors down below on the site underneath the video here but we've got 12 uh looks like right now and that smooth color is kind of a unique looking kind of color too. That's, I haven't seen that color before. That's 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 the one I did. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that. I don't know. Makes me feel good about that one. But yeah, that one's like an old school color. That uh, that's the one I was catching them on. Uh, I'll be on, I, at Amistad in the Costa event a couple years ago. So where did that name come from? That sounds like a name that Phil, a nickname Phil would give you or something like that. Where's smooth come now, from? His nicknames for me are probably not allowed on here. But no, I. <laughs> I just came up with that one. Uh, I don't know. I just liked it. I just I came up. I came up with that one too. The the name. Nice. So. Very cool. Well, guys, again, head to the website to check out all those colors and specs um, more in detail and pre-order yourself some. Yeah, I, I want to check some. I remember when they when they first came out, I was telling the guys at Strike Team like, yeah, it's kind of a funky looking bill. What's going on there? But it makes sense now. Uh, I've been educated. I'm a big crankbait guy or uh, hybrid guy now, so I'll go check those yeah. things out and, and get them. Um, you know, the other day I was kind of watching and kind of stalking on the social, and looks like you've been really, you've, about a year ago you started a YouTube channel, and you've been doing a lot more, or recently kind of stepping up. Are you, you kind of doing more of the YouTube stuff or trying to get more into that, or just, or what's going on with that? Well, honestly, I, I, I was not a fan of all that stuff a couple of years ago. I didn't, it didn't make, I just didn't like it, to be honest with you. And then, uh, FLW made us buy that camera two years ago. And so I, I just started having to film everything. And after filming for a couple of weeks, I was like, well, what am I going to do with all this stuff? Right. I got all this footage and in some, you know, one of the first tournaments, man, I, I, I really did good. And I, I caught him and I was like, man, I got this footage. What do I do with it? So I started just kind of throwing videos together, but with zero concern about YouTube, I just put them on YouTube, really just to store them, you know, and, and all of a sudden, like, I started kind of figuring it out a little bit. And I started getting a little bit better at editing and things like that. And now I see the power in it. And I've just I've just enjoyed it. Uh, I can't believe I, I, I'm still, I still don't like wearing a big old, you know, camera <laughs> on my chest yeah. and stuff. I still get made fun of, of all my buddies and stuff. But um, I've embraced it way more than I ever thought I would. And now I, there's not a time on my boat where I step on my boat that that camera's not running. And so I've learned, I'm learning like, man, I'm, I'm kind of into it. I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I'm pretty good into it. And so we're, I've got videos coming out every three days. So I think I got like nine ready to go right now scheduled. So, um, yeah, it's, I've enjoyed it. It's been, it's been a blast. And I, and I get to a lot answer so many, man, the questions about these baits and about these things, sometimes I just don't like talking about them. So I just go out there and make a video about it and just mm-hmm. put it up there and it answers everyone's questions. Very nice. Well, for you guys haven't checked out Todd's YouTube channel, check it out now. You know, he, if you don't know about it, he's a hammer. If you guys haven't watched him before, check it out. This, he catches fish, catches big fish. And I appreciate you taking the time out today to show us all the new stuff. I'm really pumped on, um, on especially those two baits, the pad perch we talked about, which isn't new iCast, but uh, that new hybrid bait. So I want to check those out. If you guys want to check out those products and pre-order them, go to the website and check those out. And check out the rest of our coverage here from iCast. I appreciate you taking the time, Todd. Hey guys, really cool stuff that I'm really pumped on that bait. And, you, and Todd mentioned in there that they've been kind of keeping it secret. And you notice we didn't have a sample on hand to show the camera. Uh, but it sounds like apparently we had some samples here, Mr. Reggio. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, that's not what I heard from Strike King. Uh, so I did have a tournament Sucker. coming up <laughs> where I knew I was going to be cranking grass. And not mm. only did I get the samples, but I got the full rundown from Mr. Castledine himself. And uh, you know, that's a really interesting little crankbait. And, and he's really right to say, don't call it a crankbait, yeah. C- call it a hybrid. And, and uh, you, you know, it, it's, a, it's a totally different style of bait to work 
when we're cranking grass, we're all used to, you know, when you feel it binding up, snatching it out, and you really have to resist that, uh, resist that urge with that bait. It's, it, when he says it's a, you know, he doesn't even know uh, what to call it. It's a, it's a hybrid kind of jerk bait, crank bait, swim bait. You almost got to kind of think of it as a swim bait. Hmm. And you're reeling that thing along, and when it hits the grass, the more you, the more you rip, the worse you're gonna be. Yeah. You gotta let that bait do its thing, and it's gonna, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna roll, and it's gonna create those strikes. And man, he is right. It is loud, and and one of the most interesting grass fishing uh, baits I've ever seen. I love to crank, and I love to fish grass, so I think that's gonna be a great bait for me to check out. I might have to go in your office later on today and. Uh, take those off your hands for you. Well, I think they're all locked up in my boat, so good luck with that. <laughs> I'll uh, work on it. So yeah, that was really interesting stuff from, from Mr. Todd Castledine. Uh, obviously, I wasn't there for that particular interview, but- uh, He had he, the baits though. He, yeah, I do have <laughs> the baits. Uh, so that, that kind of wraps up the, the, the pre-show for today. So let's get the live portion started, huh, Corey? Yeah, again, we're getting start, a little late start. I had, I, again, I screwed up on the schedule, but really stoked. Day number four of ICAST, had a lot of cool stuff coming. Got some more cool stuff coming today. Again, if you guys got questions, get on there, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and put your questions through. We'll get them over to us, and we'll do our best to get those answered. Don't forget to share into the contest and share the contest or enter your, your picks for your favorite products for this year. So, Corey, uh, day one, day two, day three, seemed like it went pretty well. Is day four when the wheels come off? Uh, the wheels got a little loose this morning. We got them <laughs> tightened back up and we're going down the road. Uh, we, we, those, those recorded stuff we usually put between some live to buy us a little time. Well, we just use our recorded time to buy up now. So we're going live straight through this thing and just chugging along. So hopefully it all goes smooth from here. If not, hey, we'll adapt. We'll keep it going and it's going to be a good time and a lot of cool products coming up. What do we got first today, Joey? You know, first we got a we got an interview with Dan Johnston. Dan is a, a, a product guy and a jack of all trades at St. Croix, uh, the rod company in Park Falls. And and Dan Dan's not just uh, a keen product guy and a great guy uh, to have on video, but he's also a hell of a fisherman. I get texts from this guy all the time with great big fish that he catches on the river and really all over the country, all over the world. So uh, let, let's kick it over to Dan if we got him ready. Hey Dan, how you doing? Good guys, how we doing? Uh, yeah. Doing pretty good. I'm sorry to hold, just drop it on you. Hey, you want to get on in ten minutes? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I want to hear about this grass bait you were talking about, man. I just chimed onto this a couple of minutes ago, and I got on the tail end of it. I'm gonna have to get in Joey's boat and raid his locker. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, uh, you know that's <laughs> off limits, Dan. Plus, you're gonna have to fly out to California to come come follow through on that threat. There you go. Yeah. So, hey, Dan, and, and anybody out there who missed any of our coverage, this is all going to be uh, viewable at a later time, right, Corey? It's also it's it's all going up live right now. It's uh, on Facebook and Instagram. You can see it right away. Uh, it's also live on or the, the pre recorded or the live stuff gets on YouTube, but YouTube has a bit of a delay into it. So mm -hmm. once it gets uploaded, so if you're watching it now live, you can see it. If you come in at the end of the show, uh, for some reason, it only grabs the first two hours of the show. So, but once, about 12, 24 hours later, it finally uploads the whole entire day. So yeah, all the coverage we're gonna have today and throughout the whole week is available on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Got it, got it. Well, Dan, uh, if you wanna check that bait out, it's the Strike King Hybrid Hunter, but we're not here to talk about Strike King. We're here to talk about <laughs> St. Croix, am I right? Absolutely, buddy. All right, and you're, you're joining us today from St. Croix headquarters or? From Park Falls, my Beautiful. boat to my truck tomorrow night. Smallies are still chomping up. Where are you going fishing at? We have lakes all over. They're, they're plastered all over up here. We're in northern Wisconsin and it's awesome up here. You got smallmouth, largemouth. We're just coming off a mayfly hatch and now they're going a little deep, but they're still fish up. They're still on boat docks, hard bottoms, all that fun stuff. Now, now Dan, uh, mayfly hatch isn't something we really need to contend with out here, but I, I've seen that uh, in, in the upper Midwest, and, and it can be a big head scratcher uh, for a lot of people. How, how do you attack a big, a big mayfly hatch? It's a big, big time head scratcher because the mayfly, the actual nymph spends most of its life underwater. So those smallies will rack up on them then, but then there's a little short period of time when they'll go to the top and sprout wings and fly away, and they look like a big sailboat on the surface. And when they start sipping them, you really got to be dialed in. 
So you you know that's what you know people talk about the little black hair jig and so forth and putting that thing out there. There's a science to everything, and man, that mayfly hatch, depending what stage they're in, you can really whack on them if you've got it dialed in. Got it. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, I do, uh, I wonder about that little little hair jig. That's obviously not something that comes into play uh, for us out on the West Coast very much, but uh, it's it's proven to be deadly. But it, it also seems like it's it's not just a mayfly hatch deal. Uh, that's something that goes, uh, you, you know, throughout the, the northern season a lot of times. Is, it, is that specifically a mayfly uh, uh Imitator or is that leech stuff too? Right? Yeah, I think, yeah, maybe leeches. Dan, well, I, it's just supposition on our part. You yeah. school us. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be. A, it could be a leech for sure, but it could also be a bait fish. It could also, specifically, it could be a goby fish deep on hard bottom. So, it, it imitates a lot of things, but specific to the mayfly hatch, those smallmouth will key on that mayfly depending on where it's at at its stage in the water column. And if, like I said, if you get it right you can really get them because they'll be looking up and they're looking to eat. What's cool about it, guys, is it's not a blow up. It's more of a sip. It's awesome to watch. You see the mouth, the back and the tail like a dolphin. It's really cool. And they're just all over the lake doing it. Very cool. So we're going to have Joey got to take his mic here a little bit. So we'll keep going through this. Make sure you, you mute that thing. But so before let's let them get that fixed. Why weren't they're doing that, Dan? Let's me roll into that first product and kind of get that going. And the, the first one we got is the Avid Trek three-piece, right? Yeah, it's a, well, everything about St. Croix is trying to give the angler the advantage on the water. And we hear over and over again, the importance of getting a rod somewhere, the difficulty of it sometimes when you're going way off the beaten path. But once you get it there, you don't want to, you don't want to feel the dead spots in the blank. And what St. Croix did is introduce seven models this year in what's called Avid Trek. It's St. Croix's SC3 Carbon on our proprietary IPC tooling technology. And a lot of your viewers out there follow that technology. What it does, it makes it super smooth in conjunction with the slim profile ferrule that's reinforced. Mm -hmm. This fish is like a one piece. It's USA built. It's a three piece rod, comes with a case right here that I'll hold up. They can see that, but really it's it's pretty, pretty awesome. I had a chance to film with it a few weeks ago and. I had some braid and a little bladed jig on it, and it was awesome to not feel the dead spots in that rod. It's been a really cool series to, to get out there. We're anxious to hear the folks' feedback. It, it's funny, I was just getting some coffee before we came on there, and one of the kids like in the warehouse like, I'm so stoked to see all the new travel rods coming out. It's gonna be great for what's going on. I'm like, I need to get my, I'm, I'm heading to Alaska, well, hopefully if things keep moving on pretty soon, and a three-piece travel like that would be great. What what lengths do they come in interactions, or what, how many different, uh, models are there well there's seven models mostly spinning okay they're going to be the one i'm holding right here is a seven and a half footer um in a medium power fast action in a three piece wow so yeah there's seven, seven models mostly spinning one casting but again it's really not even freshwater centric it's it could be used in fresh or salt water but the cool thing about it is when you get it out there and fish it, it, it feels like you're fishing a seven and a half foot one piece rod. This one does. It's really neat. And a lot of that's the manufacturing of the ferrule up here in Park Falls. Yeah. You know, Dan, that that's always been the challenge with with multi piece rods, travel rods is they're just not a pleasure to fish. And it sounds like uh, St. Croix has really attacked that. Uh, it, you, you know, you 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 go all the way across the country, across the world, you get to some beautiful place to fish, you want the experience to be, uh, a, a, of, of fishing to be yeah, yeah. Just, as, just as good as it is at home. And, and so, uh, you know, St. Croix is, is, is bringing you these fantastic new travel rods. Uh, so that, that's awesome that they're, they're able to, to attack that issue there. Yeah. I'm stoked to get them myself. Uh, do we have a, a estimated ET when they'll be coming out, Dan, or what are we thinking for time, time frame here? Yeah, Avid Trek is going to ship closer to the end of the year. Uh, we're going to start shipping them in September, uh, but we can certainly, you know, we can pre-order them anytime, um, get them coming, you know, through you guys. But uh, yeah, it, it's a, Joey, I couldn't agree more. You know, for, for years, you get your hands on a multi-piece spinning rod or a casting rod, and you just feel those sections. Because if you think about it, for all the people viewing out there, if you have a ferrule like this, you have a, 
a male part and a female part. So you got a thick, stiff spot about that long, and that actually affects deflection. And the way Croy manufactures the ferrules, it's very thin in profile, reinforced in carbon, so it eliminates a lot of that. And you just don't feel it near as much. It's 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 pretty outstanding when you fish it. It's going to be one of those where you kind of got to see it to believe it. Interesting. Dan, I have one more question before we move on from these. Uh, now, I know there's, uh, in bass fishing, there's not as much two-piece uh, or multi-piece rods, but I know that a lot of people think there is a correct and definitely an incorrect way of putting a two-piece rod together. Can, can you show us the St. Croix approved method of uh, Yeah, of actually, absolutely. Your rod? Let me, yeah, let me, let me demonstrate on the top part of the rod so you can see the guides so we talk about alignment. And I'm gonna do the best I can here. Bear with me. Hopefully, uh, this Zoom virtual stuff is new for all of us. So, <laughs> yeah. basically, if you guys can, can you see the stripper guide and the first guide? Yes, sir. Yep. A couple yep. guides here. Okay. One thing a lot of people do when they put a rod together is they put them dead straight and then push it in like this, and that works. There's no question. But a better way to do it is to line it up just so it's a little bit, little bit off first. See that? Uh huh. Yeah. Now I'm going to I'm going to sink that ferrule and turn it as I do it and it's really super super strong that way. It just sets it real good and it, there's definitely a right and a wrong way to do it. You want to make sure you get them seated, but a lot of it to be honest with you is the manufacturing of the ferrule. If if it's if it's the right fit, it makes a big difference. I can still remember uh, being a little kid and winding up to make a big cast and <laughs> the second half of my rod goes flying <laughs> along with my bait. And that's because of incorrect, yeah. uh, uh, incorrectly putting the rod together. So if you, if you snug and lock that ferrule like, like Dan's talking about, uh, you're not going to have that problem. That's huge insight. That's something I didn't know and it's, it's, I, I know now it's good to know though. Sure, sure. Uh, well, Dan, uh, unless we had anything else to say about the, the Avid Trek series, uh, moving along, you guys have a brand new uh, Legend Extreme uh, line this year that you introduced at the Classic, I believe, um, and then uh, some new additions to that line. So if you could briefly just take us through the line in general and then, and then the additions, that'd be fantastic. You know, uh, this is, it was pretty remarkable to be involved with the process on Legend Extreme. St. Croix being angler-centric, it's... Uh, of high importance of, to us to hear and listen. And the fact we have control over the manufacturing process gives us a chance to be able to execute. And Legend Extreme, as you mentioned, Joey, was launched at the Bassmaster Classic. It was designed to be the most sensitive fishing rod St. Croix has ever put on the market. And we have a machine now to prove it. It's really comprised of three main things and i'm going to cover them here in a little bit of detail number one the blank is our it's st croix sc5 carbon which is the most it's the highest strain carbon st croix works with but this is a new form of carbon fiber for st croix this is the sc5 that was in the legend extreme from last year this is a new version of it it's a purer form of carbon in conjunction with a new resin in the in the blank that this rod long story short is going to recover faster from deflection okay so it's it's increased in terms of flexural performance what that means to the angler is going to be more responsive okay secondly we married it with the Daiwa AGS guide platform carbon fiber so now you're talking about carbon to carbon you can imagine with the advent of zero stretch braids and floros and all of the, all the lines that had sensitivity, this is a big deal going from here to here. And lastly, the handle, this is our second generation two extreme skin handle. I wish I could hand it to you and have you guys hold this thing. Because what we did this year, that's right, that's a long reach, man, but we'll give it a shot. But what we did is we applied a little bit of what's called raindrop. And it's a material that gives it just enough tack but with regards to the handle itself, this is manufactured in Park Falls, guys, from the blank up. There's a urethane shim on the blank in accordance to the model. And then the material you're seeing here is actually an extreme skin material. It's actually applied. It takes days to make this. So it's not just folded over or heat shrunk at all. 
It's actually manufactured and built. So it's really gonna be cool. Um, total 11 models in the series and right off the top of my head in terms of the new additions, I would wanna refer to my price sheet, which I don't have right in front of me, but we launched certain models at the Classic and then we're launching more now to round out the series of 11 models. But this thing's USA built, SC5 carbon, Daiwa AGS guide platform, second gen extreme skin handle. Let me tell you this, I had, a, I had this thing for a long time and I had the guides on the SC5 blank to practice, not to, to test, test the prototype and so forth. And the first bite I had on this thing, I got a 20 mile an hour crosswind, Murphy's Law, the one day I get to test it, right? And, and I get a bite on a three eighths ounce jig and it felt like something flew into my line. You guys ever had a, like a big dragonfly or a, a, I've had a bat down Lake of the Ozarks do that at night. It's the best hit of the day when it happens. It's like, whoa, but I didn't pull the trigger. I thought it was something flying into my line. So I pitched out again to the same spot. It was a PO box, a little crotch of a tree and boom, it hit it again. It was, it was a real shocky type bite and it is awesome. I mean, it's one of those, it's a level of feel and sensitivity that, that you have to fish to understand. I, I can't wait for you guys to try this thing. You know, Dan, it's it's so interesting. We don't often get to talk to people that that really know the rod building process mm -hmm. uh, from from beginning to end. And there's not that many companies that uh, go through the process of building their own handles, Corey. And yeah. and I, I, I don't know if you've ever tried to build a rod. I've built no. some really rough and <laughs> ugly rods. Uh, you fixed a rod for me one time. It was pretty rough and ugly. You fixed that. I did. I, I remember that. I fixed a rod for Corey, and it was terribly ugly. So I can't imagine the craftsmanship, the time, the patience, and, and, and the know-how that, that goes into making one of these new Legend Extreme casting rods. And, and as you said, uh, I mean, they're made right there in Park Falls, right? Yeah. Well, and you're, you're talking about, when you're talking about building a rod, you, you're starting with the blank. We're building the blank before you even start with the rest of it. So that's what, it, you tell you what we ought to do sometime, and I would invite all your viewers to this, is we're temporarily suspended right now on this, but we do factory tours. We're, we have the largest United States rod manufacturing facility. Uh, a St. Croix rod company is family owned and there's 32 sets of hands that handcraft every St. Croix rod before it gets to you and your viewers. And we'd love to have, you know, you guys come up and do a tour and hey, you know, you two come up, we'll go jump on my boat and go crack on a bunch of smallies <laughs> up here. That sounds kind of fun, huh? I would say you don't have to twist my arm, but Dan and I have been trying to put this together for like two or three yeah. years. So, so uh, I don't know, 2020 has been a weird year. Maybe 2021 we can plan on, uh, on bringing the, the St. Croix factory experience to, uh, to the Tack Warehouse audience. I say we make it happen. Remember, someone's gonna have to film that stuff. So other Dan, cameraman Dan, he's gonna have to be filming it. And I think he's probably gonna do a little fishing though too. You bet. So Dan, that, that was the Legend Extreme casting rods, a couple of new uh, models there. Uh, also, and I believe this is a new award winner, right? Uh, there was a couple of Legend Extreme spinning uh, additions. And did that just take home an award? Well, Legend Extreme won uh, the, fre the uh, freshwater category. Got it. The uh, whole line. Fast. The whole line. Yeah, it, it it did, and we we won it on. Uh, we were very blessed uh, last night to find out we won Legend Extreme and Mojo Inshore on the saltwater side. Oh wow! Two awesome. Rocks. Congratulations on that. Yeah. Well, you know this this is about you. I mean, this is one thing I would say with every confidence is Saint Croix ex exists for the angler. Everything we do, we try to make the fishermen better on the water. So, you guys are anglers too. You guys right there that I'm talking to and, and all your viewers out there. So to win an award like that's a true blessing because we know it's you that's the ultimate beneficiary. Winning awards like this does nothing but drive us to work even harder and do even more. That's great. It says a lot about the, the company there, Corey. For sure. uh, so, hey, Dan, uh, can, can you take us through the spinning uh, lineup there too on the, on the Legend Extremes? I've got one right here. Again, I don't have my price sheet with me with that's the fine. exact models on it. Um, but because we kind of kind of wing in this, but again, there's 11 total models in the series between casting and spinning. And that you're talking about the exact same setup and makeup in the spinning rod is in the bait caster. So the SC5 blank AGS carbon guide platform with the gen two extreme skin handle. 
And this thing sets up to the point to where, I mean, this spinning rod, for example, we were fishing a technique where you're ripping the bait. I was doing this recently, ripping a boot tail bait, unbraid the floral leader, and then letting it fall on slack. And they're biting it on the slack and you can feel it in your hands and it's a thunk. I mean, it's, it's really cool. So depending on what model you're fishing, there's so many different ways we fish them and baits that we throw. The common denominator is it's gonna give you your sensitivity all the way across the board. Very sensitive rods. Uh, it's amazing every year that we come to talk to you and I get excited about a lot of products I cast, but you sell me every time on a rod when I go there. I mean, when you, a couple years ago when you guys won the awards for the cranking rods, I was like, I, I need to get some of those right there. You know what, Dan, Dan is always one of the most sought after and busy people at the iCast show. So uh, almost uh, almost easier to, to get him pinned down and, uh, over Zoom here and, and- Well, sorry, yeah, go ahead. We got audio coming from our-, our From the back, room. back side there. Uh, sounds like we, get, we got it taken care of. Dan, Dan, what I was saying is, you have got to be one of the busiest people at the iCast show year after year. Trying to track you down is tough. So uh, we're, we're lucky that we we're able to pin him down today, Corey. Uh, so, hey, Dan, thanks for taking us through, through the Legend Extreme mm -hmm. series. Uh, up next, we've got the Mojo Bass uh, cranking uh, rods, right? Yeah, I almost stole this sample. I'm, I'm telling you, I had a little red DT6 on it, shot a video with it, and you guys know as well as anybody, when you put that tip in a little circle cast and you stop it and that bait goes exactly where you want it to go, you put that rod away and you don't give it up. I mean, I, these two models, guys, what we did a few years ago is we took Mojo Bass as a series from SC2 to SC3 Carbon, which starts to incorporate our IPC technology, which folks can uh, research on our website. But what it does, it makes the rod lighter, more sensitive, and increases the overall performance. But for 2021, what we did is we're introducing two models in Mojo Bass Carbon Crankbait. These are seven foot one, medium moderate, and seven foot one, medium heavy moderate. So think about the bait categories we can throw with these things, even a bladed jig on the MHM, it works really well. But you know, your 2.5, your DT6, I was throwing a DT10, um, and so a vast array of mid-range crankbaits on the MHM, and then you have the MM for your real small square bills, small crankbaits, or another thing, any bait that even has a little bit larger profile than you than it, the name implies, but it comes through the water clean. As you guys know, a lot of baits, depending on the bill, affect the drag of the bait. So you, you can throw a huge wide range of crankbaits between these two models of rods whether it's a lipless bait, a deep diver, more beveled bill, or a square bill, or even a bladed jig. So these are gonna be really cool for people to get their hands on. I mean, both of them are spot on. The MHM is what I spent the most time with, but in the Midwest, we have a giant fall crankbait bite. We're coming up on that thing in about a month and a half, and it's available in the fall, this fall. So it's one people are gonna to wanna to jump on. Very, very cool rods. You get, you're getting that St. Corey quality, and the, the price point of these rods is, is really good, though, right? I think. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. You know, Mojo's in that buck and a half range mm -hmm. for the series. So you're, you're looking at a rod that's going to absolutely overperform when you get it on the water. And part of that's because of the technology in the blank. And that integrated poly curve technology, guys, starts at the mandrel. That's what these blanks are rolled over, that's how they become tubular they're rolled over a carbon steel mandrel. And St. Croix uses an IPC mandrel, which is ground on a continuous curve. So it's gonna do, it, the, again, the ultimate beneficiary is you on the water, the way it's gonna perform. Absolutely. Uh, no, that's really cool. And, and even more motivation for us to get out there and make sure <laughs> that we cover the St. Croix factory. Uh, so all, all these rods are, are not quite up on the site yet, but uh, we're working to get those uh, up and available for pre-order uh, very soon here, Corey. Yeah, as soon as we get the images up, we'll get them down. They'll be right underneath the video. You can check them all out. Uh, and, and from Mojo to another Mojo, um, we've got some new inshore rods, which is also best of show for saltwater. So, I mean, you, again, St. Croix killing it at ICAST for the awards. 
you guys make sure to check out all the ICAST coverage and, and all the other awards they have there. Mojo Inshore. That would chat. Yes, sir. Yeah, tell us about it. Yeah, we were really blessed. Like I said, won the um, ICAST Saltwater Category Award with it last night. But I'm going to touch on it a little bit. There's a lot going on here, guys. This is a 27 model series. And people are familiar with Mojo Inshore. We ha we've had it before in name. But we took it from SC2 Carbon to SC3 now. So you're talking about now you get that IPC mandrel I'm talking about in the technology, IPC tooling. But also, and I'm going to do my best to show you this, but if you look at this handle, you can see there's a blend between cork and EVA on some models. Mm -hmm. And you also notice on this butt cap, this has a rubber gimbal so people can put it in a holder in a rocket launcher in a saltwater boat. So you're going down in big waves and because of the reel, it doesn't let it bang around when you're running. So the point that I'm trying to make is it is a series that is designed with the angler in mind, but also with regional specificity, kind of depending where you're fishing. There's models designed for the Northeast striper market, for example. There's another one I'll grab a certain little sub series in this that has a split grip handle for Texas, Louisiana, that market. So it really, it's a, it's a really cool series. Had a lot of input from our internal product team and our pro staff. We looked at the entire country, all the coasts and everything, all the different types of fisheries and with uh, 27 models in the series, it, it's just, it's there from light application inshore to through chucking a giant plug for stripers. So it's a, it's a super cool series. Yeah, that's really cool. Not just dialing in the rods themselves for what your te techniques, but even like I said, the regionality of the stuff really gives the guys the exact right tool they need for the right application and, and the right region. So that's, that's pretty neat. And that's probably a big part of what helped you guys get that, uh, the, the award there, I think. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, when you're attacking an inshore series, so often uh, companies will just attack, you know, the Florida market uh, or, or the, the South, the redfish, trout market, mm -hmm. but inshore around all the coast of the <laughs> lower 48 can mean a lot of different yeah. things. And it looks like St. Croix really jumped in and, and, and attacked that for all regions. So uh, that's, that's a fantastic addition there for, for St. Croix and uh, maybe looking to check some of those out too yeah, on yeah. our coast. For sure, it's neat too. Like I said, they, sometimes we'll make a new rod and like in the mojo and just change the colors and call it the mojo inshore. But you guys added components specific to inshore like that uh, or is applicable to that market and that region. So that's neat not just to, you know, hey, here's, here's a green version of that rod, it's inshore now. Yeah. So that, that's really cool. No, that's great. Uh, so that's the Mojo Inshore series, uh, spinning and casting, a whole line from St. Croix. Uh, coming up next, Dan, uh, we've got the, the new Triumph rods, and that's a whole uh, series of rods, a bunch of different uh, types that, that uh, will be available on the site soon at tacklewarehouse.com. Uh, so Dan, if you could take us through the new Triumph. I can. It's a Triumph's been a legacy series for St. Croix, guys. It's a, it's actually Triumph is the number one selling North American manufactured fishing rod of all time. That's a really powerful statement. And it, one, one of the reasons that's the case is its value. We've talked about the manufacturing process. And you, you, you look at the Triumph, the manufacturing processes in Triumph are the same as in our highest end rods. And specifically what I mean by that, let's take the handle, for example, from a urethane shim to very expensive resins to laser alignment for a uh, real uh, handle uh, alignment, laser alignments on blank straight, straight edge, blank straightness, guide alignment, laser alignment all the way down to the decal. So you're looking at a manufacturing process for St. Croix's gateway starting point that is just flat out overbuilt. And I think the, the, the angler has, has really bought into that and caught onto it, which is a true blessing for us. Because again, that's why we exist, guys, is to, to give the angler the advantage on the water. So for 2021, we reimagined this series. And it's a, it's a, it's a big series, 24 fresh model, freshwater models, for example, spinning, casting, salmon steelhead, muskie. There's a travel section in there. Um, and that's just in freshwater. 
And then you have inshore, surf, surf travel. Inshore, for example, there's 13 models of Saltwater Triumph inshore. So it's a vast, diverse series of rods that's a terrific value, specifically at the manufacturing level and how it fishes. And again, it's St. Croix's gateway price point to get into the brand. So to say we're excited about this one is an understatement. It's going to be really cool to, to have it take off this fall. It's available. And uh, it'll certainly run right into 2021 really strong. Very cool. Like you said, very price point different rods, like I said, but the, again, that St. Croix quality. Looks like, look on the site, uh, looks about what, one, $100 to $120 for the, the two piece and the regular rods, and up to $149 for the four piece. Does that sound about right? Yeah, that's right. So it's a very affordable rod. And it's, you know, I wish I had a dollar every time somebody tours the factory up here and they get done and they say, I can't believe that rod only costs that much. Mm -hmm. At every single stage, we talked about the 32 sets of hands manufacturing process. Every single stage is covered by people that are very passionate, very prideful in what they do. Triumph's merely just an example of that. And what, and what you're gonna see is when you try, at least attempt to overperform at every level, again, the ultimate beneficiary is the angler, the single flat out fish. That's really cool. And uh, for those of you who haven't uh, tried a St. Croix rod and, and really, really seen the craftsmanship and performance uh, that that craftsmanship uh, results in, uh, this is an easy, affordable way uh, mm -hmm. To, to try out a new rod brand that, you know, I mean, they, St. Croix, St. Croix is very strong uh, across a lot of the country, but there's a lot of people who've never picked up a St. Croix rod. Yeah. I mean, I think so they, they expect so across, they were, you guys were huge in the saltwater, uh, sorry, the, the fly fishing and, and the trout game, that kind of stuff up north. And the last few years, you've been really just coming in the bass market and dominating. I mean, look, I mean, I mean, I don't know how many years in a row you guys have had an award. It's, you guys, I mean, the sales are killing it and the rods themselves and the customers are obviously liking it. Um, I, I really want to get down there and do that too. I think it'd be a really cool thing for myself to see, but I think, I mean, I think the customers themselves, we need to see everything that goes into building a St. Croix rod. I think that'd be really fun to do. Sure, sure. You know, there's, uh, as you mentioned, there's been a lot of focus from St. Croix over the last few years uh, in the bass market. And I do wonder how much of that is uh, driven by a, a really gnarly bass head, Dan Johnston. <laughs> Well, there's, there's way, way more than just me. I tell you, we we have our product manager is a fanatic bass fisherman. Our director of marketing is a fanatical bass fisherman. Our engineer is a big, big musky fisherman, and all of the people up here fish. This is one big, really one big family. And to be perfectly, clearly honest with you guys, we consider you guys part of that family too, honestly. And all the viewers out there, that that's again, that's what drives us. So. You get us on a bass train idea, thinking about something for bass fishing. We're covered up in it, in the way we fish for them. But it equally is important. We want to listen to you, you know, and 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 try to understand your needs and desires. The one advantage we do have is we do have total control over the manufacturing process. So it gives us a chance, you know, to bring your dreams to reality. And it's it's really fun. I, I think our best days are ahead of us. I agree, and you you really see the brands that really are fishermen first and they, they are not just selling a product they are they are on the water using it they're building it like for us for them they're they know the product they, they, they know the sport I said it's part you're part of the fishing family so it, it really does come through and show with your guys and stuff and it's really cool to be associated with you guys and just kind of just see the progress and the and the evolution of St. Croix and Tackle Ralph's growing together it's awesome absolutely you, you know I and I think that's uh that's a perfect way of putting it and and a perfect example of that is Whenever Dan and I talk, the conversation always starts out with fishing first <laughs> and then business, which I don't know, don't tell the boss. Maybe that wasn't <laughs> the right thing to say. Dan, we do have a couple of questions before, before we let you go. Uh, back to, uh, I, I believe the Trek series, Greg Thomas asks, uh, do those come with a case or, uh, or a bag or anything? There you go. Ooh, very cool. Absolutely, <laughs> you bet. It comes with a case. It's got a little strap on it too, so you can hook it under whatever you want to hook it onto. So it's very, very well protected. Nice. Ready, ready to hit the road with that series. Uh, another question. Logan Johnson asks about the resin you guys are using, and, and can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the, the resin specifically in the handle is a is a 3M Scotch weld. 
it's a it's a very expensive resin um but it's we're not going to cut corners and well, i guess one of the points i was trying to make earlier is we want every single series to overperform for the angler so the last thing we're going to do is cut corners with a resin and you know for example we we not only do we have 3m scotch weld as the resin but we have applicators that make sure we apply the right amount and all those things for consistency repeatability all because here's what we would desire is the young man that asked that question if he buys one of these and he wants to go get another one we'd like to have it fish at an equal or high at least an equal level you know so the consistency on the manufacturing process and the repeatability of it and the fact we have control over it is is really important but it's it's called 3m scotch weld interesting Very well cool. thanks for telling us about that and uh, you know you can really go down that rabbit hole yeah. in rod building dan uh you know I, I said our conversations always start with fishing but i want to know what's your next trip uh you getting out this weekend or or what's in the future for you on the water i don't know man you devastated me when you sent me that picture of that giant you're holding up when you <laughs> pull down on that bedded fish it threw me off my skis <laughs> sense joey that was a giant no, I'm going, uh, in all seriousness, that was a big fish, folks. I, I have a picture to prove it. But I'm, I'm actually headed up towards, the, uh, in northern Wisconsin, Saturday to go fishing with uh, three guys here at work. I've got my boat. It's going to be hooked up. It's all ready to go. I'm rigged for slop fishing, big pad fields. And then we got another lake we can get through through a creek that's got a hard bottom substrate. We might be Ned rigging some fish, smallies. So looking forward to that for sure. Yeah, that does sound like a lot of fun. Well, hey, Dan, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for being flexible and scrambling to make the show after Corey almost blew your big hey, performance. Hey, we're, 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 we're coming out to for sure do some fishing, check out the place, but also obviously we'll take you guys out to dinner, but maybe a few extra soda pops that night uh, on tackle or on me uh, for making that mistake. So I, again, I apologize and I appreciate you getting that flexibility and, and killing it not only with the products, but on the interview and and do it on the fly. So it's, thanks again for having us, or having us. Thanks again for joining us. Yeah, listen, you guys are more, way more than business partners. You two are friends. And to all the viewers out there, we thank you for being part of the St. Croix family. All right, thank you, Dan. Take it easy. You hear that, Corey? Yeah. What's that? You're even Dan's friend. <laughs> Good for you. Am I your friend? <laughs> I don't know right now. <laughs> No, of course you're my friend, okay, Corey. Good, good. Well, uh, speaking of friends, uh, coming up next, we have a whole group of friends uh, from, uh, from a variety of, of companies, representing a variety of companies. Uh, so uh, let's, let's get right into it. Uh, up next, we have the man himself, Tackle Warehouse uh, uh, friend and staffer, Luke Clausen. What's going on, Luke? Hey guys. How you doing? Thanks for having me. Good. I had to go look at you sideways here. Are you like that too? So you're sideways. I thought it was just me. Tom, redo it. Yeah, like me, me, yeah can, you, can you switch your... There you go. Is it better to, uh, better maybe, like that? Maybe try to then go back to vertical again. It should have correct itself. Oh, no. Well, like that. You like that? No? Yeah. Ah. no. We're good. Oh, we'll oh. figure it out. Oh. You're going to make me sick here, Luke. Yeah. There we go. There we go. All that's right. Good. 145, it works. Yeah, yeah. 145, that's yeah. the deal. angle. Okay. We got the angle. Yeah, angle with angle. Folks, yeah. the man can catch fish, but uh, <laughs> got to work on them Zoom skills, I guess. No, we're, we're good. Uh -huh. right. yeah. I'm not going to be your next next IT guy. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, Luke, where, where are you calling us from? I'm uh, on a little lake right now in northern Minnesota, right on the North Dakota border. Sitting at a picnic table. That Very sounds nice. like a nice place to be, Corey. Yeah, I'm, I'm jealous. Yeah. I'd rather, no offense, Joey, I'd rather be there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and are you are you there fishing? Or are you traveling right now? Or I was traveling, but stopped and fished this morning. Uh, these little lakes up here are pretty awesome. We fished a little lake for four hours and probably caught 25, over three pounds, smallmouth, largemouth mix. Pretty fun place. That Very sounds cool. really fun. You know, I, I've done a little bit of fishing in that in that area of the country, and it's just uh, from out west, which is pretty much a desert out here in California. Uh, <laughs> You just you you can't drive a straight line for a mile without running into water, and you dump the boat in, and if you don't catch them, you pull the boat out and you go somewhere else where they're biting. And there's such a great variety of fishing. In wouldn't you say, Luke? 
Yeah, it's a, it's amazing to me how much water's up here, and anything over four or five feet deep that doesn't freeze solid has bass in it, and they're dumb to the world. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> they're easy to catch, and it's fun. There's a lot of lakes. Me and Corey were up at Mille Lacs last year and uh, had a blast up there and wish we had more time because, you know, all these little lakes that are up here are just – full of fish you, you can go throw a frog all day and just catch largemouth if you want you can go out and fish for smallmouth like Corey just kicked my butt last year throwing a chatterbait up there for smallmouth you know it's just it's fun you can catch them on what you want to catch them and they can only eat for a few months out of the year so they're trying their hardest that might be a whole a fun shoot to do is just go up there and go next time we're up that way do a little lake hopping let's not go to a big lake but spend a day just going from spot to spot to spot and just breaking down different lakes and just change the scenery and change the fishing It'd be kind of neat Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm in. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I said I'm in. I want uh, part of that. Sounds yeah. good. You, you know what impressed me about that area of the country, Corey, is, uh, it, you know, never having caught a walleye before. Mm -hmm. They get they get the, the wet sock uh, <laughs> reputation, yeah. right, among bass fishermen. Well, I think one of the first walleye I ever caught, I pitched into a bunch of, bunch of grass with a tube, and this thing shot a foot of slack in wow. the line. And I bowed up on him, and, and I, I got no problem catching walleye. I'll catch walleye all day. And, man, they smoke a rattle trap. Yeah. yeah. And they taste good, too. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> bring them to the dinner table. Well, very cool. So we got some new products from you today, Luke, and some new Z-Man stuff to start out the show before we get our boys from Shimano and G. Loomis on. But uh, what's, you got some new Z-Man set of frogs, the, the Leaper, the Leap Frogs, Popper, and Walker, correct? Yeah, yeah. So... Actually caught some on it this morning. Even uh, this is the Leap Frogs Walker. It's a frog I've used for a couple of years. Helped uh, the design with it with Z-Man. It, it's it's kind of been in production for a while, exclusive for some other people, and it's available to everybody now. And it's really one of the best frogs I've grown in the market. It's super soft. It's not a super heavy frog. It's not you're not going to catch 50 fish on this frog. I'm not going to lie to you, but you're going to hook 95 percent of them. That's the beauty of this thing. It's amazing to me. How many frog bites you get that you normally miss? It's because they're little, and you hook them all with this. You hook a lot of a lot of little ones, and you hook all the big ones. I mean, it's got really good hooks, great components. It's a thin wall frog. It's got a really deep keel to it, though. It's probably kind of hard to see here, but the keel on it's really deep, hmm. and it's the easiest walking frog you've seen uh, that I've ever thrown. Anyway, it's uh, it comes in a couple different sizes: a two point two five, a two point seven five. So. A small one and a big one, but either of these frogs walks really well. A lot of cool color patterns, but, uh, you know, the action you can impart for somebody that doesn't throw a frog a lot or somebody that throws it all the time, it's super easy to get this frog to walk and hooks them really good. Uh, the pop frogs, it's got a really big mouth on it, so it actually pushes a lot of water. It's a bigger mouth than a lot of popping frogs we see out there. It walks even easier. There's times it's almost too much because you can't get the bait to go anywhere. You feel like you're fish in one place because it, it's so easy to walk with that big mouth on it but you get a windy day or dirty water or a really heavy grass also throw it i threw it in florida here we were down at toho a few weeks ago the pop frogs and uh it's also a really good one too the whole line again the the biggest selling points on that the biggest attributes are that it walks incredibly well hooks them really good and doesn't take on water it's it's the only frog i carry in the boat anymore i used to always carry six eight different brands of frogs for different situations and don't really feel like i need that anymore yeah you you, you know luke you were saying uh how how soft these these frogs are mm -hmm. and all the time uh just like you said you you know you have a little one come up and and you're not gonna you just think ah as a one pounder i'm not gonna hook that guy but uh you, you're saying with with the frogs being these soft this soft and and also I'm, I'm noticing how big the gap is it's a huge gap that's what the, the uh, thing i noticed so you're you're saying you pan a lot a lot of the bites that you would normally miss the hookup ratios are better than i've ever seen on a frog and i mean the telling thing is the little ones it's pretty easy to hook a big one when it comes up and gags a frog a good frog you catch pound and a halfers because those are the ones you can't hook on a frog that's subpar uh you know those are the ones that are really hard to hook and this one catches them all. I mean, it's I've never caught so many little fish on a frog and never missed so few fish. I and mean, that really is a, a telling point of a frog. If you have little ones that you're dragging across the top and they fall off or blow up on it and miss it, that frog's missing 
not only the little ones, but it's missing some of the big ones. Big ones are the easiest ones to hook, in my opinion. And this one hooks them all. It really, really is. You can see the bite on it, like you're saying. Just a ton of bite. You're going to have them pegged up in the crusher so often that you just see braid hanging out of their mouth and you drag them in. It, uh, it really is the highest hookup percentage I've seen in any frog. And, again, it's really easy to work. You see, I fish with a lot of people. And you see a lot of people struggle to walk a lot of frogs. This is not one that's hard to walk at all. Yeah, Daniel was just showing the, the popping frog there on on the, our, our tight camera there. The angle of the mouth, I'm just, uh, I guess, assuming it looks like it really throws a lot of water and gives, it really kind of splashes. Is that, does it throw a lot of water? Is it more of a little popping action? Or how does, the, how well does that work out? Well, you can really work it either way. You can push a lot of water with it. Uh -huh. Uh, for years, we've taken old suction cups and put them on the front of a frog so they push a lot more water when you get places where it's really windy or it's really thick grass and subsurface uh, to create a real disturbance and blowing water forward like a like an old hula popper almost. And uh, that's how that frog is, but it also on a slack line, it walks in one place for a long time. Now, when you get in, in places where there's a lot of bank grass or uh, vegetation that's above the surface, the leapfrog comes through it so much better than a popping frogs. You just come through stuff that's above the surface a lot better with, of course, the pointed nose on it. But that other frog, you create a lot of disturbance. And again, that dirty water, you get wave action, stuff like that. You can, you can get a lot of a lot of disturbance and uh, you can work it any way you want it. If you want to make a big bloop, like a P70 popper, you can do that. Or you can walk it in place and not spray a tremendous amount of water. Very cool frogs. Uh, and I love the frogs, and I don't need to get any more, but I um, guess I'm getting some more of these to check them out. And if you guys want to get some, they are available right now on tackle rails to purchase. And go ahead and pick those up uh, before we run out of those. More tackle for Corey. Great job, Luke. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, moving along, it looks like you've got a you've got a prop nut to tell us about. Is that correct? Yeah, the Bob's machine prop nut. So it's just a it's essentially. A big piece of metal that goes on your prop it's uh, kind of like a harmonic dampener for a car so we have these molded plastic props we're running on trolling motors and they're almost never uh uniform because of the density of the plastic you can't get a prop that's going to spin evenly regardless what prop it is there's always some vibration so a prop nut like this is going to take a lot of the vibration off this one here is going to work on uh pretty much all the trolling motors that are out there with the exception of the motor guide with the Cantana prop, uh, that one prop it does not fit on, but every other trolling motor, whether it's a Lawrence, Garmin, Minn Kota, the other motor guides, this will work with it. Uh, one of the things I use it most for is you actually, instead of using a nut or a wing nut, here when you get line or grass, whatever it is inside your prop, you just grab a hold of it. It's got some traction on the side of it here. You just grab a hold of it, you twist your prop nut off. So it's really easy just to pull your prop off on the water get that bobber and, and cricket hook or whatever you got tangled in your prop out of there and screw it back on. It makes that really simple. This is the only prop nut with a hole in the front. If you ever have a shear pin issue, you can actually lock the shaft, still get your prop nut and prop off to be able to get behind that prop to work on it too. But on the water, it's uh, makes it super easy to get any of that stuff out of there, out of behind your prop, whether it's hydrilla or fishing line or whatever it is. Really cool deal. And they look pretty cool on the front of your prop. You got red accents in your boat, you can have a red prop on the front. There's a bunch of different colors you can get to match whatever color your boat is, your wrap is. Very cool. And uh, I, I like that, just the, 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 the concept of the, the nut itself, but also having that hole in there to kind of get the, if something does go wrong, that's the worst thing to have happen is, great, you got this easy to move prop nut, but then you can't get out because you shear the pin. So that's sure, huge. Sure, You lose your trolling motor, you're, you're, <laughs> you lost your day of fishing. For sure. So, uh, good thinking there from, from Bob's Machine, and that's available for pre-order on the site right now. Well, that's, that concludes all the stuff we have that Justin, you're going to talk about. Before we bring the guys in from Shimano and G. Loomis, I think we've got today's trivia quiz, right? That's kind of related to Luke. That here. is correct. Do you have a prize package ready? Uh, well, let's make it up on the fly again like we did yesterday. <laughs> I think we do the same as we did yesterday. Uh, attack Warehouse else hat hoodie, shirt, and $25 gift card for the first person to get the answer to Joey's trivia question. <laughs> so, so here's today's Joey, Joey trivia question. Uh, Luke, you are in a very elite club of people who've won both the FLW uh, Forest Wood Cup and the Bassmaster Classic. The question is, who else is in the club with Luke? So get your answers in on 
YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Luke, no guessing from you, because I'm sure you know the answer, but make sure you get your guesses in. Again, first one that gets in there gets a hat, hoodie, shirt, and a $25 Tackle Ross gift card. So we'll check back now, in Corey, a few Corey, to only make that. it fair, you should at least tell them how many other guys there are. Okay. All right. Well, it, I believe there's four other guys. It is four. Is that correct? You, there's, there's, it's, your, it's your question, so you tell me. <laughs> I mean, you're asking. You set it up here. There's bud. five total, uh, Luke, and four other guys. Okay, so we need the other, all four of the other guys for the correct answer. Thank you for clarifying you what, Joey's question, Luke. This, whoever wins this, I'll throw in an autographed uh, jersey of mine, too. Wow. I'll tip you whoever wins the question. Stepping it up. Okay, I'm getting Luke. in the contest now. I want one of those. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, uh, while, we're, while we're letting that contest uh, run its course, we do have uh, some more friends to invite to the party. Is that correct, Corey? Yeah. Uh, do we got them in the room? Let's see if we can go. Oh, here they Oh, we got our Alex Davis. How you doing, Alex, bud? How are you, Corey? Doing pretty good. Uh, I screwed things up again, which you probably don't, not, no surprise to you, but scheduling <laughs> issues. Uh, but we got it figured out, and we're moving along, and uh, we're, we're, we're trekking through this thing. So we got Alex Perfect. Davis. How you been fishing at the house at all, Alex? Do what? You been fishing around the house at all? I saw you took your dad out the other day for his birthday. Uh, yeah, about every day we've been fishing. It's every been day. pretty awesome. That's great. That's great. And and joining uh, Alex from Team Shimano, uh, Dave Brinkerhoff, uh, G Loomis specialist, and Trey Epic all the way from the East Coast. How you doing, guys? Doing good. Awesome, man. Glad to be here. Yeah. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Uh, so yeah, weird, weird times guys. Normally we'd all be, uh, getting together in the, in the Shimano booth for some of those hot cookies that they always have. Uh, I've gone days where that's all I have for lunch. The whole day yeah. is cookies because I never have time for lunch. So I just swing by the booth, grab a cookie and keep on going. Yeah. Yeah. So, so sometimes that is the only sustenance people get, but you walk by that Shimano booth and the, uh, your nose starts going. That's a dirty little trick they do and it, it works. It gets me to keep coming back. Absolutely. I don't come by to see you guys. I promise you're the last thing I want to see. No, just kidding. I love you guys. That's not very nice. Hi, they're my boys. We can do that. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Alex, you've, uh, you've had a weird, uh, a weird fishing year as everybody has. Uh, I'm sure you're, you're excited to get back to some competition soon, huh? Yeah, we just got done with uh, Chickamauga two weeks ago, and I had a top five there at the FLW Super Derby. And I think we're uh, we're going to lacrosse next week, so that should be a lot of fun. I like throwing a frog, so it seems like I'm going to get like five days of frog fishing in. That sounds horrible. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know Alex Davis is a hammer-on tour, but if you guys are ever in the area and want to do some fishing, you do some guide. Maybe you do a little quick little plug for yourself to how they get a hold of you to do some guide. Uh, you can get on my website. It's spinnerbaitkid.com. Uh, I got Instagram, Alex Davis Fishing, Facebook, Alex Davis Fishing. Numbers all over there. I don't try to keep that secret, so I try to keep the women off of me all the time, but all the guide trips, send them this way. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say to that one, but I'll, I'll, I, I think yeah. me and your wife disagree, but that's okay. <laughs> no, no, that's funny. It's always a good time. It, you know, Alex does, does a lot of filming. Uh, uh, we've had him him on with Jared Lintner. I know you guys on those shoots always get up to trouble uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and have a good time at the same time. It's definitely yeah. a good time for sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh, go, going down the list, it looks like we got some uh, some Loomis rods to talk about. Uh, is that correct, Corey? Yeah, I think we got the Loomis rods up first. Maybe Dave since Dave Brink, Dave Brinkoff is the Loomis guy. Before we go into some of the new rod models themselves. Dave, run us through just IMX and kind of what the IMX Pro Rods are all about, if you could, please. Sure. Thanks, Corey. So, you know, really, we've got 10 new IMX Pro Rods that are coming out this year. Um, and the reality of it is, is we already have 64 in the lineup. So we've got a giant skew, a bunch of skews of these rods. And last year uh, in the fall, we got all of our pros, you know, including Alex and Luke and a bunch of our other pros in, in a room all together on, on a whiteboard and uh, said, you know, guys, what are we missing? What is gonna help you guys on the water? Um, you know, what can we do better? And, you know, what's gonna help all of us um, succeed more when we're out there on the water? And we came up with a new group of 10 rods um, that consist of a little bit of everything. So there's, you know, some Ned Rig rods in there. There's a crankbait rod in there. Um, there's some swimbait rods, a couple edge rods that we've got Alex fishing. 
um, and uh, a couple rods for a chatter beta for a bladed jig too. So a lot of new exciting rods on there and, and just to help everybody out and, uh, you know, kind of fill in some of the voids and some of the things that we were missing. You know, Dave, uh, the, the IMX Pro Series really seems like uh, it's very tournament driven. And with these, uh, with, these, with these new technique specific additions, it seems like you guys are building on an already really strong, uh, very serious, uh, not, just, not just tournament, but bass fishing platform. Oh, for sure. And, you know, I mean, IMX Pro, like I mentioned, you know, now there's 74 models in this IMX Pro lineup. So we've got a little bit of everything in there. And, you know, it's all technique specific for the vast majority of these things. So there's there's really something for everybody in there, whatever, you know, you feel that is your key thing that you do or, you know, you want to rod for every little special little technique or niche that you're looking for. It's definitely there. That's awesome. That's Very cool. Awesome. So all, all the rods, you got something else, Joey? Sorry. No. Okay. No. So all of the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, all of the IMX Pro rods we're talking about today are available for pre-order right now. So jump on the site to get yours pre-ordered up. And let's, so if do you have more, any more over, overview you want to talk about the rods, should we move into the first model with Luke? You know, I, I really don't. Um, you know, just one other mention on there, Corey, is that, you know, these are still our IMX Pro rods. So they carry the same suite of um, attributes, you know, with, uh, multi-taper design and conduit core technology. So they're just a, an addition to our existing IMX Pro lineup of rods. Um, you know, and also another thing to, to mention on here when you guys see an image of these, um, there are some new colors in there too to help, you know, help you point those out on your boat deck as well. So just differentiates the, the different series um, as, as a different color. Very cool. So I think the first new model we got up, we got you talking about Luke. It's a new uh, rattle trap ripping rod. Tell us about kind of the rod, the components, and what makes that rod such a great rod for those for those baits. Yeah, I kind of actually have a history with that CBR855. I used a really similar blank back in the day in a GLX, and it's a, it's a rod that is a hard category to fill for a rod for a, a trap. Uh, you know, we've been over a bunch of different rods over the years where you're seeing guys throw seven and a half foot rods and stiffer rods that are trying to limber rods with braid because you're trying to balance uh, the fact that you can rip out of the grass, get a bait free of the grass, but then you also have number four hooks a lot of times. You don't want to lose the fish. So it's kind of a fine line there, and this rod really fits the bill for it. Uh, just the, the ability that it has enough tip to be able to jerk it out of hydrilla, no foil, whatever grass you're fishing, but yet the rod has enough load to it. It breaks into the taper a lot later to where the rod loads really well to where you don't lose those fish and yet it doesn't have a overall it doesn't have a tremendous amount of power where you're going to pull the hooks completely out of the fish and it's been um, i could say that probably a thorn in my side more than anything over the years i've fished is to find a good trap rod it's it's just hard to come by because you end up with one that's too stiff or too soft and you end up wearing yourself out or you lose fish and this is a really a, a blend of the all the rods out there that guys have used for traps for a long time and it does everything great in that it will come out of the grass well, but yet yeah, hook the fish well. And still a lot of sensitivity that when you're yo-yo in a trap or you come out of that grass and you drop slack to get it to fall, you feel the fish actually bite the trap. Very cool. Sorry, switch back to Gary. And, and those are available for, uh, for pre-order on the site, as is the whole IMX line. So uh, going from uh, somebody that knows, definitely knows something about rattle traps uh, to another guy that knows something about about lipless baits, uh, but also ledge fishing. Uh, let's go to Alex Davis. Alex, can you can you talk to us about the new uh, ledge, the ledge models in the IMX Pro Series? Yeah, um, we designed them actually, or I didn't design. Them. Dave designed them. I just test it and I get to use it and put my feedback. And uh, I want a rod. This is the the 914, and I want a rod to throw baits like this. This is a one ounce scrounger with a big jerky J. Um, I throw Magnum square bills with it. Uh, throw big swim baits, one ounce swim baits, six inch, one ounce head with either a six inch or a seven inch. And the problem is, is uh, we've never really had a rod for that. I mean, you just kind of make do, and I, I don't personally like making do. Um, I've just thrown a flipping stick before, and that's horrible. You just lose a lot of fish. Um, the rods are just too stiff. They don't load. They don't have the right action. So <laughs> Dave said, well, let's do this. And there's two models. There's, there's going to be a three power and a four power. Three power is kind of uh, quote unquote, you know, like a, a baby ledge rod. You can throw smaller stuff, half ounce swim baits, uh, a half ounce football head jig. It's just downsized everything. 
there's a lot of people out there that they're going to fish lakes where they don't need that kind of the stuff that I throw. But then all the guys on the Tennessee River or any lakes like Falcon or you just want the big, big plugs, that's the rod for you. So they have two different models. You can do whatever you want. Um, the great thing that I like about this is working hand in hand with Dave. Um, I got the rods and I said the handle length on the bigger one, it needs to be longer. And it's Dave just says, OK, well, we'll make that happen. So with these rods, it's something that you have engineers who've done this their whole life and they can make what we want and then we tell them what we want and then they fix it they make exactly what pros want um and to me if i was going to buy a rod i want to buy the best that i think someone can make for that application and that's what they've done with these um i can't think of anything better because i used to use a steelhead rod that's the rod that i've kind of got into swim bait fishing with but it was miserable because the handle was too long it was just too long but that was the best action so Dave's pretty much put everything we want in one rod, and that's what you have with these ledge series. So if you're a guy that likes to throw the big baits or even like the little baby, I call it a baby ledge rod, the smaller baits, this is this series has got you covered. You know, Alex, uh, the, there was a few prominent ledge uh, tournaments that were won on the scrounger, and, and that, I mean, that's a super old school uh, jig head. But, but in combination with the Jerky J or other big, uh, big jerk baits like that, really brought the scrounger back to prominence. And anyone who's spent any time with a scrounger knows that you are gonna lose fish if you don't have the right equipment. And it sounds like that was, that was a big consideration there. Yeah, that, that's one problem I've always had is I've, I love to fish deep, but five, six years ago, I just, I lost too many fish. I mean, when I started doing it, I kind of almost didn't enjoy it because I lost so many. And what this rod does, it has a parabolic bend, so it's going to load. So you, when you hook them, they're not coming off anymore because you're you're not going to rip the hook out of them. I don't feel like they have the advantage when they start jumping on you like they had before. And you can just distance-wise. These rods load so good. The whole thing about ledge fishing is you just want to make super long casts. Um, to me, I want to get as far away from the fish as possible. I think that's one one mistake a lot of anglers make is they get too close to them. Those fish know you're there, and they just get skittish, which if you can get way off, make super long casts, they don't know you're there, and I think they're just easier to catch. And that's where these rods, I can cast 55, 60 yards per cast. So that's what I want. So that rod, it just makes you a better fisherman. It makes me a better fisherman. Very cool. Well, thanks for taking us through the IMX Pro ledge rods available for pre-order. Yeah, I mean, like it's, it's really neat. Again, hearing the input that you guys get to give with that stuff, you know, obviously Shimano and Jumas makes excellent products. But getting the feedback from you guys, and everyone knows, well, you should know that Alex Davis is a, is a, is a hammer on tour, but the le he, 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 that ledge bite he knows, and getting his input to get that rod dialed in for them with all the Shimano quality components and manufacturing really is giving you the, the great tool for the job. And with IMX Pro, I don't know what else you guys will be able to add to the line next year because you guys got us covered from from uh, shaky heads to flipping and, and all the big stuff. So really cool to see some new stuff and some other new models. We got oh you got looks like you had something for me. No, some other new models we got. Uh, Luke to talk about is a couple of swim mate models and there's two new casting swim mate models and even a new spinning swim mate model. Correct? Luke. Can you tell us a little about the new swimbait rods? Yeah, I can hear you now, Corey. What was that? Can you tell us about the new uh, swimbait rods, the, the two casting and the one spinning rod? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're a swimbait rod, but they're not a swimbait rod. We're not throwing a 10-inch 10, 10 Huddleston with it. It's a swimbait rod that's more of a, a Kytec or a diesel minnow or something like that, you know. So that's got to be a big deal. I mean, we, you know, a guy Brian Thrift has actually made it a bigger deal than it used to be, throwing smaller swimbaits all the time. And uh, you know, he has caught a, a lot of fish and made a lot of money doing it. And we're seeing everybody do it. Everybody's done it some, but it's became something that we keep on the deck all the time anymore. Anywhere from like a Kytec and a, a two, eight to a, a four, eight, you know, and all sizes in between winding a little swim bait around. And, uh, these rods are really built for that. Again, that's something that like Alex mentioned on before, that this is something that every pro out there and so many guys that are just fishing, for fun always have on their deck but there's really not a good rod for it so uh you know there's a line of those depending on how big a swim bait you're using and how heavy of a, a head you have in there that you can get away with a rod that's still going to have enough tip to it you can feel the bait really well the sensitivities there but it's going to load be really parabolic smallmouth are definitely the biggest culprit in jumping three foot in the air and coming off 
uh, and these rods have enough load to them, you can get away with that, but yet you can still cast the bait really well. Uh, so it's just something that it, Dave worked with the engineers, worked with us to come out with rods that, that, uh, just knock my phone down, that do, uh, do optimize the hookups and the way you fish that swim bait that you can cast it a long ways. You can still, you hook those fish, you have no power to do that, but there's enough load in the rod all the time that you don't have those fish jumping off. That's right. I mean, Joey and I both like to fish a lot of swim baits. I know uh, we don't get a lot of smallmouth fishing around here, but there's a little bite that goes on in the local lakes around here where I know you're a big fan of throwing that little kite on a little spinning rod, and you're all we're always trying to figure out the best rod for that thing. And it's, that's been the one thing, like, this year, like, Joey's like, oh, this is the rod. And then, like, like oh, no, no, this is the new rod. So, like, it's, like every year or two, it keeps fine tuning what uh, the new best rod is for that, that spinning application for throwing those little kite ticks. And maybe there's another one to throw in the mix here. Yeah, you know, we thought we really had something secret figured out with a, with a small single swimmer, but uh, I, I think everybody figured that out. They eat it. So that, that's great seeing that, uh, that Shimano, or uh, rather G. Loomis has, has, has had a proliferation of, of technique specific rods for all the different size swimmers and, and even a spinning rod, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that I think a lot of us do is throw, throw a little swim bait on a spinning rod when, when times are tough. So uh, from, from that spinning rod to another spinning rod, Luke, uh, we have the uh, IMX Ned rig specific rods. We've seen a, the proliferation of the technique uh, led by one of your sponsors, Z-Man, uh, but also uh, now, now filtering all the way up to, to the rods. Can you tell us about the new Ned rig rods and, and why we need them? Yeah, yeah, this is uh, one of my favorite techniques out there. Uh, you know, the dead bait came out, everybody thought, oh, it's just a little fish a little fish bait, you're going to catch little ones, and I think everybody's been proven wrong in that. I don't know how many I've caught over six on a Ned rig, and never really had a rod for it. We were using rods that were just kind of generic, seven-foot medium heavy rods, whatever it may be, whatever you had that you'd use for multi-purpose rod. And now we end up with rods that uh, are a lot more parabolic in action, they really work well with those smaller hooks, especially the lighter one. You, if you're throwing a one-odd hook, you can't be throwing a rod that has a lot of backbone to it, especially now the way we throw a spinning rod with braid with a fluorocarbon leader all the time. There's a lot of shock on that on that hook and on that fish's mouth every time it's shaking its head back and forth. So it's really important with that lighter Ned Rig rod to have a lighter rod that bends all the way through the rod. But again, a rod, you can cast it. That little Ned Rig weighs quite a bit. You can cast it a pretty good ways. And... Uh, you need a rod that's going to be able to obviously cast the bait a long ways, being a weighing a little bit more, but it's going to load, hold a lot of pressure, and have a lot of give for those fish that are jerking their head back and forth, whether it's a large mouse, small mouse, spotted bass, whatever it is. You don't have a lot of hook bite there with a the one odd hook. And then the heavier Ned Rig rod, you can get away throwing heavier Ned Rigs, whether it be like a new third, third ounce that's a, a heavier Ned Rig than we've seen for a while, and you're casting a long ways, fishing deep or even fishing like a power finesse shrooms with the Ned rig and that you have a bigger hook. If you're around heavier cover, you can skip it under docks and not be scared that you can't get that fish around that last pile and get it out in the open water. So a Ned rig rod for really both applications, whether you're, you're kind of power fishing with the Ned rig or you're using a six pound line and, and really finesse with that one odd hook in a, in a small Ned rig. I, I said a few times this last week, but it's amazing to see just the, how far this net evolution keeps going and keeps things get more and more perfected new tools and new baits but also to get new tools with new rods to kind of to really dial this this thing in and then it's ned rig was just a, a, a bait not that long enough there's a whole category of products just associated to this stuff it's really neat to see just how things are getting so fine-tuned and just fine-tuned but also getting much more offerings and, and options to use it's pretty neat you bet you know i mean i i like other closed-minded people uh <laughs> I wrote it off as a small fish thing in the beginning, and, and the first, you know, the first time you catch a six or seven pounder on it, you go, okay, uh, this is something I need to pay a little more attention to. So thank you for taking us through those new IMX Pro Ned Rig spinning rods available for pre-order on the site right now. So going from some really cool Loomis rods, we're going to transition, transition to the Shimano stuff now. And uh, I think Trey's going to take the lead on this. And we had a shoot scheduled earlier in the, or for, before I cast, talk about this new stuff, 
And I think Trey might have done it on purpose. He, uh, he scheduled his wedding right on top of the shoot <laughs> just so he wouldn't have to see me. I'm a little offended by that, Trey, but uh, you... The wedding... The wedding that then got postponed, so we so so then we eloped, and uh, yeah, so uh, no, we've had all kinds of stuff get canceled this year, man. I had a trip to, trip to Panama get canceled, a wedding, a honeymoon, my trip to go see you guys. I mean, it's been a it's been a rough year. I mean, all every one of us on this call right now, we're all buddies, and we'd be at iCast having a good time right now, and it's been uh, it's been tough, man. But we'll uh, we'll all get together sometime in the future and do some mission. So. Well, you know, Corey, instead of razzing the poor guy, you should be congratulating him on his marriage, right? That's how I was trying to congratulations. go. Congratulations. That's right. That was my segue into yeah, yeah. congratulations. And well, you just I just wanted to, make you, on it. I wanted to make you look bad. Anyway, it's not so, hard to do that. For the people who don't know who Trey Epic is, Trey is a product plan planning manager at Shimano and uh, and really works very close with with us at Top Warehouse. You know, it's been a very challenging year and we've really leaned on Trey to, to try to do the best we can to make sure that Shimano's products are in stock. So Trey, thank you for uh, for your help and for your time this year. And, and besides being a, a really keen businessman, Trey is uh, just a worldwide catcher of fish. Uh, Trey's Instagram is always piled with some sort of different exotic species. Trey, Trey uh, get, you've been catching anything weird? Um, most recently I went down to, uh, I went down to South Florida and I caught some golden tile fish down there. I was deep dropping with like reels in like 700 feet of water. Um, done a little, uh, a little bass fishing locally, a little bale fishing and, uh, I'm actually going tarpon fishing tomorrow. So, uh, been, been sneaking in some fishing here and there and, uh, you know, it's definitely, uh, definitely haven't had as much time on the road this year to go out and do it, but, um, been uh been doing a lot of fishing at home here and there but yeah man i mean i i you know I'm, I'm fortunate as part of my job that i get to uh i get to get out there so yeah well good for you and and you keep everybody jealous that's uh that's friends with you on on the social media platforms uh but hey we're not here to talk about your exotic species that you you get to flaunt uh we're here to talk about the the new shimano zodius rods uh yep these are available for pre-order on the site right now can you tell us about them please Absolutely. So the Zodius, you know, we first launched in 2015. It's hard to believe it's been five years, but it has. And uh, it's something that we have, um, you know, a really successful series for, for us and you guys at Tech Warehouse over the years. And this new Zodius is, uh, it's got the high power X blank construction. So, um, you know, similar blank, well, the same blank technology as the previous generation. The big difference here is going to be that, uh, that carbon monocoque handle that we've added. So, um, you may remember the original Poison Adrena series we had here in the US a few years ago. It had that uh, it had that carbon monocoque handle. We've rolled that down all the way to the Zodius price point. Um, it's also uh, you know a, a cool part because it's a it's a really unique design. You're starting to see some more of these kind of carbon type handles in the market, but um, ours is a true hollow core rolled carbon design, up to 30% more sensitive than a traditional handle configuration. There's no filler in there. There's no foam. There's no spacers. Um, you know, we're starting to see some 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 kind of uh, competitive stuff hit the market, but uh, a lot of that isn't truly rolled carbon, hollow core carbon. So um, it's a it's a really unique feature still, and uh, you know, it's got the uh, Fuji K guides with alkanite rings and SIC tip guide, and a big addition this year is it's now got hook keeper. So that was a lot of people's biggest complaint about the Zodius series was it didn't have a hook keeper and uh, you know, we, we, we finally put one on there and, and uh, hopefully uh, we will no longer hear about it. But it's uh, it's a good, uh, a lot of value, man. I just, you know, I obviously I'm biased, but I, I really feel like at the $200 price point that this series just has a ton of value from a feature perspective. It looks cool, technology in it. Um, and uh, we've got a pretty good lineup of SKU new models that are really cool. So. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a really really sharp looking line of rods, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think a, a line of rods that's really uh, gained a lot of momentum and a big following over the last couple of years. People that try these rods really love them. Uh, so brand new series of Zodius out from Shimano. Uh, Trey, thanks for taking us through that. Uh, again, those are available for pre order on the site right now. Yeah, it's Absolutely. been. It, we got those a couple of years ago when we first started playing. I was really stoked. I um, had a few for myself. 
I actually went to pick some more up, but thanks to our boys over at Tactical Bass and pumping up, it seems like every time they do a video, we sell out. So I didn't have been able to get some for a while, but I think they're back in stock now. And pre-order these real quick before they sell out again. So check them out. Uh, awesome rods on the Zodius rods. I'm a big fan of those myself. We got, also have some new rods, uh, trays, the SLX crankbait rods this year, correct? Yep. Yeah, we've got uh, four new glass rods in SLX. These are going to be kind of that UD glass, a very full glass feel to them. Um, really going to allow fish to eat that bait on moving baits, you know, very soft, moderate, progressive actions in them. Um, and they really are full glass, you know, they feel like a glass rod, no doubt. And we're giving that at the consumer at a $99 price point. You know, that's a really affordable entry kind of cranking rod price point. That was the only knock on the SLX series that it didn't have cranking rods. So there's four models. There's a 610 medium light. That's going to be awesome for your little flat side, little wood baits. Uh, I'm a big geek for wood crank baits. Alex is too. And we uh, we like to throw up little flat sides and stuff, and especially in these Tennessee River, East, Southeast areas and uh, pre spawn deal. So that's going to be a perfect option for that. Uh, there's going to be a seven foot medium, which is ultimately your versatile all around kind of square bill cranking rod. Luke's phone is falling off the table. He's dropping the loud. Yeah. I try to get mute. Uh, Tell him to mute his mic. <laughs> mute your mic while you're at it. Uh, yeah, the wind is blowing then, a little bit here. <laughs> and then, uh, so yeah, seven foot medium is going to be just kind of that versatile all around square bill rod or medium depth crankbait rod. Seven two medium heavy is going to be your perfect chatterbait rod for that price point. Um, you know, it's uh, a lot of guys really like a glass rod for throwing chatterbait. And uh, I know not everybody's in that school, but there's a there is a lot of guys that are in the glass, the glass rod for a chatterbait. And they they uh, that's going to be a perfect option. And then there's a seven four medium heavy, which is going to be a perfect for your kind of your mid to deeper divers, you know, your five XD, six X or DT 20s. Um, that stuff. And it's a, it's a little bit more manageable of a length of the seven four. It's not, not everybody can handle a seven, six to seven, eleven deep crank rod. And, um, you know, it's uh, just a little bit more manageable of the length of people. Yeah. So really cool rods with the, with the clearest line. And again, it all it got you all the models cover all the different techniques you want to do. And it's the price point on the, on the rod is really nice too, right? Um, on that, the Claris line. Oh, sorry. SLX. Sorry. I look at the wrong notes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, SLX is, uh, yeah, 99 bucks. So, I mean, match, match them with the real and um, ultimately, uh, gonna, you know, be perfect in that in that price point uh, to match up with the SLX reels. And you guys have been killing it this year, as you know, and we know with those SLX, the whole new line of reels and the rods themselves. So, uh, it's amazing to see how well it's been doing. It's really cool to see these new rods kind of come along and pair up with those SLX reels. And uh, we're all... We've got those reels, the new reels, we'll talk about a little bit later here. We've got to be like, these reels are going to sell. And, uh, uh, and now you've got rods apparently that look, look great, but also it's just great rods and reels, but an excellent price, though. So you, don't, you can get an awesome combination, do any technique you want to do, and not break the bank doing it. So I'm, I'm really stoked to get these guys in. Um, again, pre-order the SLX new glass rods yourself today, and make sure to check them out. And in a little bit, we'll talk about the reel that you pair up with that right, as well. But before we go into the reels, let's keep moving down the rods. And you also have some new Claris rods. Let's talk about the, the, the new rod series itself. And then we'll also, after that, we'll, we'll talk about the, uh, the two-piece rods too. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, the Claris line is, honestly, it's a lot of people's entry into the Shimano brand, right? The rod perspective. I know my, the second Shimano rod I ever bought was a Claris. You know, the second one I ever bought with my own money was Claris. And, um, they're an awesome option for if you're just looking to fill out, you know, your lineup, um, you know, and it's not it's not just an entry user rod. There's some serious actions and some real nice uh, quality rods in that series. It, the big new addition here to them is going to be that G Alpha grip. Now, that's something we deployed on the Intensa series last year. It's kind of a new alternative tech grip. It came from the mountain bike business as a, as a mountain bike grip. And, uh, it's been really well received in Intenza. We've done really well there with it at that price point. Trickled down that technology into the $79 price point, and uh, it gives you kind of a real unique feature. It's more durable. It's it's better when it's uh, it's not slick when it's wet, and uh, ultimately it's uh, it's a really good uh, cool feature at that price point. And then within the series, as you mentioned, we've got a, a wide range of stuff. You know, we've got everything from a 6.6 six medium that you can throw a small popper or a jerk bait on up to a 7.2 um, a extra heavy that you could use for heavy clipping, frogging. 
Uh, and there's a bunch of options on the spinning side. You've got um, plenty of stuff to throw, little hair digs and Ned rigs. You know, there's a seven foot light, a seven thick light, and that um, there's really, really good options on spin. Your core stuff, as well as some of your lighter small mouth stuff as well. And uh, there's a lot of crossover applications with these rods. The actions aren't, they're not ultra technique specific, right? They're, they're typically fast action rods that you can you can use for to pull double duty for stuff, even if you're, you know, like uh, some of those rods are going to work really well for guys found it in the Texas Gulf Coast who are fishing for fish and speckle trout and stuff with bait. Uh, there's like a six ten medium light great crossover rod. Yeah, very cool. Like I said, it's it's the well built rods, but you got the, you're getting the actions are, are the, the same actions we're doing on the other lines of rods, and that's the biggest thing. I mean. The, the, all the little nuance of the rods really obviously doesn't make a better rod, but for casting and stuff like that, having the right action is, is the biggest thing. All those Shimano proven actions on, on that Claris price point is just awesome. Sure. You know, the, the Claris uh, series, the very first Claris series, uh, was, was a series that I really fell in love with. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was, I was, I think, a high, in high school at the time, and it was just the right price point and a great rod for the price, and this just continues that legacy. Yep, that's exactly right. I mean, I was same deal. That first Claris was I was in high school too. This was when I first got my first Claris, and uh, but they're yeah, they're still quality rods. I mean, I still fish with Clarises, and I've got access to the entire product line that we have. And there's there is always Clarises in my box. You know, I mean, they're they're there's all they're always in the boat, in the rod locker, and um, they're just great rods to fill out your arsenal and and uh, yeah, high quality, really good cost performance for that price. Very cool. And so I talk about you know, young anglers and stuff using a lot of these rods for the first time, like yourselves. Uh, a two-piece rod is a, is a great for a young angler to be able to take with them, take to maybe sneak into school, put them back in the car, have wherever you want to go. So maybe just talk about some of the new the two-piece rods and, and kind of the different models you have for those. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so all the majority of the two-piece rods are going to be in the spinning side. There is a, a couple bait cast two-piece as well. Um, you know, there's a, as you mentioned, they're great for the trunk of your car. I've actually got a two-piece Claris that lives in the toolbox in my pickup truck. I mean, it just goes with me everywhere I go, and uh, in case you need to, um, you know, you need to stop and pull over and fish a pond somewhere on the side of the road or uh, wherever you're going. And and you know, the good thing about two-piece rods, you ship them if you need to if you're going fishing to a destination you can ship them um if uh if you're fishing out a smaller boat well i know they're really pot two-piece rods are actually really popular uh with the people up north who are fishing out of small aluminum boats as well um fish people in canada especially um and uh, yeah it just makes them easier to manage a lot of the time especially if you're trying to fish on the go i mean i, I always try to keep a, a rod in my truck and, uh, you know, especially if you ever plan on having passengers, it doesn't work out to have them laying across the seat of your truck. So having a two-piece rod or a couple two-piece rods in your, in your toolbox or your trunk is always a good option. Absolutely. And, and, and you mentioned the, uh, uh, the Canadian market. For whatever reason, uh, our, our good Canadian friends and customers uh, love two-piece rods. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you know, I, I think they got something there because you know, I've, I've actually been driving around mm -hmm. uh, for most of 2020 with a two-piece rod <laughs> in the back of my truck because uh, sometimes you just got to get away and do a little fishing. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. always ready to go. And, and now you've got your I do a ton of lunch break fishing. I mean, it's cool to just get out and like when you're at the office and go grab a sandwich and go. We, we're fortunate to have a ton of small ponds around us here. So, yeah, lunch break, whatever, on your way to the doctor, dentist, I don't know. Just go ahead and stop and pull over and fish a good pond. But it's uh, it's definitely a cool, cool thing to have in your arsenal. Well, thanks for taking us through that. The, uh, the Claris rods, like the rest of this stuff, is available for pre-order on the site right now. Uh, some great... New rod introductions, Corey, from both G. Loomis and Shimano. Uh, but that's not all they got coming, right? No, they got, so we, again, we talked about that, the SLX crankbait rod. And to add the SLX family of the new SLX D, sorry, MGL70. And I, the, like I said, the first time I got that reel, I was like, this is a cool reel and we we're gonna smoke these big time. This created a lot of buzz uh, around the yeah, office. Yeah, for sure. This was, a, this was an exciting one for, for everybody. So uh, yeah, Trey, if you could tell us a little bit about this reel. Yeah, it's, um, you know, absolutely. It's it built on that SLX platform. So, you know, we introduced SLX a couple of years ago. Then we came with XD and DC. We've built out this nice little family of reels. And uh, we've uh, we've 
pushed a ton of them into the market. It's just such a great option to fill out your arsenal with quality reels. It's a recruiting new people into the Shimano brand. And um, that MGL is basically going to be, it really is the SLX XT platform and tooling. So it's got the same uh, same tooling as the XT, but the big difference is you're going to have that shallower 70 MGL spool. Um, so it's not a typical 70 size where it's not kind of the smaller reel built around that smaller spool size. It's truly a shallower spool within that that 150 style frame that you have in the rest of the SLXs. So it's uh, it's it's not going to be too small if you have small or bigger hands or anything like that. It's going to fit perfectly ergonomic. And and really the advantages of that shallower MGL spool are it makes it incredibly easy to pitch and flip with and skip. And then also if you're throwing any sort of lighter baits, little cranks or small jerk baits, small top waters, uh, weightless Senko, I mean, the list goes on and on of all the stuff we like to throw. I'm personally like, I prefer to throw a bait caster whenever I can. I don't know. Alex is the same way in a lot of ways where if, if I can help it, I want to have a bait caster in my hand. I just feel like I, I can manage fish better when I've got them hooked. And um, these, MGL spools and when you get into these kind of smaller smaller line capacity spools on like a Zodius seven foot two medium light bait finesse rod you can do a lot of that in between stuff where you kind of might have asked yourself like do I need to throw this on a spinning rod and um, you know you don't always have to so it gives you a really good option for that I mean I think from the flipping and pitching piece as well it just it makes it super easy to to to, to get that bait out there um, I know a lot of times guys are pitching with like a a little three eighths ounce jig or a, a weightless Cinco. And um, it's just a perfect option for all of that. You know, you know, Trey, something uh, you were just touching on there, but I really want to hammer home uh, to our listeners is there are, there's that traditional middle, uh, middle space of, of baits that you wouldn't normally throw on casting gear, or you think, ah, oh, do I really want to throw that on casting gear? It's going to be a struggle. And for folks that haven't downsized their reel, that can be a game changer for your ability to throw lighter and smaller baits. And, and, and so is, is that, that's really where this SLX MGL 70 is fitting. Yeah. I mean, that's really where it's going to shine. I mean, um, and the thing is, is of course, like we, we all would love to be able to just go out and wind something, catch them all the time. And, but you know, there's more people fishing right now than ever before, which means more pressure, right? So you're going to have to get a little finesse here. I know you guys are in California. You guys deal with small lakes and a lot of bass heads and like, you know, having those little tweaks and tricks and being able to go behind somebody with a little bit more delicate presentation. Um, that's the difference between catching and not a lot of the time. And um, this reel is really going to shine there. And to your point, exactly. I mean, a Corrado 200 is awesome. I mean, I have so many Corrado 200s and I throw a lot of stuff on them, but it's not the perfect tool for the job when you get into some of these smaller baits. And that SLX 70 MGL with that MGL spool, less inertia, just a lot easier to get started and throw that smaller stuff. And that's one of the things I'm, I think I'm biggest, for me, I'm excited about is I, I, more and more I'm getting used to using more spinning reels. I always, I always be ones, I don't want to use those little fairy ones. I would use a lot of the casting rods and I was, when you guys first came out with your uh, the drop shot casting rod, I was using that a lot in the old Corrado 100s, and and this is a great reel for that kind of stuff, just using for just a finesse approach with casting. And I I, I still kind of prefer for a lot of techniques if I can get away with the casting reel, casting rod, and that's what uh, this reel is gonna be a great great fit for. Right, and uh, and you can pre-order it right now. Yeah. Get, get in line for yours. Uh, it, just a beautiful looking reel too. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh, so I, I think Shimano did a great job there. Uh, and 100, 149.99 yes. with MGL spool, man. I mean, it looks like a high end reel. It casts like a high end. We've really never had a good finesse caster at this price. I mean, 149 bucks with an MGL spool is, man, that's, that's huge, that's beast. So. Sure. So for See, all, I got, I got to test them, and uh, I'm not a small, like small lure guy because I throw crowded 200, so not my thing. I backlash a lot. But I was throwing like the the quarter ounce pop R, mm -hmm. and I was pitching a weightless Cinco around, and it just makes you a whole lot better of a fisherman. So I mean, I've I've kind of seen the light, and I start doing it, even though I don't like to admit it a lot of times. But there's definitely a time when you can get small reel, small line, smaller rods, and you're just a whole lot more efficient. I have to put the two hundreds away. But that thing flipping, if anyone out there is wanting a reel just to like pitch and flip around like a weightless Cinco, that that SLX MGL is pretty, 
pretty hardcore. It's awesome, actually. I think this is going to be a big hit and uh, find its way into a lot of people's hands. And 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 uh, re really, I I that's what I hope most for people's fishing is it's going to open their eyes on on, mm -hmm. on a whole new variety of baits that they can throw on casting gear. So uh, Trey, thank you for taking us through that one. Uh, up next, we have another best of show winner, Corey. Yeah, it's the day uh, of best of show, sounds like. Yeah, yeah, this is a beautiful new spinning reel from Shimano, it's called the Vanford. And, and Trey, can you tell us about this reel and also tell us about the legacy of this reel because we're already getting questions about it. Absolutely, it's, um, you know, it's a new brand for us. Um, it, it loses a little bit of its context in the US because we don't, we don't sell Vanquish here in the US, which is V-A-N-Quish, right, Vanquish. And, that uh, we can't sell it in the U.S. because of trademark issues, but that's kind of our flagship, like ultralight spinning reel, right? And uh, in the Japanese market, so Vanford and Vanquish have very much come together as kind of within that same concept, right? Super lightweight from that CI4 Plus body, and then you've got that Magnum light rotor construction, which just reduces the rotational uh, inertia on that rotor, it allows you to just get tight on fish super fast, and um, it, it, it makes the rotation completely effortless on that spinning reel, and you know. Stratic CI4 was its predecessor and was a super strong brand for us. I mean, you guys have sold piles of them. We've sold piles of them. Everybody on this call has Stratic CI4s in their box. We all love them. But ultimately, Stratic CI4 and Stratic were, they've always been very different reels. They're different platforms or different tooling sets with different features, different body construction, different rotor construction. And um, we found that we just had people choosing between a Stratic and a Stratic CI4, when ultimately they're very different reels that are good for completely different reasons, right? And uh, so we felt that the Stratic CI4 kind of deserved its own branding and its own legacy. Um, so that's how we, we we launched it into the Vanford line. And uh, ultimately, Stratic CI4 was really popular because it was an awesome product, right? It was you know just a reliable workhorse and, and a lightweight option. And ultimately the Vanford is gonna have all of that that the Stratic CI4 has had, but it's got the new Magnum light rotor design. It's got the CI4 plus construction in the body. And then it's got all those new features that we trickled down from Stella from two years ago. We trickled them down to Stratic last year and van for this year, micro module gear two, X protect long stroke spool. You've got the cross carbon drag and the bigger sizes. Um, it's just a feature loaded for this price point. And, uh, just gives you that really lightweight, more finesse option. We you know we get into talking about Ned rigs and Ned rigs is still one thing that, you know, you probably are gonna throw it on a spinning rod most of the time, unless you get into those heavier heads. And uh, if there's a better Ned rig reel out there than the Vanford, I'd, I'd like to see it. Um, it's just gonna be a dynamite finesse reel option. Um, but the range in sizes, you know, there's that new C2000 size, which is gonna be really cool for the guys that like that lighter 1000, but they want some line capacity. You've got a C5000 now for guys that are fishing, um, you know, inshore stuff and, and uh, gonna give a great option there. And ultimately there's also a 500 and for the ice fishing guys too, which is gonna be, honestly, I've gotten more positive feedback on the 500 from the ice dudes than I have about anything. Like they're so stoked to have a high end ice fishing reel. And I don't know if you guys have ever ice fished or you've talked to, or you have friends that ice fish, but man, that stuff is getting like immensely popular. So, um, but it's, uh, there's a lot of just, you know, a lot of great options in this Vanford series. And it's, it's, it's really a dynamite reel. It's really sharp looking. You guys probably have a picture up on the screen of it now. And uh, cosmetically it's amazing. And it's packed with all of our high-end technology at that 229 price. So price didn't go up, which is always a good thing. Whenever you can trickle down a bunch of technology into something and the price doesn't go up, that's a real positive, so. I've still yet to do any of the ice fishing stuff. I've been trying to get it for years, so maybe need to work at a little Shimano Loomis ice fishing trip. And we in talking about that reel, and we have those Loomis Ned rods. So this would be a great pairing of those two together, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a Vanford with the Ned rig rod and the IMX Pro is going to be a killer. Um, you know, they're, that's a that's a no brainer. Some of those new swim bait additions, well, throwing a ball head. I mean, it's it with that long stroke spool you get enhanced casting distance. And one thing a lot of guys are starting to figure out is like bass are, we can catch them on lighter braid. It actually can, you can do it. So like 10 pound braid on, on a Vanford with a long stroke spool and, and a ball head, like you can cast that a mile on one of those new swim bait rods and cover a ton of water, uh, clear water fisheries. That's a huge deal. Um, so getting that extra casting distance, it's kind of like a, 
a lot of the pros didn't talk about it for many years that they were a lot of them had gone down to like really light braid on their spinning gear and they just people were still throwing like 20 and 30 pound braid on their spinning gear and it just um it's it's kind of starting to leak out where people are like oh okay you actually you don't need that for a bass and when you get into clear water situations having that actual having that longer casting distance is a huge deal so yeah speak of the pros Thanks, leaking Trey. it out have have you got a chance to fish that there davis I fished it for, I think, a month and a half. Mm -hmm. um, fished it in like half of February and March. Uh, took it and threw a, actually threw a small Kytec and a little rhythm wave on it just to see for casting distance, and I really liked it. But I think, to me, it shined. Um, I think I was most impressed when I went to Martin and I was skipping Wacky Rig, uh, Flick Shake, and Cinco around all the docks. And when you'd hook one, like, I'm always scared. That just scares me on a spin rod when you got like six pilings. And it's like, oh, this isn't going to work. I mean, that thing was awesome, and I had the, the drag really, really tight so I could get them out of there, but when they'd run at the boat, the drag would still slip, so I didn't have to worry about the, like the, any kind of a drag sticking issue, so it performed flawlessly for me, and I was, I was throwing it actually on the 30-pound braid with the 15-pound leader because it was just kind of gnarly where I was putting it, so that reel passed the test as far as uh, durability and getting the stuff out and kind of like a hardcore spinning reel it, it passed my test i was good with does it. daisy like the reels too there uh yeah dixie she's dixie, back sorry. there she just <laughs> yeah she got up I, I heard her i guess she's gonna uh, be the star of the show uh, now. I, yeah i thought i thought i thought my pets were gonna be the first one to make an appearance so i'm glad davis broke the ice there <laughs> hey trey if you got them let's see them I don't know. They're, they're, they're cats they could be anti-social oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, alex we'll, what do we'll you think of cats now. alex we'll skip the cats uh, break what you got. <laughs> yeah, right. He's got a girl. He's got a girlfriend who might barge in at any minute. We'll see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, hey. <laughs> so, folks, that that is the uh, that's the new Vanford spin and reel uh, available for pre-order on tacklewarehouse.com. Uh, before we move away from Vanford, uh, Trey, you were on the Zoom call. We we're all still uh, uh -oh. in our. <laughs> Corey said, "Uh oh." <laughs> We were all still on, on, you know, at our homes. I was in my living room uh, when I was on the call with you that announced uh, that you guys were moving away from Stratic CI4 into the Vanford name. And I think you heard my lower jaw hit the table. <laughs> um, and I think that's everyone's first reaction is Stratic CI4 is such a powerhouse. And I really was unsure until we saw the quality, the design, the performance, and, and really the whole package that Vanford brings. And, and, and it's, it's a beautiful reel. Mm -hmm. And I've really warmed up to the name personally. Um, so, so, you know, I, I, I think uh, it, it's definitely a bold move on Shimano's part, Corey. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to see it a whole lot. I think it sounds like the, the, those hybrid samples and, and those spinning reel samples keep making it into Joey's boat, so I don't know how that still happened, but we need to put a, st I need to, I think I know, so I might have to put some phone calls in to, yeah. not we him, still, I'm we here. We still, we still only, like, the crazy thing about the development this year with, with COVID is, like, we still only have one of every skew of that, like, so the, the, the samples have been, like, we've been holding them so tight to our chest, because it's, we literally own, there's literally only six Vanfords in the country right now, one of each size, you know, and uh, so, yeah, we've been shuffling them around and doing the best we can. But uh, coronavirus has made product development really, really interesting and fun this year, especially trying to launch stuff on time, you know, so. Sure. Hey, there Trey, was, we, there was oh, almost five Alex, go ahead. There was almost five of them. Funny story. I, I shipped it back. Three uh -oh. weeks later, no. Kenji, uh, QC guy, was like, still not here, Alex. And I was like, don't know what to tell don't you. Know. <laughs> All FedEx, and I think it like finally showed up. So there was almost only five vanguards, Trey, not six. I'm no. guessing they're assuming that you were full of you know what, and you were just oh, I shipped it out and it never well, got back. And they're like, we know how Davis rolls. What what right. made it bad is like three days before I said, hey Kenji, I think I'm just gonna keep it. I like it so much, and then it didn't show up, and I was like, oh, this looks real bad on me right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, hey, you're making up for it with that great big Shimano logo across your chest there. <laughs> hey. There uh, before we move on from yeah. you guys, Trey, we do have a, a, a viewer question. Sean asks, uh, can you tell us about the Zodius and the Poison Adrena and the difference between those two rods? Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's a few few key points here. Um, I can think of three, at least three key, key points that I'll hit on. So Poison Adrena has, from a blank technology perspective, has Spiral X Core. Um, so the difference between Spiral X and High Power X and Spiral X Core is 
Spirelex and Spirelex Core, a patented technology from Shimano, where we wrap carbon tape directly to the mandrel from tip to butt and then back again. And that's kind of the core layer of the blank. Um, and then we roll sheet material. And then um, in some cases, we'll go back over it with High Power X. But um, High Power X is really kind of a reinforcing structure that you see on the outside of the blank. You'll roll the blank and then go High Power X. They both have similar benefits, but they tend to get maximized as you get into Spirelex. Spirelex Core utilizes nano resin impregnated carbon infinity tape. I know that's a big word, but it's uh, it's really high end, expensive, sensitive carbon tape that is the core foundation of that blank. And uh, incredible twist resistance, rigidity, um, less twist, less obalization, less breakage, better strength to weight ratios, all those benefits. So. Blank is definitely upgraded in Poison Adrena. Components, you're gonna have higher end guides on the Poison Adrena. So um, that's, uh, that's a difference as well. And then the carbon monocoque handles are a different construction. The new Zodius has kind of the old style carbon monocoque where it's just that rear, rear part of the grip versus Poison Adrena has that full carbon monocoque grip, um, which is a, the, literally the entire rear handle piece is a hollow carbon rolled tube that's just super lightweight, super sensitive. You can feel every little tick of vibration in the palm of your hand there. They both have the CI4 Plus Shimano Custom Perfection Real Seats. Um, you know, obviously Zodius is gonna have a few more actions than Poison Adrena is right now. I think we've only got five or six rods in the Poison Adrena lineup in the US right now. You're gonna see more coming next year and super excited for what we're gonna have there. Um, and yeah, Zodius is, uh, so this is going to have the obviously a little like more bang for your buck at a price point level, but both are dynamite rods. You just have, you know, some slightly more high end features in the Adrena series. Got it. Well, hey, that was that was a perfect question with, yeah. with a man like Trey Epic on the line. Trey, thanks for taking us through that. Uh, before we let the Shimano crew go, we, we already lost Luke due to wind. wind he noise. was blown away. <laughs> uh, and unfortunately, we lost Luke because our trivia question today uh, was in honor of Luke, who is a Bassmaster Classic and Forrest L. Wood Cup winner. Uh, very small pool of people to have ever done that. Um, I would like to throw it over to Alex Davis, uh, who's our only other professional angler still on the line here. And Alex, if you can name one of the other four you've beaten me, do you know uh, anyone else besides Luke Clausen who has won both the Classic and the Cup? Just one. Oh, he's on the spot. He's the, uh, I can well, see the sweat. Why, why he's thinking, we, uh, Ben Ott was very close, but still not all, all the correct answers. So we got, you guys still got the rest of the day to get the answers in. So keep going. So why he's thinking, remember, it's all four that have won both, correct? Right. Okay. Right. So, so Ben Ott's I'm are... I'm just going, I'm going off my head and I'm probably wrong, but it, would it be uh, Dion Hibden? You got one. Okay. I was, I was, I was gonna say, I know one of the Hibdens did it. I just can't okay, remember. I know one. Dion did it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Can I keep thinking here? Keep no, guessing. No, we got it. No, we have not. I mean, I got yet. one. Has not won. He's very close, but he has not won yet. Who? Me? No, you're, you're good. Oh. Uh, let's, let's, okay, let's, I'm good then. You yeah, gave I'm the good. one. That's the one. We got. They got to get all four right for them to choose the correct winner. So we're gonna keep moving. So keep getting your guesses in, guys. All right. All right. Well. uh Hey, have we lost the Shimano guys? Are we? No, are we, we, we got them? some more we time. Got that, that clock's a little off up there. We got, we got another. Heck, we got. Um, we haven't, we haven't done Corrado seventy MGL. Oh, we missed that. One. Corrado seventy MGL. Tell us about it. What's it? Yeah. Um, well, so the difference on Corrado seventy MGL and Alex has tested this one as well, where that's going to be um, your smaller seventy size. Like it's truly built around a smaller spool frame. So. Guys with smaller hands, that's kind of the more geared option for you on a 70 size. And that's, again, it's kind of the same things we were saying with a uh, with the SLX 70 MGL. Dynamite for lightweight baits, dynamite for flipping and pitching. I mean, Alex, you can talk about it. You you love the, the 70 for, for flipping and pitching. It's lighter weight, and, um, you know, I'm sure you could talk about it as well. See, I learned, uh, I learned to flip braid from a really good, probably one of the best flippers on Gunners was ever seen. And he flipped on the old uh, G. Loomis recoil guides with the Core 50, the old Core MG 50s. And I learned off of his, I, I got a setup just like he did. So that was what I used. And then 
when I started to try to use a 200, I couldn't do it. I mean, it was just, it was really awkward for me and I didn't like it. So when I got a hold of Karate 70, the old, the, the you know, previous generation, that's the only reel I'll flip braid with. I mean, it, it is unreal what you can do and how easy it is. You can flip all day and it's, it's easy in the hand. It's, it's really easy to control. It doesn't feel big or awkward. It doesn't give any kind of cramps. And that's just something when you're flipping an ounce and a half, you want as, as lightweight as you can get because you have a 7.11 or a 7.5 rod, whatever you're going to flip with. So you want as light as you can get it because literally I, I flip left-handed. I've learned to flip left-handed. So I never take the rod out. of. I never switch hands. It, it only stays in my left hand all day. And it just gets very tiresome. So once you learn and you actually will get a 70 reel to do that, you'll never go back. And I actually got to test this thing and I was kind of interested. It really wasn't the time to do it, but I went to Gunnersville and it was in like March and I flipped around a big weight and it, it passed the test. So, I mean, it's, I'll never flip with any reel except for a, a crowd of 70. That'll be one, the, uh, one upgrade, Alex. I know you like the previous 70. So this one has the bigger handle on it that we've got on the Corrado K. So we took that Corrado K handle, the 200 K and put it on that 70 body. Um, the roller clutch is, is got plenty of uh, beef to it. Um, so yeah, I mean, flipping braid, no problem. Going to also be a dynamite finesse caster, kind of the same realm as we talked about with the uh, SLX 70 MGL, but um, yeah, it's going to be perfect option flipping and pitching, you know, two gear ratios, HG and XG, left hand and right hand. Um, it gives you a little bit lighter weight option. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a dynamite little dynamite little reel. A lot of, a lot of reel in a small package. Well, awesome. We still don't have the image samples yet or samples on the site. So as soon as we do, we'll get those up. And hopefully we'll be able to get it for pre-order or I, we got to get stuff worked out. Like I said, with everything going on, uh, things are kind of a mess. But hopefully we'll get those on the site. You can check those out pretty quick. And I hate to kick you guys out here pretty quick. We thought I thought we had more time. to. I wanted to BS with you guys for 15 minutes after we got done. But uh, we, we kind of went through all the products and we got the next guys ready to go. I want to give a big thanks to you. Luke, I know you're listening, bud. Sorry. Thank you. We'll get that wind noise under control next time blown away in south dakota well i appreciate you having us guys it's always uh it's awesome to see you and next time we'll be over a beer on a lake somewhere so you bet it trey dave alex thank you guys so much for your time and uh, be well thanks guys thank you, guys. Thank you. all right some exciting stuff from them Corey. yeah very cool so uh like i said i, I thought we had a little more time with those guys but we don't we're gonna have some uh if, again if you guys got some questions we got spencer sheffield and jason lambert up next so uh, make sure you get those questions in for those guys. And we're still looking for that right answer. So get your guesses in. We need all four of the correct answers to, to get the answer correct. So get your questions going and we'll, we'll get the prize out to you for the first guy to get all four right. Um, do we have Jason and uh, Spencer ready to go? We got Jason coming in here. So we'll get him going and Spencer. So uh, cool stuff for Shimano. I'm pretty stoked at all the stuff. They always bring it to, and they, they should have done it again. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. I mean, they, you know, they've built a built a brand on on really quality products, and and it's exciting to see the new stuff. And, and uh, you know, it, there is a bit of buzz uh, about uh, the Stratic CI4 mm -hmm. going away, but they they've done a great job uh, in finding a replacement there. So next up, uh, we got two FLW Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit Anglers, Spencer Sheffield and Jason Lambert. Guys, welcome to the show. Uh. How What's you, up, guys? Good to be here. How you guys doing? Doing good. Good. You guys on the road or at home? Yeah, oh, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm up north. We just finished Major League Fishing uh, this week at uh, Sturgeon Bay and uh, moved over here to uh, Rapid River, Michigan on the north side by Bay Denot. Going to hang out and try to catch some smallmouth for a couple days and then move over to lacrosse for the next super tournament. So. Great. Yeah, I'm I'm jumping Wi-Fi off of a uh, off of a campground uh, office right now just to hang out with you guys. Good for you. I appreciate it. What what you up to, Spencer? Oh, I'm at the beach on vacation with the family. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, again, I appreciate you taking the time and your your, your your family schedule to come see you with us today. Sorry, we're running a little bit behind, but uh, just glad to have you guys on. Talk about some new stuff. Right. Um, so up first, let's just roll right into it. Um, we got some new products from Missouri. And Spencer, why don't you tell us about the, the Hardcore Shad 75? Yep, got it right here. That's the Shad 75. I'm going to tell you this thing, it's a lot like the uh, Shad Wrap, um, except it's not balsa and it's got the weight transfer system in it. So this thing, you can throw it on a casting rod. It's like what I like throwing on a casting rod and 10 pound Yozuri top knot fluorocarbon. 
uh, man, it throws like a bullet. You know, a lot of times when you're throwing this type of bait, this profile, you're throwing it in the winter, so you usually have quite a bit of wind. And with that magnetic weight, tra weight transfer system in it, like all the new hardcore baits have that have come out, that we're coming out with this summer, you can throw it a really long ways, and that's very important with a bait at this size. Uh, can you like take out the package for us real quick, sorry? Can you, can you take it out of the package to show us a little bit? Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's got very uh, high quality components components on it. Uh, you know, real high quality split rings here where you tie on at, mm -hmm. uh, down here at the hooks as well. Uh, don't have to change anything, man. This thing's ready to go straight out of the pack. Uh, it comes with a twist tie, you know, around the hooks, keep everything in the package up, you know, real close to the body. You just, it's real easy to get off and uh, it's ready to go right out of the pack. Uh, this bait's going to get down is what I was getting it down to this winter is about 10 to 11 foot deep on 10 pound fluorocarbon and a casting rod. You can throw it a long ways. Uh, and I smashed them on it. I mean, I, I really did. A lot of places where I would throw like a wiggle ward top bait or a rock crawler, this bait it did a lot better than those for me this winter uh, because it's got a real tight action and uh, just the profile of it. You know, they're not used to seeing this type of profile bait down at those depths that time of year. Uh, very tight action to it. I caught them really well and won several tournaments on Washita and Hamilton this some uh, this winter on it back at home. So, yeah, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a huge player in tournaments to come, especially uh, at local levels. You know, when this is available to the anglers, you're definitely going to want to have some because uh, they they catch them. I'm just telling you, it's got them in several different colors. You know, uh, all high quality finish Japanese finishes. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with this Shad 75 so far, for sure. Yeah, when you guys came out with the Shad a couple of years ago, I, uh, me and Jeff, one of their buyers here, we got on this killer bite uh, on that thing, and we were buying – that was, like, our go-to bait for a couple of years. It's a cool little crank, and it, it was it's something – at the time, especially, something was a little bit different, and I don't know what it was. We'd go out there and throw some other baits, and not get as many bites, but that, the, that bait there was, would out-catch out fish 10 to 1, it was, and it's a really neat-looking system. Yeah, yeah, the, you know, I love those little uh, shad, shad body style cranks, uh, but, but as, as Spencer uh, alluded to, they're so frustrating to cast, mm -hmm. especially if you get a little wind, it's generally a spin and rod thing, so having something with that weight transfer that you can really, really cast, cast into the wind, uh, I mean, they just, it, a cold water killer right there. Yeah. So great to see, uh, like Corey said, available for, for pre-order on the site. Uh, and if we can kick it, kick it over to Jason. Jason, uh, we got another dual uh, new introduction there. It's the hardcore, uh, dual hardcore three plus and four plus. Can you tell us about those? Yeah, both of these baits are, you know, it's, it's the three and the four, you can tell a little bit, a little bigger profile, not much bigger. You know, the three is gonna be, uh, you know, depending on what you throw it on, 10 pound line, like Spencer's saying, I, I usually throw, throw these type baits on 10 pound Yozori top knot four carbon and I can get this bait down to like 12 feet at least I can get I can get the four down just on a long cast of maybe 14 15 feet um, we fished a little tournament at Pickwick Toyota series back here at uh, the end of May and I was actually taking this crank four and long lining this thing and I was catching them in 25 to 28 feet of water on it so you know it's it's like any crankbait the further you can get it out, the further you can, the deeper you can get it. But all of all of the hardcore products, like Spencer said, is great hooks, great split rings, the weight transfer system, and everything. You can throw these things a long way. But you know, both of these crankbaits are, you know, they're basically the same size as you can see. The four is just a, a touch bigger, a little deeper. But it's they're great pre-spawn baits. They're great post-spawn baits. It's it's good equipment right out of the package. You don't have to tune them. And as a crankbait fisherman growing up on the Tennessee River, I probably throw a crankbait as much or more than anybody in the country all year long, pre-spawn, post-spawn, wintertime, it doesn't matter. It's real key to be able to take a bait out of the package and tie it on to a line and throw it and it come running back to you. I know how to tune a crankbait. A lot of people don't and they get frustrated with it, but you don't have to worry about it with, with any of the hardcore stuff. All the paint schemes are great. It's it's just a really good product top to bottom pre-spawn post spawn three and the four solid it's the weight transfer system hardcore has really hit it out of the park with this line of baits 
Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of throwing crankbaits, and everyone knows, and I've been, I guess said a few times today, but if you guys don't know, Jason is, is a ledge hammer, crank offshore hammer, and uh, the, he's had a lot to do with these baits, so you know they're going to be good quality baits. And if you want to check them out for yourself, you can uh, pre-order those up your, as well. And uh, I'm excited about them as well. I, like I said, I, I've been a fan of the Zuri Hardcore crankbaits line for a while now, so those deeper additions, I'm really stoked on those. I can't wait to go check them out. Um, we get uh, anything else on that j bait there, Jason? We could, you know, I mean, all the guys that are crankbait enthusiasts, there's, there's, we've got the color patterns covered from, you know, your crawfish patterns to, you know, all the chartreuses, the shad patterns, any color pattern you need from wherever, whatever part of the country you fish in, we've got you covered. So, yeah, grab a couple of them, grab a three, grab a four, go out and throw it. I think, I, I know you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to be really impressed with how true the bait runs right out of the box. So, yeah, man, it's just, they've just done a really good job putting these things together. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking us through that. Uh, back over to Spencer. Spencer, we got the hardcore flash and vibe uh, also from Duel. Can you, can you tell us about that guy? Yeah, this, this right here is my baby in the wintertime. Fishing uh, grass flats and actually just throwing it around rock up shallow. Uh, like Jason was saying with the crankbaits, man, everything out, straight out of the pack, out of this new hardcore series, runs straight as an arrow. You don't have to tune them. You know, a lot, even a lot of lipless baits, sometimes you get them, they want to run left or right when, when you go to speed them up. This one here, uh, I'll throw it on an 8 to 1 gear ratio, and you can't burn it fast enough to make it blow out. I mean, it comes back through all the way to the boat. Very tight action to it. Uh, gets down quick. If you pause this bait, I mean, it, it gets down to where you want to, a lot of the uh, grass stuff I'm fishing this over on like Lake Washington, the top of the grass is 12 foot deep. I'll throw it out there, three count, and I'm down to where I want to be. It's a three quarters of an ounce. Uh, and like I said, I yo-yo it a lot. It's great for yo-yoing. Uh, this bait falls head down when you kill it. And uh, it comes through grass really well, deflects over brush. Uh, I throw it a lot around docks. And uh, this is my go-to color in the wintertime. Uh, I actually just had a really good trip on this bait two days before I left to come uh, down here where I'm at now at home at a little lake. Uh, water 92 degrees there right now. And we were just smashing them out over these little creek drops and uh, five to eight foot of water. And it, Catching 25 pounds a day on this thing. I mean, the fish were schooled up in the mouths of these creeks and just mauled them on this little uh, flashing vibe, flashing vibe here. And uh, I'm really impressed with it. I caught a lot of big fish. What I made the top 30 on at Rayburn this year was on this exact color, this exact one right here. And uh, like I said, uh, it, it was good for me this year at home as well. You know, we kind of have more Ozark style lakes. And but everywhere I've been, even Harris Chain this uh, this spring, we went down for the second. Uh, Tackle Warehouse Pro event. Uh, this is uh, what I use to catch most of my weight fish in that tournament as well. Throwing it around, you know, wherever they were blowing up on shiners outside the semi grass and stuff like that. So it's real loud as well, but it's got a great action to it. Uh, seems like they they want it no matter if the water is 42 or 92 degrees. I've caught them on this thing, so it's a, it's been a, a great proven fish catcher for me thus far. That's a great looking lipless bait, and uh, all these baits yeah. we're talking about have a great price as well, Corey. For less than ten bucks, yeah, you're getting into a, a, yeah. a premium product with a, with beautiful finishes, good hardware, good hooks, all that stuff. Spencer, thank you for taking us through that guy there. Uh, available for pre-order on the site. Yeah, and, and again, all these baits we're seeing here are, are the last few of a 9.99 available for pre-order. Up next, we got a couple new, all more new crank baits with Jason. You got the MR and the SR cranks. Maybe tell us about the about the baits and is the MR and SR really just uh, uh, a different? Obviously, diving depth. Is there different times of year, locations you you use the MR or or the SR? Let me get you guys unmuted here. The MR and the SR are two entirely different baits. I mean, our SR is what you know as a typical square bill crankbait. The MR is is, is going to cause conflict between um, the shad that that Spencer was talking about earlier in this MR. Th this bait is is a phenomenal pre-spawn wintertime bait. As you see, it's going to be about a you know a six to eight foot running bait. I mean, places in the past where you've uh, thrown and I'm. Sorry about the noise. There. Okay. We're, we're live. We're out. zooming. Hey, can we get that guy a tackle warehouse shirt? <laughs> he was great. So, 
the MR is it's going to be a six to eight, maybe a ten foot running bait. It's going to be a great pre spawn and a, and a fall bait because it's it's a lot smaller profile in the fall of the year. I don't care what part of the country you're in in the fall of the year, all basically every bass in the United States goes towards the shad in the fall of the year because the shad make the migration back into the pockets. The bass follow them, so this is a good profile bait for that. Again, the weight transfer system, this is a small bait. And a lot of times, you know, throwing in the past, you try to throw, you know, like the wiggle wart type bait, st that style of bait. It's a really hard bait to throw, especially if there's any wind on a bait caster. But this weight transfer system, this small profile bait, you can still throw it a long way. So it's a great pre-spawn bait. It's a great fall bait. It's, it's the perfect size for that small shad in the fall that those bass are up chasing. Now the SR, Again, it, it's more of, you know, it's your square bill type bait. But if you'll notice this bait, we've built it wide. It's got a good wide body on it. So the one thing that I would dare you to try to do is get this thing hung. It, you can bring it through anything basically that you want to throw it to. You, if The guys that like fishing cypress knees and stuff with a square bill, th this is going to be a game changer for you because this thing has a good wide profile, a good wide bill as you can see. And, and it just deflects off of everything. But also it comes back to the same thing with, with a lot of these crankbaits and the stuff that, that Spencer's talked about earlier. You know, Hardcore has put the finishes. I mean, they've put the time and the effort to get the perfect finishes, the perfect, you know, equipment on them, good hooks, good split rings, but there's not a place in the United States or Canada that you don't throw a square bill at some point in time. I mean, it's it's a pre-spawn, it's a winter time, it's a dirty water, it's a spawn bait. I mean, you catch a lot of fish around the spawn on a square bill. In the fall, you catch a lot of fish on it. So this is a brand new bait, it's a brand new body. It's a completely new design square bill bait by Hardcore. And I'm, I mean, I've had a lot of fun with it. I've seen Spencer even post some pictures of some fish he's caught probably on this very same one, if I remember right. This is, this is a bluegill pattern, but we've got every color pattern that you could imagine covered. So. It's just a good all around square bill with every color for every situation from your chartreuse and blacks to your shad patterns. Even we even build these. The one thing that a lot of people don't realize that hardcore does is we build all these baits in a clear pattern as well. So if you've got, you know, if you've got a certain color that you throw on your lake or your body of water that, that you can't get, that you end up having to have custom painted, we've got these baits in a clear body. So you can buy the clear body and paint them whatever color you want, but just the MR, the SR, again, it's all brand new line from Hardcore, but these these are good, good, solid baits for spring, fall, this one for any time of the year. So, man, I, I'm I'm really excited about this whole new lineup of stuff, but as a cranking guy, I couldn't be happier with what Hardcore has gave us already. I've said a few times on the show, like I said, I'm a big fan of cranking. Really excited to check those out. And cool looking quality baits, but like I said, for $9.99, Excellent price for really quality, quality bait. And again, you can pre-order those right now yourself. What do we got next, Joey? Uh, it looks like next up we got uh, Spencer taking us through the Hardcore Minnow Flat. Yep, right here, the 110 Minnow Flat. This is, uh, I'm impressed with all the Hardcore baits, okay? But this is by far, th this one's special to me. I mean, it's, it's, um, I'm in love with this this jerk bait. I, I'm a jerk bait fanatic. I love throwing a jerk bait, and when I got this, just immediately looking at it right out of the pack when they sent them to me, I was like, man, it's a good looking jerk bait. Uh, the shape of it, just you know, the the quality it had, the finish, you know, that high quality Japanese looking finish. Uh, and usually, when you get a jerk bait, you usually have to change the hooks, and uh, because you, you tend to lose a lot of fish on jerk bait. And I started out, I, I used it with the hooks that come on it. I've never had to change hooks on this jerk bait. Rarely ever lose a fish on it. I mean, it's, these hooks are solid that's on it, uh, as well as split rings. But like all of hardcore baits that they've released this year, it's got that, that weight transfer system in it. You know, when you go to throw it, it snaps back to the tail. And, I mean, it goes a long ways. So... Uh, you can throw it a long ways in the wind. You know, usually when you're throwing a jerk bait, it's windy conditions. That's when you want to throw it. But I have caught so many big ones on this this, this spring, this past winter. Uh, this jerk bait's going to get down about six to seven foot. I throw it on eight to ten pound Yozuri top knot fluorocarbon. And, um, you know, 
go back to the weight transfer system just for a second. That's what I really like about this dirt bike is being a magnetic weight transfer system that when you go to start working this jerk bait on into your cast to retrieve it back, these weights snap back forward and attach to that magnetic and stay in place and that to that magnet. So it's almost like it's a solid jerk bait, which is different than what they hear a lot. I mean, you still got a little sound. You're going to have the hooks hitting the side and stuff like that. It's going to make a little noise, but it's, it's a real quiet jerk bait. It has a great side to side darting action and it rolls real good when it does it on the stop. And it sits pretty much at about that angle right there when when it's pausing. Uh, I've never had to add weight to this. It sits perfectly in the water with maybe just a very, very slow sink, hardly noticeable at all. But uh, I've killed them on it, the small mouth, the big spots, uh, big large mouth all year so far. Um, and like I said, I, I could go on about this jerk bait for an hour. I mean, the, the finishes on it's great, the color schemes they have. It's very dear to my heart. This is probably by far my favorite one uh, out of all the lineup. I love them all, but I, I mean, I'm a jerkbait guy. I just love jerkbaits, and, and this one here has been the best one I've ever got my hands on. So, uh, yeah, be looking for these for sure because they're, <laughs> man, they kill them. I'm not kidding. Well, Corey, that's the hardcore minnow flat. And, and really, if, uh, you know, he was talking about the, the weight transfer system, once you try a rip bait with a weight transfer system, uh, once you get over that initial jump from it snapping as you <laughs> as you go to cast it's hard to go back because yeah. man those things cast like a bullet so check those out those are available for pre-order at 9.99 great price that's crazy great looking base it, 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 that, drink bait especially when casting in the wind they're tough but to be able to throw in a long ways it's a huge key and uh, looks like they got it solved for you so up next also from spencer we've got another hardcore bait it's a hardcore popper right yes sir I see it right there, hardcore popper. Uh, comes just like this, right out of the pack. Good quality feather, great hooks. Another, you know, you don't have to change anything on it. It's ready to go right out of the box. Uh, this is my favorite color, just the same as the jerk bait. It's the ghost IU color. Uh, to me, you know, it rep replicates a bait fish or a bluegill. Uh, I like throwing it during the spawn, after the spawn. Uh, kind of around the shad spawn. I haven't got to have to use it yet uh, during the fall, you know, like we have coming up. But I, I know it's going to be a huge player. It's a little bit more compact. Um, got the weight transfer system as well. I've never had a, a pop bar top bait like this that is so easy to throw up under docks, overhanging trees and stuff because of the fact it's got that weight transfer system. It really carry, you can carry the bait a long ways, very low and close to the surface of the water. Um, I tie a loop knot on it. You know, you can see the the knot, uh, the tie hanger, the hook, uh, the knot there where you would tie your knot is uh, the line tie is kind of recessed. I like that a lot, but I tie a loop knot there and I like to walk it. But also, like I, I've said before, this is one of the only top water, pop water top baits that I've ever thrown that you can be walking it left and right on a loop knot and immediately just make it start coming straight at you, spit water at you, and then go right back into a walking formation again. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been excellent for me as well. Um, I caught a lot of fish on this around the house this year. Um, our last term, Chickamauga, I caught a couple of wave fish each day on this up shallow as well, early in the morning. Um, had, caught one seven pounder on this in practice too, and, and a couple five during the tournament. So. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been excellent for me. I'm I'm in love with it. Uh, it was you know like I said, the Mayfly hatch is what was going on there at Chickamauga, and this bait was deadly for me uh, early in the morning. So, a beautiful bait, Corey, and and a lot of attention to detail, and obviously something that's playing into Spencer's uh, great year so far yeah. uh, on on the tour. So uh, congratulations on the on the hot start there, and uh, thanks for taking us through that bait again. All of these. Uh, dual baits, all the hard baits that we've seen for both Spencer and Jason are available for pre-order on the site, $9.99 across the board. Very cool baits, a lot of neat stuff. We are running a little behind, so we're trying to get caught up here with the next one. Before we let you guys go though, like you guys have both had a, a, a fish in the Tackle Ross Pro Tour this year. With the next event coming up, I don't know if you guys want to divulge any of your plan of attack or what's going on with each other listening in, but maybe just what do you think the fish are going to be doing, if nothing else, if you want to go into a little bit what you're going to be throwing and if any of these new procs are coming to play at all. 
Well, I mean, obviously, you know, lacrosse is a river system. So you've got, you know, a lot of current that comes into play, which being a Tennessee River guy, obviously the first thing I'm going to go look for is, is some current and something that's off the bank. But, you know, I've, I got a good feeling you're probably going to get a chance to see the crank three and the crank four out of me a lot. And, um, you know, that's a shallow water fishery. So that that pop, that that popping bait is, is probably going to come into play as well. So, you know, it, it should be a fun derby. I, you know, you just never know. I mean, it's <laughs> these tournaments this year seems like a, seems like everything's gotten bounced around from from the coronavirus, and uh, we're we're at a kind of going to be at an odd time at lacrosse. So, you know, the water levels have been up and down, up and down. It's actually really low now, and for the guys that have been there in the past, and and Spencer, you'll know this. It's it's really really low there. So, uh, you know, there's there's probably going to be some lower units destroyed too this <laughs> week, but. I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm just glad we're getting to fish with everything that's going on. It's just uh, it's just been a weird year, but I'm just I'm glad that FLW Major League Fishing has has got us up and got us going so we can complete the year. I, I'm stoked to see you guys get back out there. And is that jerk bait going to come into play for you this all this week at all, or what are you going to think you're going to be doing? Yeah, Spencer. probably. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw the jerk bait some for sure, but I'm definitely going to be throwing this popper. And I will tell you another bait, Jason. The two of you talked about the SB Square Bill and the MR60. Uh, those I will have multiple colors of each of those tied on for that tournament because, you know, from what I understand that place, you know, the fish are usually pretty shallow. And uh, I, I think, uh, you know, shallower to mid-depth diving crankbaits like uh, Hardcore has to offer and the SB and the MR are going to uh, play a huge role for uh, myself and Jason. Uh, I have a good feeling, uh, catch a small mouth and, and, you know, stuff like that. It's got a lot of dots. I noticed that place got a lot of dots. Uh, looks like pretty much it's a very fishy place and anything looks like ought to have a bass has a bass and so I, I look forward to getting there and slinging around those crankbaits for sure and this popper no doubt very cool again appreciate you guys taking the time here schedule to join us today especially you guys are on i mean you guys are getting ready for the event you're on vacation so uh it's a big help for you guys to get on here a lot of cool products you guys showed so thanks again for coming on today thank hey, you for the opportunity yeah all right you guys good luck at the tackle house event to see you guys thank you Cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, you, you know, we, we talked a lot about the quality, the components, et cetera, uh, but man, the finishes there. Are, yeah. It's like a custom painted finish. I was looking at uh, one of the bluegill baits that Jason was holding, uh, and really, really cool finish. Uh, obviously, great price. Um, what more do you want? No, you know? yeah. And, and, and I know you, you've said you've played around with a lot of Leo's or, or dual, sorry, uh, dual cranks. I played a lot, uh, played around with them a lot. Uh, definitely something unique to the market. Very, yeah, for sure. And uh, hopefully I get a chance to get some ourselves when they come in. But this, if you want to get yours, sorry, if you want to get yours right now, go ahead and pre order them. So you'll be one of the first ones to get them. Uh, up next, we got a couple of other buddies joining us pretty soon. Looks like we got B Height needs to fix his phone a little bit. If you can turn it, kind of rotate it here. But uh, let's get what? these guys in the room and then we're going to talk about, maybe we'll quiz them and then see if they knew who the, the answer to your question is, Joey, and then we'll let, announce to the group who the winner is. You bet, you bet. All right, let's bring, hey, how, how you guys doing? Welcome, guys. Good, what's we, up? We got B Height and Randall Tharp joining us. What's up, Corey? How y'all doing? Doing good, doing good. Again, thanks for you guys taking the time. You guys are both heading home from the last event or getting or wherever you guys are going. So thank you guys for taking the time to pull over and make this happen. Uh, yeah, thanks no, for having us. Yeah, we so, uh, so we I were up late last night, and uh, I'm in Indianapolis now, and Brett's in Escanaba. So uh, felt like we felt like we were just together a few minutes ago. <laughs> well, to, so we had a trivia question today um, for the the viewers, and we've got a winner. But before we announce the winner, maybe Joey, give these guys a question, see if they can get any of the answers right. You bet. So we were talking to Luke Clausen earlier, and as you guys know, he's one of very few people to win both the Bassmaster Classic and the Forest Elwood Cup. And so the question to our viewers, and this was a tough one. I yeah, didn't know, yeah. I could only come up with one of the other anglers off the top of my head. Who besides Luke Clausen has won both of those tournaments? Fellas? David Fritz has won. And oh. uh, Davey Height is another. George Cochran. Yeah, and George Cochran. I think those are the- Who's there? There's one more. And we got one more. Oh. Uh, Dion. Google it. Ah, yeah, Dion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Very good, guys. Unfortunately, you guys can't win. You got the last one right. But uh, 
the bit winner of today, <laughs> Jay Davis, got it right on Facebook. So again, congrats, Jay. The prize will be coming out to you pretty soon. Get a hold of the, the social media team, get your information over to them, and we'll get the prize package sent out to you. Uh, before we get started and go on the baits and, and just shooting the shit a little bit, B High, could you rotate your phone and then maybe rotate it back? We're, we're watching you vertical right now. Or is oh, it? okay. Yeah, hold on. Sorry. And now. And then they go. That back. work. There we go. Perfect. We Thank go. you. Okay. All right. Yep. Got it. Okay. So I'll get you That's guys. David Walker. David Walker's my camera guy right now. <laughs> <See him? laughs> yeah. Hey, great job. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> well, so are you are you guys just heading straight home? You guys heading to go to distant fishing? What are you guys doing? Yeah, we're just uh, you know we got. I don't know, about uh, eight or ten days in between the FLW Super Tournament. Of course, sponsored by Tackle Warehouse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's in Lacrosse. So we just decided, um, since it's like 116 degrees in oh. Phoenix, so I just decided I might as well stay where it's 75 degrees and the smallmouth are biting. That's probably a pretty good idea. I, I like that idea. Yeah. That is yeah. cool. Yeah, so it's up here and... Uh, we'll be here for, you know, we're more than a week and then head down to lacrosse. Nice. And what about you, Thart? We are headed home. We're about uh, not quite halfway, but uh, I'm headed to North Florida is where I live and uh, probably do a little saltwater fishing and uh, probably head up to Seminole a few days and try to kick, try to flip some deep grass with some of these tungsten weights we're going to sell in a minute. Very cool. Well, I, and a quick shout out to, uh, B, I like that shirt you got going on there, Height. That's uh is that the, the Be yeah. Height Sims edition? It looks like it's got your camper that, on there and everything. It is. <laughs> it's the Sims Be Height edition. Yeah, I like it. Very cool. Yeah. Well, Corey, you know, you always get to go and film with Height, but I get to talk to Height a little bit too. Unfortunately, when I get to talk to Height is, is when we're traveling at a tournament with some of, some of Brett's good friends and they decide, oh, we got to call Brett and it's usually late at night and then they usually put me on the spot because I'm the tackle warehouse guy and they like to roust me. So, so they, yeah. if, if the rest of the guys in the house weren't enough to gang up on me, they, they bring height in for some, for some backup. That, that's right. Yeah. 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 We, yeah. They're always later night calls for some reason. <laughs> That must be a height thing because last time we were on the road, me and Daniel, we got roused by height all night too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. You're like, oh, let's call B height. That sounds like a good beat down. <laughs> well, hopefully, we, we uh, were trying to we were trying to talk to height that time to get a shoot scheduled to him. Uh, it didn't quite happen because everything going on, but hopefully, we get that going again. And uh, actually, yeah. we were trying to sh we really wanted to film a particular product that might may or may not have won an award, uh, but we just couldn't make it happen. It would have been great. To get some content on that, the bite was going off on it, uh, but just because of COVID, we, we, that's kind of when things really got shut down, so we couldn't make it up to it. But we'll talk about the bait later. But up first, we got looks like a late addition to the to the line or to the the schedule for the day. As uh, so a Randall, you got a new Arc Invoker limited edition casting rods, right? Yeah, it's. Uh, I actually don't have any of those rods. I have fish with them some, but the the unique thing about that Invoker Pro. Is, and the Invoker was our initial line that we came out with at ARC. Um, and this is the second generation of it. And we're one of the only companies in the world that that blank you're touching there is unsanded, but it's very smooth. And, and how we're doing that is we're using high pressure to inject the resin into the glass, with, which allows us to make a lighter rod, a stronger rod. And, and it's, it's really just, it's new technology and, and it's it's pretty impressive. I mean, that, that rod right there, I mean, if you sand a rod blank, which most rod blanks are painted and sanded, it, you, it, it messes the consistency up and it also can, can weaken the rod. So, so we're, we're able to use less material, which makes it lighter and also make it stronger. And that, and, and that Invoker Pro and our Reinforcer series, we're utilizing that technology and uh, it's, it's second to none. I mean, just hold it in your hand, cast it a time or two, and uh, you'll see what it's all about. Yeah, very cool looking rods. This is the first time we got to see it here today. And uh, uh, we haven't got to play with it a whole lot yet, but uh, so I can't remember I was talking to one of the other pros was talking about this rod, and they were really pumped out themselves. So I'm really stoked to kind of check out that rod. And if you guys want to check them out, you can pre-order them right now uh, on Tackle Warehouse. Yeah, no, it's a beautiful rod uh, and, and, and really interesting finish. Like you said, they're they're not a typical rod gets that 
gets that nice smooth finish because it's sanded after they make the make the rod blank. Uh, this one has has the texture of the rolling of the blank still in there. It's 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 a beautiful rod to look at. Very, yeah, it's very clean, but you know, just nice looking rod. I, I'm a big fan. Absolutely. Yeah, if you guys take a real close look at it, actually in the carbon fiber material that the rod's made of, it's got the Arc logo printed into the material, Let's which is also yeah, an got- industry. Oh yeah, we got on the, the macro lens where you can really, that's pretty, I didn't see that, that's cool. Yeah, it's something you don't notice, but I, I get quite asked all the time, where, who makes your rod blanks? Who makes your rod blanks? Well, we make our rod blanks. It says our name right, at, right in the material. So I think that's pretty cool. And in that invoker line, you've got everything from spinning models all the way up to 7-Eleven flipping sticks. Anything you need to catch a bass with, you're gonna find in that invoker series. Very cool, and like I said, uh, available for pre-order right now. I, I, that's that's it. I said I, I I noticed the texture or the look of the rod, and didn't really know that was it. And that's that's cool. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, arcs come uh, with a with a wide range of products, but uh, the, the rod game is definitely uh, right up there with the best. Mm-hmm. So up up next, we got some new weights, right, Joey? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the arc, like I said, they're they're they've got a big proliferation of their of their. Uh, tackle not just the rods but uh they got the tungsten insert flipping weights uh available to actually to buy now on tacklewarehouse.com can you tell us about those randall yeah i mean brett and i both both use arc tungsten so uh i mean as far as the 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 flipping weights here's an ounce and a half right here uh some unique features of this you can see it's it's real streamlined but it's almost pure tungsten, which allows us, you know, to have a little bit smaller profile. You know, there's no lead in it. Um, and the insert in this weight is epoxied in there. I've, I've actually got some of these weights that I've been fishing with for, you know, a couple of years now, and I've never had an insert fail. I, I definitely prefer an insert. Uh, another unique feature is, I know it's gonna be hard to see with this camera angle, but imprinted in this tungsten, it actually has the weight it's not a stamp on there. It's actually engraved into the metal. So if your box flips over, you get them all mixed up, you can still tell a 3 eighths from a half because sometimes it's a little yep. confusing. And uh, also new for this year, you know, this weight's offered in a matte black. It's offered in a matte silver. Brad Height's favorite color, green pumpkin. <laughs> and now we got a, a one with no finish. It's actually chrome looking. There's a bunch of South Florida flippers that like that chrome weight. So new for this year, we got the chrome weight as well. And that's everything from a one sixteenth all the way up to two ounce in tungsten. You, you know, a couple of things you you were talking about there, Randall. The, uh, the both the the flat black and having the size of the weight uh, printed on there. I mean, I I don't. I'm sure you guys your your terminal tax will boxes probably weigh twice as much as mine but mine <laughs> weighs like 40 pounds and you bust that thing open you got 200 weights in there it's really nice to say okay hey I, the wind started blowing i'm going one up from a three eighths ounce uh i need a half ounce and and not having to 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 juggle through a bunch of weights to find uh which one's the right one uh so that's a great addition there uh from arc uh, available to buy now on tackle warehouse very nice. Yeah, uh, we got a couple other weights though from Arc as well. I don't know, Beehive. I'm guessing you've used those the flipping weights too. But we also have uh, some new Carolina rig weights, correct? Yeah, yeah. We got uh, tungsten Carolina rig weights, and I think those are the ones without the insert. Is that the correct? Yeah, no insert Carolina weights. No insert. Right. Yep. Yeah. Some people like insert. Some people don't. I prefer insert. Um, I love the Carolina rig weights. Um, I mean, it, it, you can, uh, you know, have a small compact weight and, and uh, you know, have that great sensitivity that we love to have with tungsten, just like you do with your drop shot weight. You get that sensitivity with a Carolina rig weight. And I um, mean, for those guys who want to, you know, don't want that insert, that's exactly what, what, what we've come out with. And like I said, we've, we've had the one with the insert prior, and I know it's one of the biggest sellers for ARC. So. A lot of people looking for a tungsten uh, Carolina rig weight. Very cool. Uh, and again, pre order those right now uh, on Tackle Warehouse. And they should be, oh, avail- oh vi- are they available now? Or pre- uh, the notes say buy now, but I'm not sure. But they, if not, pre order, buy them now. If you're watching the site, just, hey, I got a note, they are available right now. So if you're on the site, go pick them up for yourself and, and check them out. 
So yeah, and one one other thing with yeah. with Arc, I mean, if you look at the fit and finish on all their products for their tungsten line, is just top notch. The the way that the the sinkers are finished, the way that if you have an insert, how it's epoxyed in, super super clean, not sloppy, and uh, they're just really high quality tungsten weights for an unbelievable price. Sure. Sure. No, great, great addition there. And, uh, you know, I think every, every, anybody that has Carolina fit rigged much uh, can, just knows the value of a tungsten weight mm. there. So uh, oh, if, we, yeah. if we can throw it back to, to Tharp, uh, Randall, we've got uh, some new sizes of the no chip tungsten in their drop shot weights, the teardrop, the skinny, and, and also the nail weight. And it's bigger sizes, right? So it's uh, actually with the nail weight, we got three smaller sizes, but uh, yeah, as far as the nail weight, I got one right here. I really, really, let me see if I can, there you go. Yeah. We can show on the okay. camera here too, if they can see it. There we go. So the new sizes for, for this nail weight, it's hard to get it. Okay, there you there go. You, there you go. <laughs> okay, yeah, so the new sizes we got is a 196 super small. 164th, 148, and then everything. My favorite size, actually, a 332nd. That's the, you guys have been selling that size, and we got one size bigger than that, which is the 764th. Which I know Brett and I both like to throw a big worm when we're Tennessee ledge fishing and stuff. You know, a nail yep. weight worm, and that's where that 764th. You know, when you get up to that eight, nine inch long worm, that that's perfect for that application. So uh, I'm glad to have those new sizes in that. And as far as the drop shot weights, it was really out of sheer necessity. You know, we've got all the teardrops and skinny drops, you know, go from eight to three eighths is what we were offering. And now in the teardrop weight, which this is a half ounce right here, we got that going in, in a three quarter and a half as well. And uh, as far as the skinny drop, which is this one, we've got that a half three quarter and one. So that, that's what you're going to use for those heavy current situations. Uh, anytime you're fishing grass is when I like this uh, little cylinder style one. And uh, so although all those things are just kind of really out of sheer near necessity that me and Brett need, you know, to do our job out there. So, uh, so our came yeah. through, you know, they gave us the sizes and, and shapes that we need. And I agree with Brett, like the finish and stuff on all of these weights is second to none. And if you don't believe me, like when I got one of these weights for the first time, I threw it down on the concrete and you rubbed it around with your foot and you're expecting to see the finish all rubbed off and it won't rub off. So, uh, you know, the quality yeah. second to none and uh, it's a complete line now, I feel like. I don't really think there's any holes in it or gaps from, from the flipping weights to the Carolina weights all the way to the, you know, the, the finesse stuff that, that Brett's so good at. <laughs> yeah, the, the other thing that I really like about that nail weight, just to add, is um, if you're skipping uh, the Nico rig around docks and stuff, that nail weight has such thick barbs on it. You can't you can't skip um, and, and skip that worm and have the weight fall out. A lot of other nail weights, um, when you go to skipping that worm, it, 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 it'll pull the weight out. So with those big barbs, it's really, really awesome you can skip it around and never lose your weight nobody likes to lose their tungsten nail weights anyways so no, no. it uh really it really does help uh keep that keep that weight in that head of the worm great fellas well so bigger sizes uh, of the new drop shot weights from arc and also uh smaller sizes on on the on the nail weights um and and like these guys mentioned just beautiful like satiny finishes mm -hmm. on these weights uh, you really got to have one in your hand to, to appreciate the finish on those. Uh, all that stuff is available to buy now on the site. Smooth. Very satiny. That's creepy. Silky. <laughs> that is but creepy. Satiny but durable. Like I said, it, it, it's satin fish but very durable weights. Uh, some cool stuff. Like I said, all these weights are available right now to purchase on Tackle. And it looks like I kind of went out of order. So we'll go jump back to what was supposed to be the top of our list. Uh, and looks like let's roll into let's I got to look at my list here so I'm kind of off is oh it's this something that won best of show or something like that and hmm. some some guy might have might fish it just a little bit here and there uh, be high tell us about what you got there for us to show off 
Well, uh, it's the new Jackhammer Stealth Blade. Um, obviously, it has a clear blade on it. Still has the standard Jackhammer head. Um, we made the loop a little bit different. Um, the clear blade is, is made out of pretty much a, a crankbait bill material. And then we, uh, we laminate a uh, metal ring in there to attach to the head. So uh, I've been working on this bait for about two years now. I wanted something um, in clear water situations like, let's say, Lake Mead or Lake Havasu, uh, something like that, where you just don't want as much vibration and you want it a little bit more stealthy. Um, that, that's one reason I made this. Um, and then the other one is if you go to a place like Florida where they everybody throws a chatterbait, something just a little bit different, a little bit more finessey, um, especially on those days where, you know, you kind of get those high, high skies, no wind, um, and they really don't want to commit to a regular chatterbait. Um, the other differences, um, really the only other difference in it, uh, we have it out in three eighths and a half right now. Uh, and I think we got it in six different colors. Um, we have the double hook keeper uh, or a trailer keeper, I'm sorry. And then the hook is just a little bit different. It's one size smaller, but it's still that oversized extra wide or kind of wide gap O'Shaughnessy. This is a decoy hook with a nano coat. So it's a little thinner wire, um, which allows um, better hook penetration if you want to throw like a 12 pound test line. Uh, but with the nano coat, it is still super, super strong. So I, I've just had unbelievable hookup ratio um, with this new hook. Uh, and, and the way to describe how it vibrates, um, it vibrates a little bit tighter, um, obviously not as aggressive, but still, you know, uh, when you're winding it around when it's vibrating. So, so hi, I, my first question was about the vibration on it, yeah, with, which you just spoke to. What about the sound? Um, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't gone swimming with it with somebody reeling it over my head. Um, I mean, I, you can't hear it really, um, coming back, but it, I'm sure it, it's got to make a sound because it, it's, uh, you know, it's still, the blade's still hitting the head there. Um, but it's obviously going to be a little bit more dulled with not metal to lead. Um, you know, it's going to be plastic to lead though, but it's almost identical to the regular, uh, the original jackhammer. I mean, when you cast that thing out there and when you start reeling first thing, it starts vibrating. None of that where you got to rip it to get it to go or anything like that. And it actually has a kind of a natural hunting motion. Um, it's just, it's a little bit different, but man, uh, it, fish, it catches fish. So, you know, this is one of the product samples that I have not been able to steal uh, this year, but had it come across, that's, I definitely would have. Uh, I that's can't- cause Corey, That's because Corey has it. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> that, Corey stole it. That'd be likely. Although we know uh, if we get product samples, one of us is gonna be fishing it a lot more <laughs> than the other one. Uh, but this is one I can't wait to try out. I mean, you figure, uh, you know, we know how many chatterbaits are in people's boats. And these fish see so many chatterbaits and granted, they keep biting it. Yeah. So it's, it's amazing that, that the effectiveness of the chatterbait, uh, you know, vibrating jigs have, have really changed the game for a lot of people, but, but making sure that there's something there that, that is a little different, uh, like, like Brett said on, on high sky days, post frontal, something changes, you can't get bit on the chatterbait quite like you were getting bit. This is gonna offer you uh, something a little different uh, to that normal jackhammer. Definitely, and like you, I mean, if you guys have fished a jackhammer all or, or bottom on tackle, we sell the fire out of those baits, and uh, I'm, I'm, I, I only assume it's gonna be the same with these guys. If you guys do wanna get them, I uh, go to pre-order them on tackle, uh, and hopefully pretty soon we'll be, we'll be talking to Beehive on the phone a little bit, and getting some TW custom colors going on this bait as well. Um, I, I don't know yeah. if we got those back in stock or not yet. I think we did, probably sold out again. I couldn't remember. Yeah, I, I think you guys went through those custom colors pretty quick. We <laughs> did, but, we uh, did. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we worked with, with Height, Height uh, worked up some, some beautiful custom colors uh, and we're working to get those back in stock as quickly as possible. Um, and, and yeah, hopefully we can work together on another project there. Uh, sure. with some custom colors. Yeah, for and the another, new another thing, mm -hmm. another thing, obviously it has a hand tied skirt, but we thin the skirt out just a, just a little bit, um, just to give it less drag. Um, and you know, I, I've used it with the, my standard Yamamoto Zako, 
um, that new paddle tail Zocco or even just a little bit thinner um, style bait. Um, so you could go with a lot smaller trailer on this. Uh, but like I said, you know, still has an awesome hook with great hook penetration, super strong. But guys, I mean, you're, when you when you start winding this thing around and see how the fish react to it, you're, you're going to be really impressed. Brett is very excited to check that one out and uh, hopefully get some samples and, soon. What's the... And we won best freshwater bait, I believe. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty exciting. Hey, we, that was, we were all doing some predictions of what was going to win. And uh, we, we all had some different uh, guesses for different categories. But I think it was probably unanimous that that was going to win. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, when you, when you see a product uh, piggybacking on the, on, the, on the great success of the jackhammer, you know uh, something with, with that big of a change, uh, but still a, a, a fantastic product, it, it's going to be a winner. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey. Yeah, and, and just just to tell the consumers too, the packaging looks real real similar, but it has uh, just the logo is a little bit different. I think it's white and gray. Um, so just uh, it allows people. I didn't want to do the packaging identical, just in case. Um, you know, you got them all mixed up. You just you'll be able to pick them out a little bit easier. Hey, hi. Before we move on, I do want to ask you. Uh, you, you know, we we've been well through uh, the tackle that you throw your jackhammer on. Is it similar tackle for this uh, for this new bait for the stealth? Or? I, yep, same same setup. Um, but like I said, you can you can go down to like a twelve pound test on it, and and still have good hook penetration and um, you know get that bait down a little bit deeper with that a little bit lighter line. So. But yeah, still that 7.3 heavy uh, Evergreen Combat Series stick and um, either the Chitula Elite 6.3 to 1 or the Stize 6.3 to 1 Daiwa is really uh, what I've been uh, winding them around on. Now, I mean, everyone knows you, you're the, you are the jackhammer, a chatterbait thrower, uh, and you really breaking down the nuance of the stuff, the bait and the gear and stuff like that. And even early on, I was, a, I was throwing on a traditional, you know, a, a graphite rod and you were harping on me and, and about using the, the grass rods and why, and even some of the pros early on were, were really not using, were using the graphite stuff. Maybe just talk about why the, that rod itself, the, the glass rod, and why you need to utilize that, that, that glass style rod. Sure, yeah, I think the biggest misconception of uh, a chatterbait to somebody who hasn't thrown it a lot is they look at it and they think of it as a jig. Um, and so a lot of time they put it on their heavy action or medium heavy action graphite rod that has a fast tip. And really you need to think of uh, the jackhammer or any type of chatterbait as uh, pretty much as a crankbait. So a couple things, uh, being able to have that parabolic action that only glass rods really give you. Um, one thing, it allows you to cast the bait really far because it, it allows the rod to load up it allows it to, allows you to cast it very accurately and then it allows when the fish hits it the rod loads before the power hits and allows the, the fish to get the get the bait well and then um, if you think about it when you're winding in a big fish if you had a very uh, extra fast graphite rod and the fish gets any slack in it just because the just the tip is barely bent like that you get if, if the fish starts coming towards you the, the rod goes slack and uh, you lose that fish. But if you think about a, a glass rod, it's bent the whole time like a rubber band. So even if the fish starts coming towards you, it still has that tension on there and allows you to catch a lot more fish, just like a crankbait. Let, before we move on from, mm. from chatter baiting in general, uh, got one uh, question here from, from a big fishing fan, uh, me. Uh, <laughs> so I do, I fish chatter baits on a glass rod until the grass gets too heavy and I'm, I have trouble clearing uh, the chatterbait through the, through the grass and then I go to a graphite rod. What, what adjustments, if any, do you make uh, when fishing a vibrating jig around really heavy grass? Uh, I, I still just use the same thing. I mean, my 20 pound FC sniper fluorocarbon, um, you know, by sunline and, and just, you know, I guess you just need to start working out your Popeye arms, you know, and be able to rip <laughs> that thing out a little bit. Better. I know you, but I, you got bigger <laughs> guns than I do. <laughs> yeah. Only at the bottom though. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
uh, uh, but yeah, I, I don't really switch anything out. I mean, sometimes you're just going to, it's going to be tough to clear it. Um, you know, some guys will switch to braid, but I, I just, um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't throw a square bill on braid. So, I mean, there, there's no reason that you, you go on to throw your, your chatterbait really on braid just because you're losing that stretch that, that allows you to, to, uh, uh, the fish to get the bait and not lose, lose them. Interesting. Well, some great advice there from a master of a technique, Corey, uh, and from one master to another. Going back to Randall, Randall, I mean, you are known as one of the best flippers and pitchers on the planet, uh, and, and you've got a grand, brand new flipping jig from Greenfish. Is that right? Man, that's right. It's, uh, it's been about two years in the making. Uh, the guys there at Greenfish, John and Will, I've known those guys for a really, really long time from working shows together and, and through the guys from Zoom and also ARC, uh, all, all mutual friends there. And uh, this this jig is really taking a while to get completed. And I'm happy to say this is one of the first ones off the production line there. And uh, it is uh, it's right. It's it's a real similar head shape to what I what my jigs were in the past, uh, just breaking it down. It comes in three sizes. We've got a three eighths, a half, and a five eighths. Uh, the three eighths has got a four aught black nickel cross eye gamagatsu hook in it. The half and the five eighths have a five aught same hook, the gamagatsu flat eye hook. Uh, it's I think it's one of the best jig hooks still out there. It's a sixty degree bend with the cross eye line tie. Uh, some of the other features. Uh, you can see the keeper. A lot of people like to thread their chunk up on there. Uh, in the past, I've had some wire keepers. I didn't like it because a lot of times I hang my chunk on the back and I didn't like how it got hung on that piece of wire. So we've put a lead keeper on here. I think it actually holds a plastic bait on there better. Uh, this is a hand tied skirt, something I didn't have before. And if you'll look, there's a piece of rubber tucked in right behind the skirt, which makes that skirt flare. So uh, some other features, where the weed guard is positioned out of the head of the bait, it's right there tucked right behind the line tie. It's not too far back. And the weed guard angle, I like about an eighth of an inch between the hook point and the weed guard. You can see that's what we got. I don't like a weed guard that's jacked up like this. And I don't want one that's laid over too much either like that. So you can see this one comes comes right when right out of the package just like that and uh it actually comes in 10 different colors now i mean my favorite colors black and blue green pumpkin and my my famous golden crawl that i won the won several tournaments on so uh i'm happy that it's out uh greenfish has got you know they 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 got pretty good distribution they sell a lot of baits at tackle warehouse and uh you guys can order them right now pre-order them at tackle warehouse so i'm excited about my jig and uh those guys there did a great job on it. Well, I don't think we have available for pre-order right now unless my notes are wrong, but hopefully we'll have them pretty soon. Uh, and we do, uh, again, I think these are going to sell well. I mean, you know, B Heights the one making those jackhammers. He's got a lot to say input in those. And, and the, the names in the jig, the, the Badger flipping jig. If you guys don't know, the Honey Badger is, is Randall's nickname. And uh, he makes them, he, he can catch them on a flip, flipping them and, and on jig especially. So you guys need to check those guys out for sure. You bet. You know, when, when Daniel first handed me this jig, I go, oh, it's a you know, little cast in flipping jig. Uh, but the more you look at it, I mean, it, just a beautiful design on the head, a lot of thought into the weed guard, which for a flipping jig uh, can be really frustrating if it's not right. Uh, you know, the gauge of the hook is perfect. Great little keeper on there. And then the attention to detail to make that that skirt flare. Uh, this is a really cool little jig. And, and Randall, it's not a great big jig. It's, I mean, it, it's not a finesse jig at all, but it, it's not a, you know, a mega flipping jig. Uh, can you tell us about the, the, the choice of the size when you were building this jig? Yeah, I mean, it's really, I, I, I made that jig to be just an all purpose jig. So, so with a three eight size, I can have a compact bait. If you're at a lake that doesn't have a lot of big fish, uh, you know, the three eight size with a, usually for me, just a zoom, uh, small salty chunk on there. Um, and then when, once I get to the half ounce, which is my staple or the five eights, it's usually a zoom, big salty chunk on the back. And I mean, I can fish anything from docks to, to rocks. Uh, 
you know, you name it, lay downs. Uh, it's, it, to, to me, it's not like a, a, a big one ounce grass jig, but nine times out of 10, we're not, we don't go to lakes that's just chock full of grass. So uh, this is this is my all purpose jig. I never go fishing anywhere without one tied on. And those three sizes give me, I can make it mimic anything from a crawfish to a bluegill or, or, or any kind of bait fish. And, and with 10 different colors, you can, you know, adjust the trailers to get, to get what you need. And uh, it is all about the details. It like with Brett talking about that stealth blade with this jig, I mean, at first they all look the same at the first glance, but it is attention to details that separate, you know, the good baits from the mediocre baits and, and uh, that stealth blade's good. This jig's good. And, uh, you know, it's our job, Brett and I both, to, to make sure those details are perfect. And I think he got it right. And I'm sure I did with this jig. Well, you know, go ahead, Joyce. Sorry. I, I was just going to, I was just going to burn Corey a little bit and <laughs> said, I've seen some of the stuff he's flipped. And, and so Tharp, if you could please send him a whole bunch of jigs and help this guy out. Uh, no, really looking forward to, to, to putting this jig to work. It's a great, great looking piece. Yeah. I was going to say, like I said, uh, you, you said yourself there, but like, like I said, Beehive designed that, that jacket and we sell the heck out of them. And with you designing this bait, I mean, I, I, I dare to say, I, I think this could be the next, you know, the jackhammer of the flipping jig market. They were going to sell the fire to these things. Uh, very cool quality, well thought out product. So hopefully pretty soon we'll have the images on the site and pre-order them, uh, but not quite yet. But I know we're going to sell, sell the heck out of them. Uh, we, we've got one more product up for today, uh, and that's uh, the new rod from Evergreen. It's a new version. It's a 7.2 medium heavy. The model we have here is not the exact 7.2 medium heavy model, but it is uh, the same, I guess, cosmetic stuff. But tell us about that rod, what you designed it for, and maybe just for those who don't know about the uh, the rods themselves, the, the Evergreen rod, or sorry, the, just tell us about the rods as a family, and then kind of go in the comment sticks, the specific 7.2 if you could. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we've, I think we've been, uh, we've had these out for about three or four years, that line of probably four years of the combat series stick uh and you know they're they range right around 199 i think up to about 240 dollars on the bigger swim bait rods but this was a rod that i was kind of looking for i wanted a graphite reaction bait rod um for like a swim jig and um and the other thing it's really good for is i know you guys sell a ton of shower blows it's a great top water rod for those bigger uh pencil popper or walking style baits um, it's an awesome spinner bait rod. It has that parabolic action again that um, that that I really like in a reaction bait rod. But it's light. You can use it on a top for a top water. You can use it on a swim jig. You could use it on a, a smaller paddle style paddle style swim bait. Um, it's just a versatile reaction bait rod, but it's graphite. Um, but it's really really good shower blows rod. Um, and the, or SB 105, 125, 150, um, you know, it's just a good all around rod. And that, that's what I was looking for. Something in a graphite rod that has that parabolic action, um, that you can, you can throw spinner bait, swim jigs, stuff like that on. Yeah. Very nice looking rod. Uh, very I said, quality. Uh, I'm a big fan of camo. So the camo on the handle that sells me right there, but, uh, I am looking yeah. for a new Shower Blows rod, so that might be a, a good one to check out. And if you guys want to check them out, you can get them available for pre-order uh, yourself right now. It's a snazzy looking rod, and uh, it, you, you know, Hyatt was talking about the, the SB, uh, I think we can call it Shower Blows here. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, the, the SB topwaters, uh, if you're chasing school in fish and you're not, you, you're finding that fish are, are out of your reach, try that Shower Blows because you're gonna get another 25 yards out of your cast. That thing just casts like a bullet and, and is a fantastic little top water that I've always got in the boat. Yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. huge, it, I, it's amazing. I still like that when you amaze how far you can really bomb that thing. It's just, it's, it's fun just casting it because you can just chuck it so far. You throw all the, you better yeah. have, have a good knot at the bottom of your line, uh, your bo yeah, bottom yeah, of your reel. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. You, you better have a full, you better have a full spool of line too. I can tell you that. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it turned out really good. It was a, it was a, a rod that we needed, you know, all those rods have Fuji components. Um, you know, it, it kind of like what R Randall was talking about. It has kind of that rough finish on the, on the blank, um, you know, which allows them to be a little bit lighter and stronger. Um, I have had unbelievable success 
um, never even breaking any of these rods. So they're just a good quality rod at a really good price. Very nice. Well, that wraps up all the products we have for today, but I wanted to BS with you guys a little bit, fish and talk, whatnot. Before we talk to you guys, you know, we got Walker behind the camera this whole time. Can we maybe change jobs here? Maybe yeah. take the Dave for a little bit? Yeah. Put him on the spot here. Here, here. I'll, get, I'll, I'll get Walker in there. Here, let me give him one. What's up. going all on, right. buddy? Hey. <laughs> Can you hear him? Okay. Yeah. Hey, a man of many talents here. You did a great job on the camera. Uh, if the fishing <laughs> thing ever quits working out for you, I think you got a you got a future here. You, you might replace poor Daniel. <laughs> our, our future is a tripod. I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> well, oddly enough, that, that's Daniel's new nickname, tripod. Uh, actually, oh it, man! It already was a nickname. We just didn't really throw it around a whole lot, but. No comment. No comment. Yeah, actually, uh, I mean, what you guys uh, don't know is, you know, I'm sure you've been out with B Height and seen his dance move, but Walker has actually really, I mean, he, he could probably make it on Dancing of the Stars. Like, he really was throwing them down last night. And, uh, I, I mean, him and B Height together, it was a sight to see. That, the front of that deck is pretty big. You might be able to get, kind of show the some moves up there. <laughs> it's all be ice ball. Yeah. <laughs> was a, Walker's daughters, they, they, we were doing the Macarena. We had it all going, man. Yeah. What was that? I don't know. I couldn't, I can't even floss. So that's about that. Uh, yeah. I'm sure there's some video evidence. So I might have to be checking my text messages later on tonight to kind of see. There, what was there might be. <laughs> yeah. Don't, hey. don't, don't, don't contact McClellan. Okay. I'm just telling you that. <laughs> oh. He actually, he just texted me just about two minutes ago, so I'm going to have to kind of follow up that back with that question. Folks at home, we're going to do our best to get that video uh, of David I wasn't Walker planning on that. But. Yeah, you, you can bet we're going we're gonna to be working hard on that one. Well, uh, hey, thank you so much for being a, thank you so much for being a cameraman, but uh, what are you excited about this year uh, product-wise? Is something catching your eye? I mean, I, you just heard these guys talk all about their new products. Uh, here's your moment. Yeah, you know, with, with iCast not happening, which is so strange to me because, you know, iCast is one of those deals where when you're efficient, you see that's the place you want to go. And I, I always would spend it, uh, early mornings or what have you, walking up and down the aisles, looking into all the booths just to see what was new. And, you know, even it, it didn't matter if it was freshwater or saltwater, but just anything that had anything to do with fishing. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm really tickled for Z-Man to win a category this year because, you know, Z-Man has been around for a good while. Um, I think people look at them as really the new kid on the block but we, they, they've been around long enough and and i think that you know with, with the dead rig is really what put them on the map but they've had such good product for that and, and, you know now with the, the chatterbait winning that and uh, i've also got a chatterbait as well that uh, it's got a, a weed guard to it we got a, we did a cross size uh chatterbait as well this year so you know z I, i'm really happy for z man but uh you know, I, I wish all the products were under one roof where we could see them, but, you know, obviously in this situation, we can't, that, that's not, not going to happen. But I think that uh, in the virtual world that we live in now with uh, things like this, it, it allows you, uh, people the, that don't get a chance to go to ICAST that are going to get to see ICAST. No, yeah. go, go for it. Uh, so, yeah, I just... Uh, you've been Z-Man for a long time, and I, I was going to say something about that same with the iCast. I mean, it's cool to be able to at least, we can't be there, but at least that's the, I don't hate, hate the good thing, but with everyone being so used to Zoom and that kind of stuff, it, it allowed us to be able to at least do this. So it's cool. I'd rather be hanging out with you guys there in the booth and talking and going out and getting drinks and food afterwards, but I'm just stoked we can even at least be able to do this, and uh, it's been a, yeah. it's been really cool to kind of do. It's, it's different. It's been a little difficult. But uh, it's, I'm glad we pulled it off. You know, iCast always presents its own challenges for us and <laughs> bringing bring all the, uh, the, con the content to our fans. Uh, but, you know, this year has definitely been unique. Uh, David, you, you did mention the, the new cross-size chatterbait. And when you bring up the chatterbaits on Tackle Warehouse, I mean, it's becoming a hell of a big family. Can you tell us a little bit about what makes your cross-size chatterbait special? Okay, so, well, the... You know, the, the cross-size chatterbait is kind of in line with the, 
the, the whole cross eyes line, which is sort of like if you're tinkering with a bait in your garage, this is what you do to it. And, you know, the chatterbait does such a good job. But where I live at there in Tennessee, we don't fish it in grass, you know, and really that's, what I think, what really launched the chatterbait was it was the grass bait. You know, we all we all heard about it like at Okeechobee. We're like, what is a chatterbait? And then once we all realized that how, you know, you can use it all over the country, but I always felt like its limitation was around any type of wood. And so the chatterbait that I came up with as what we did was we put some coated wire guard on it. Um, we, we also have the, the Aberdeen hook to it. We have a lot of the, the skirt on there is hand tied as well. So the things that I did to the chatterbaits when I first got them, is what we did to this one right here. Um, so it, it has it has a snap on it as well. Um, it doesn't have the twisted knot because to me it felt like the snap really gives that blade a little more freedom of movement, so you get a little more action out of it. You know, and all those little things kind of add up. Uh, we've got an Aberdeen style hook in it. Uh, I got some uh, cool new colors in it as well. To me, it was that chatterbait that I'm not afraid to throw around someplace that I feel like it's going to get hung up. Now, it, it, it just it's just kind of broadening the horizon for that chatterbait to get into more markets. People that went and thrown a chatterbait will now try this one out because, hey, where I live at, it just gets hung up all the time. This one right here is designed to get you over that hurdle and allow you there's no denying that a chatterbait is a big favorite of smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, spotted bass, redfish, you name it. Whatever it is you throw a chatterbait in front of, fish love it. And I mean, it's it's undeniable. So the, the, I think we're really going to see an evolution in that. You know, what started out was the original chatterbait. Now, now we're learning where other applications where we can use it in what its limitations are and so we're building on top of that original version so i i think you're going to see one of those chatter, chatterbaits being like like what it's like what a plastic worm is i mean it's just one of those basic baits that everybody needs to try you know it's it's really becoming a a, a standard in every you know it's, it's it's becoming its own category the chatterbait and, uh, and and david thank you for taking us through that uh and you get kudos for your camera work and and height gets a D minus because I think he had his hand over the microphone and we couldn't really hear what you were saying. Not great. I think I think we got most of it, uh, but uh, you, right. you you were definitely uh, doing a doing a better job than height was with the camera. Uh, but uh, height's hey, the monopod no now. No future is a tripod. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. So uh, so uh, I don't know. I, I guess maybe a little more dancing for these guys in their future tonight. Uh, we'll, <laughs> We'll, we'll try to scrounge up the video for uh, to to embarrass the heck out of these guys for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. We don't want to break the internet. <laughs> that, might, that might break the internet. And, and let's throw it back over to Randall before we let let you guys go. Uh, Mr. Tharp, you doing a little a little boot scooting tonight or what? You know what? He was, there. He was I, in on it. Don't laugh. After the last couple of nights, I'm looking forward to a night off from those two, man. I'm I'm telling you. What. <laughs> It was, we had a lot of fun, man. And I really, you know, we, we wrapped up our major league fishing uh, season this week. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to all of our friend, uh, Justin Lucas on, on a dominant performance. I talked uh, to him for a yep. while today, man. And it, he, that's his deal. And it was, uh, it was fun to watch him win that tournament. So, uh, you know, and also man, Jordan Lee, what a season, man. Angler of the year. I mean, I don't know what else to say except congratulations and my hats off to those two guys for beating a bunch of old uh, veterans that uh, <laughs> that, that that dance a little bit on the side. <laughs> yeah. Well, you bet. And, and uh, you know, we we've already offered big congratulations to uh, to Justin, but to nail that in. I mean, he he had a dominant performance this mm -hmm. week. Uh, and, and, you know, we're hoping to maybe include him uh, in the coverage tomorrow, right, Corey? We're trying to, but again, we're not the only ones trying to get a hold of Justin. He's, he's at every media 
any department trying to get a hold of them and MLF's probably tapping them to do a lot of stuff too. So sure. hopefully we can get them on. We'd love to get them on. We did get them on uh, the, that was a Tuesday talking mm -hmm. about what he, how, what he was doing and what he continued to do to take home the win. So if you didn't see that, go back and check out the Tuesday's footage. It was a, uh, at noon, right? It was a, the first one we had on Tuesday. Yep. He walked us through with the bait, what he was doing, his kind of approach to the, the game, what he thought would do, what he needed to do to win. And it proved to work, obviously. So uh, Absolutely. it's really cool. Hopefully we'll be able to get him on, talk a little more. Nothing else is get him on and give him a big high five through the, through the Zoom there. And uh, it was very cool to see him win. And you guys had some, it was uh, a heck of a year for MLF. It's been a neat to kind of see everything go down. Uh, looking forward to getting some more events coming up pretty soon, hopefully. Yeah. Yep. We're, we're ready for the next season already. But, you know, we, we still got a couple uh, FLW. Yeah. FLW Super Tournaments and then uh, U.S. Open and I might even go to Clear Lake for the Toyota Series. So that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, might even see you up there. You never know. Corey just shows up randomly places. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you but hey, we I want I want to thank you guys for having us and let us show us everybody the new bait. So we appreciate everything that you guys do there and um, you guys are a class act. Well, yeah, thank you guys all for joining us. Uh, it was great to talk to you. And, and a, a little bonus, uh, bonus cameo there from David Walker. It was great to, great to have a, a, a third voice in on that conversation. So appreciate you guys taking us through all the new stuff uh, for, from cool. the Evergreen stuff to, uh, to, to all the ARC stuff. So a uh, lot of great new product there, Corey. Very cool. Everything, again, everything we saw from you guys say is all... It seems the, the details and, and everything is just the top notch. It's just every little thing has been thought through so you can catch more fish and, uh, and just have more fun on the water. And that's what it's all about. You know, we want to go out there and catch fish. And we all spend a lot of money. We want to make sure we're getting the best bang for our buck. And you guys, everything we talked about today is very quality stuff, all fish catching stuff. And, and it's a very well thought out and uh, impressive everything we saw today. Sure. Yeah, gentlemen, thank you for joining us. And uh, have fun tonight. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys. All right. All right. Thank you guys. Yeah. Hey, dance off. Ya, Gift bro. card for the winner tonight for you guys. <laughs> All right. All right. See ya. See ya. Right. Well, see ya. Co Corey, we're four days in yeah. to a long week of live coverage uh, here at Tackle Warehouse Live. New product extravaganza. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing any dancing tonight. I might be putting my feet up tonight. I agree. I think I'm going to go on myself and get a little rest. If I was with those guys, maybe we'd be out there doing a little dancing. That's probably the good, only good thing about not being in Orlando. Maybe not the only, but you don't get sucked into the after the night stuff. And we go to dinner and have a few drinks and sometimes wind up going somewhere. And I don't do much dancing, but usually uh, the, the nights go along in Orlando. And hopefully tonight we can keep it kind of a mellow night and roll into tomorrow. Yeah, you bet. You, I know tomorrow we've, we've got another dynamite day, a uh, lot of great uh, interviews um, and, and more great new products. It's been a fantastic week so far. We were wondering today if today was the day that everything was going to go <laughs> wrong uh, and, and we managed to keep it on the rails. Yeah, Corey. we did. It kind of went a little sideways. Uh, every time it did, it was, uh, again, my fault and I apologize for that. But hey, we got That's through true. it. I knew you were going <laughs> to But just a quick rundown, so I just, I'll look at the list we got coming up tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to start off the day with some recorded content we did earlier in the week with Brandon Cobb. We got Wes Logan and some stuff. And I, I, I butcher his name every time. Minonuru? Mino, uh, Min, who are you talking about? Decoy. Oh. Muninori. Muninori. I always butcher his name. I'm sorry. Some really cool stuff from him as well. Some neat products from them. Make sure you check that one out. And the first live interview of the day is going to be with Cliff Pace. Then we got Chuck Pippin, uh, Pippin. And then after that, we're going to have Boyd Duckett coming up and some new products from 13 Fishing as well. We got Boyd Duckett with Chris Lane, talking about a bunch of new Boyd Duckett baits. We got Tackle Rouse Pro Staffer Mark Menendez, talking about some new Strike King products. Uh, Nick Gomez from Shimano, and some new bags and whatnot. And then uh, later on, after that, we got followed by Aaron Martins. A lot of cool stuff from Aaron. I'm stoked to talk to him. Haven't seen him in a while. Uh, and then we're going to. Follow off the show uh, for the pros with Brian Thrift and Trevor Fitzgerald. Talk about some of their new products. And they're hoping to get on Matt Allen from Tackle Bass to talk about some stuff. This is what he's seen in his fishing and get him on the show. So a, a, a packed show tomorrow, be the last day of the show. Really stoked to get, we've been able to get all this so far and we've got it coming tomorrow. So tune in tomorrow. Uh, we'll have the recorded stuff rolling about 10 o'clock, uh, about 10.30. And then we'll go live live at noon. And then again, make sure to go get your picks in for your favorite products for the People's Choice Awards and a chance to win some products as well.
Yeah, like Corey said, we'll be starting off a little early tomorrow with, with pre-recorded uh, content, so be sure to check in early. But the live show will start as it has all week at noon, the last day of Tackle Warehouse Live. Uh, not that we won't continue bringing you the latest and greatest, but uh, this week of steady live coverage comes to an end tomorrow. We're really excited. It's going to be a big day, Corey. Definitely. Thanks for joining us today. Make sure to tune in tomorrow. See you guys Have a tomorrow. great night.